Hamas. He's coming here at a critical moment for Israel, for the region, and for the world. The visit coming as Hamas releases its first hostage video showing a woman abducted over a week ago. We're live with the latest. Then catching up with Erin Andrews, the popular sportscaster returns to Studio 1A. She'll update us on her life on and off the field, including her journey as a new mom and her connection to the Swift Kelsey romance. Plus, Bond of Brothers, The Crown, unveiling a new glimpse of its final season featuring young princes William and Harry. We'll have it for you on Pop Star. And Defying Gravity, Cirque du Soleil is bringing their new show to our plaza for a performance you do not want to miss. Today, Tuesday, October 17th, 2023. I'm proud of you. Wish my mom a happy birthday. Back in Cedar City, Utah. On my fall break from UAB Medical School. Go Blazers! On a girl's trip. Race Idaho. And our family vacation. From Mind, Oregon. From Spokane, Washington. Celebrating Julie's birthday. Hello to our friends and teachers. At Cherokee Bluff. In Flowery Branch, Georgia. Visiting from Callahan, Florida. Lampwood, Michigan. In O'Fallon, Missouri. From Cypress, Texas. Wishing my mom and dad a happy 60th anniversary. We, we love, love you. you. We're back. It's 8.13 with our friends, Fox Sportscaster and new mom, Erin Andrews. We have a lot to chat with her about, a busy season on and off the field. In a moment, first, a quick look at Erin's work and her journey to motherhood. How about this? You tell us this week, Patrick Mahomes. Erin Andrews is a fixture on the NFL sidelines and has been a sportscaster for more than two decades. Penalties, check. You guys did well. Turnovers, check. And in June of this year, after nine years struggling with infertility, she became a mom. It's Mac, Roger, for my grandpa, who loves sports so much, stole. What? Mac, what do you have to say? The 45-year-old sportscaster and podcast host and her husband, former NHL player Jarrett Stoll, welcomed their baby boy with help from a surrogate. Erin joined us in July to share her joy and her long journey after eight rounds of in vitro fertilization. For so long, I just wanted to be quiet about it. Please don't say my name loud in the waiting room. But then you look around, these places are packed. You're not the only one going through this. And I felt like if I could be like a voice, it would help the whole process for all of us. Erin's process was long and grueling. Everything I was doing for the last nine years was affected by IVF. In 2016, she was diagnosed with cervical cancer and underwent two surgeries to have it removed. And then, after deciding to work with a surrogate in 2021, heartbreak. We ended up putting two embryos in, and um, we lost them both. A long road, but finally the ultimate reward. Today, Erin remains candid about topics that impact so many families. And everybody's kind of wondered if the mommy guilt would hit. I was getting videos from Jared of Mac and all that. And I was yeah. like, God, I feel bad. Like I'm missing, like he was laughing, he was talking, he was being cute. A trailblazer and new mother relishing her busiest and best season yet. Oh, Aaron, look at that Way sweet go, guys. <laughs> Come on. I just did so You know sweet. how long it took to put these oh, on this Well, plate? listen, I, am. I know. All too well. Seeing your baby, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, you. how is it going? Yeah. I mean, you're so busy. You got your football season yeah. now. You're mm -hmm. working mom. You're doing it all. Right. Mm -hmm. We just laughed about it off camera. You get the photos and the giggles and the look how cute he is when you're away on the sidelines covering 49ers Browns games. And I get home and he's like, ah. Yeah, and I'm of like, course. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> But it's, it's amazing. Like, you know, you relive the journey and all that kind of stuff, and you're so grateful. But I, like I said to you guys, I don't know how you guys do it. You are my mentors, inspo, oh, Kristen oh. Walker, all of you guys. Yeah. That's really, you know, it's funny because when you wish and dream and hope for something yeah. for so many years and you try so hard and it's not working and it's not right. working, did you ever wonder, is this not in the cards? Or did you think to yourself, somehow, some way, this is going to happen yeah, for me? Yeah, I feel like I, I listened to a lot of what you guys were talking about when you were so open about your journey. I thought there would always be a baby at the end of the, mm -hmm. the tunnel, the light, you know, the journey. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know how. And mm -hmm. that's, I think, what the specialists were always telling us. And after we had lost in our first surrogacy, um, you know, we had dealt with all the loss. We were just like, okay, 
we have to try again, but we were so afraid to yeah. because we I just couldn't deal with it again. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. What, what has go. surprised you yeah. about being a mom? Um, I stare at him yeah. a lot. <laughs> I just stare at his face. And I, and I don't know if that's because, you know, I didn't carry him or anything like that, mm -hmm. but I just want to memorize his face. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that also maybe because I am away every weekend and so forth. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, some people will always catch me and, and um, this gets me. Mm -hmm. Our nanny will always say, he's yours. He's mm -hmm. yours. That's your baby. And you're like, uh, oh, God. Okay. Uh, I mean, yeah. And then when he starts having a fit, I'm like, no, it's your baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can we talk about the other wonderful headline in your sure. life? Sure. Okay, there's been some news. I don't know if you've heard about it, but Travis Kelsey and Taylor are dating. Really? I did not know, as Sam and I were digging through the archives, yes. that this may have actually originated this romance. You gave birth to this romance. Guys, Wait, let's, let's roll the tape. tape. Right, let's okay. Pro proof, I'm the new please. Bumble. Okay, here okay. we go. Roll it. If you are looking for a guy, please try our friend Travis. He is fantastic. This is one, Taylor, I know we're not the best of friends. We're not even friends, but I consider you one. Take us up on this. <laughs> Go on a date with this guy. What made you So say that was that? back in August. Right. By the way, that's how I feel about you guys before I got to see you. I'd be like, <laughs> I know we're not friends, but I feel like we are. Oh, we are friends. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I, you can set hold up yes. next. Uh, great. Get on it. Apparently, <laughs> I'm, I'm really good at this. Yes. Um, we'll talk about you on the podcast okay. next. So, no, Travis had gone to the Eras Tour right. her concert and I guess wanted to meet her. Right. made a bracelet with his phone number yeah. on it. Cute. Cute. And uh, I guess she, I don't know what happened. They didn't meet up. And he made a plea on his podcast that he'd like to meet her. Yeah. And so I saw it. I'm a huge fan of his work with him. He's great. Sent Mac an adorable baby gift. Oh, just out of the Aww, blues. That's so sweet and I was just like check check and check Taylor like I don't really know who she's dated except for what we've seen publicly yeah. Give what do you, what do you know about this romance? Um, I have left him alone, although mm -hmm. I am going to bug him this week because mm -hmm. I just, you know, want to check in. But I think mm -hmm. that he, I know him, obviously, mm -hmm. better yeah. than her. He looks adorable. And I love also this picture, I guess this was this mm -hmm. weekend. Uh, he, my girlfriend and I, Carissa, who who do the mm -hmm. Calm Down podcast with me, does the Calm Down podcast with me. He's got a glow to him. Yeah. I mean, he, mm -hmm. that's a glow up, girl. <laughs> he's like, he's, he's looking fantastic. happy. It's the look of yeah. love. He's in the love bubble. We do. Wait, did he ask you to do that? That on the podcast? He did not okay, ask us at all. To it. But okay. then we, after, you know, she came to my game, my game, mm -hmm. it was, I was the only one there. The <laughs> game that I did, that was the first game she came to. And we oh, were yes. like, holy cow, this is amazing. So then we reposted that we made that plea on the podcast. Yeah. And he wrote on our calm down thing, hey guys, IG, I owe you big time. Then, Wait, what? Better yet, More? I sent her a wear. Uh, the oh, team apparel yes. jacket, that's and your, she wore it. Wait, that's, know, that's your, your jacket? Your yes. And we sent your it to game. her. Yes, and you guys get we it. We have it. You I've wore got, a hat I've of got, mine last year, and I about died. I've got the Saints gear. Yeah, so sh that's our I jacket. I didn't get any Eagles um, gear. Excuse oh, me, there's yeah. one in the dressing room for you. Oh, yes, okay. Send it your way. Yeah. So we, I just sent it to her. You never know if people will really wear and it. She and she showed up. Did it sell out? Completely. Yes, we have restocked, but it's only for a limited time. These Swifties are serious, oh, yeah. you guys. Seriously, Girl. serious. But this is a little bit of breaking news, guys. I'm, I'm yeah. bringing it to you. I'm <laughs> trying yes. to tell us everything. We we'll want it. Yes. Um, Travis has a brother named Jason. Yes, who plays we know. for the Eagles yes. uh, Center. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. His wife. Mm -hmm. She's fantastic. She wore the same windbreaker on Sunday. I mean, there's all these conspiracies oh. with the Swifties putting it all together. So the girls are so dressing alike. So the girls alike. are dressing alike uh -huh. in wear. In your Come on, I'm exhausted. You know what? It's all happening for you. This, you is, got your baby. this is about you. It's this football is all about not. him. Hoda's next. Tra Girl, Girl, Hoda's next. On the no. podcast, you're on it. You know all these like yes. people in Come on. sports. Come on. She sports. You need like an owner. Basketball. You need yes. like an yes. owner yes. and general manager. Yes. We're in. Okay, okay we gotta wrap crazy. it up. You're gonna Let's come back. About on, it. You're gonna come back on the fourth hour every day. Okay, all right. Just the fourth hour.
We're back, 835, and we're getting ready to reveal a biggie. Okay, y'all, this is our hot list. Our Shop Today team gathered up all the trending products they love, and they are perfect options if you want to start your holiday shopping. And, of course, Adriana Brock is our Shop Today editorial director. Let's fire up that QR code. There it is, bottom of your screen. Okay, how do you make the hot list? Okay, to make the hot list, yeah. all of our editors are searching social media, online shopping trends, Google data to find out what people are buying right now. Okay. So we got a huge list. We narrowed it down to our top seven favorite finds. And this is our hot list for the fall. A lot of them are great gifts. Great for fall vibes. I too. like that. Okay. So the first one, shall okay. we do the big reveal? Let's do the reveal. The first now. one is this awesome candle warmer. Okay. So you look at it and you say, what is that? You're like, what is this? Okay. It. So it's a little bit of a lamp. Mm -hmm. So you could put this on your nightstand, on your desk, on your okay. side table in the living room and create those fall vibes by putting a candle underneath. It's going to warm up the top of the wax. So it not only serves as a little light, but it also preserves your candle because you're not going to ah. burn it as much. Kara on our team discovered this on social media. She bought it. This is amazing. It's one of our stuff we love uh, contenders. By the way, gorgeous. Yeah, it's so cute. And what's really cool is that it melts the candle wax from the top. So you so get the scent get right away. Right, You don't right, have to right. wait for the whole thing to burn, to melt down to get the scent. All right, so our okay. next, let's do a Next spinner. one Ready? is faux leather jackets. These are on fire. On Everybody fire. wants them. Everybody wants them. And you know what? They always come back this fall. Let's come every fall. Let's go around. Might be easier. Um, yeah. they, they come back every fall and mm -hmm. with good reason because it's actually a very trendy piece, mm -hmm. but it's also really versatile because you could wear it to, I mm -hmm. wear mine to work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could wear it over my work Super dress cute. that I have on right Super now. Super cute. Super cute. This is really great because it's forty nine ninety nine, so it's also really affordable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So let's move on to the next one while you, oh, it's while you get stylish. Too. Yeah. It's really comfortable. All right. Next one. Um, Limp lip plumping gloss, okay? But By the way, I like ooh, you look really I like cute. It, I love the fit. This is really cute. Yeah, it's a yeah. Good, it's a good fit and it's super a good affordable. Yeah. You can't go wrong. I like it. Okay, okay. So this next one is from Polite Society. Mm -hmm. It's a mm -hmm. brand new beauty brand that just launched at Ulta, and we got to preview some of the products, including this three-in-one gloss, okay. which I'm obsessed with. It's a lip plumping gloss. It hydrates and it has a sheer tint. Wait, usually when they say here's a before and after, you can't really tell. You can tell. Yes. Did it Isn't really? It so so cool? it really work? Yes, I tried it because I was like, I have to, and. Hello, it to. worked. It's really Gives awesome. you a little color. It plumps yes, up. I will say it does tingle. So, so if you're you, not used to it, yeah, be prepared. No, yeah. But it only lasts for a few minutes, and the results lasted me for a couple hours. All and right. really great for taking photos if you have events this fall. Cute. Awesome lip gloss All right. to have Let's in your get purse. cleaning, girl. This okay. is the top one. Barkeeper's friend. Okay, if okay. you are in the restaurant industry, you've probably already heard of this. Okay. But on TikTok, it is going viral right now, and so, people are going nuts over it because it's a great multi-purpose cleaner. Okay. Our one of our editors used it on one of her pans and it brought them back to life. This is Wait. a TikTok that we found really what? cool for restoring your pots and pans. <gasps> really great on stainless steel as well. Um, and it's super affordable. This Eight two bucks? pack. Yeah. So affordable. Holy moly. Really easy to use. Where do you get it? You can get it on Amazon. You yeah. can get it at your grocery okay. store. It's all over the place. But TikTok just discovered it and it's having a moment right now. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. I like that. All right. Okay. Let's drum roll it. Oh, Next an one. advent calendar. Advent calendar. Always great. And you're probably thinking it's October. The holidays aren't Why even bother? near. Right. But now. guess what? Last month in September, Google searches were surging for advent calendars. People are buying them up earlier than ever. Oh, because if you wait till November, they're going to be sold out. And people go nuts for these countdown calendars. No. They're so cute. This one from C's, it's your classic candy one. C's makes Sold great out chocolates. last year in record time. Yeah. It just dropped this morning. So okay. we have the exclusive on it. Right. If you go to today.com. And what's this, this one? This one's really cute. It's from Uncommon Goods. It's a puzzle if you'd rather not do the, the sweets. Candy, yeah. This one's really good for kids. You open up a puzzle every day, and by the end, you have a huge scenery. It's so oh, adorable. Oh, that's a gorgeous one. Yeah. Okay. This is a really good one. And we good. have... I'm talking hundreds of advent calendars on today.com. So right. definitely check it out. If you want Uggs, you got okay. Uggs. Okay, Uggs mm -hmm. are back, okay? And they're trending, and it's all about the shorty, the mini version, okay? So the calf version, everybody really liked it. This is kind of a modern twist, and a lot of people really like it because it's a cross between the boot yeah, and, and yeah, a slipper. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just kind of like a whole fall vibe. So you could wear these with your leggings, with your jeans. Cozy. I mean, and you can't go wrong with Uggs. It's a splurge, but it's one of right. those pieces if you're, you're going to wear this is your splurge. over and over again. And just my tip is always do a shoe protectant spray on your Uggs so that they are oh, water repellent yeah. through the season and they last. Yeah. 
All right, this is the last one, and okay. this one is for the foodies out okay, there. Okay, this is for the foodies. We can't do a hot list without something hot, literally. So this is the Somos uh, Mexican Matcha Crisp, which we're obsessed with right so now. What it is came it? out over exactly. the summer. It's a chili crisp with Mexican-inspired flavors, like mango, there's pineapple. So it's sweet there's and hot? It's sweet and hot. It's perfect for, like, a breakfast taco, which Katie made for us over here, Oda. Are they edible? They are edible. Uh, Mexican chili crisp. They have two flavors. They are all made with avocado oil. There is a lot of nuts in here, but it's such mm -hmm. a great little kick mm -hmm. for any any of your appetizers, any of your meals. Have it mm. at all times of the day. Mm. This is great. It's got a sweetness. It's and great a for your lot pantry. Of heat. You know, you always need like a staple mm -hmm. in your pantry. This can become it. You can check out all of these on today's hot list. Scan the QR code or go to today.com slash shop. Thank you, Adriana. Anytime. Awesome. Coming up next, they fly through the air with the greatest of ease. You're going to see some pros from Cirque du Soleil coming up. But first, this is Today on NBC. Super talented as we showed by being regular people. I remember, trying they to do lifted it. us like two feet off the ground, and we were like, ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it. down. I know. Putting our, our, our affairs in order. Anyway, this morning we have the real deal on the plaza. They are currently on tour with their newest show. It's called Echo, making stops in Atlanta through January and Miami after that. But they are with us now. We get to have a special performance. Right. Cirque du Soleil, take it away.
<laughs> Is everybody okay? Whoa. Oh my gosh, that was Man. incredible. Are those real? Wow. 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 Unbelievable. Wow. Oh, darn. That's amazing. That's I don't know how you did that. Amazing. That is oh my terrible. Gosh. All right. Amazing. Okay. All right, good. Wow. You guys the are awesome. The UPS guy wants to hire you. That was incredible. And Travis Kelsey said you can keep that, actually. He already wore it on his David Taylor. Looks good exactly joke, like that. Good joke. That was it. That's true. Oh. Echo, the new show from Cirque du Soleil. You guys are amazing. In amazing. the wind and everything, we really didn't believe it. It'll be in Atlanta November through January, and then Miami February through Very April. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. Coming up next, Marcus Samuelson going to put his spin on a classic roast chicken dish with a genius idea for your new favorite pesto. But first, this is today on NBC. Check the show out, everybody. with today food and this morning got an easy roast chicken recipe perfect for fall from our good friend award-winning chef restaurateur and author marcus samuelson good to see you my good friend good to see you how are hey, you i'm doing great I'm tired. did you want the circus lake oh my gosh <laughs> i'm exhausted that, that's impressive hey, but what i'm also expecting to talk about impressive you got another restaurant coming yes. out metropolis metropolis uh, opening up with a new perlman uh, performing, performing arts, arts center, center. Oh, cool. tell yeah. us about this i mean i'm super Super excited to open Metropolis. It's on the World Trade Center campus, the mm -hmm. Perlman Performing Arts Center. Inside of that beautiful building is our new restaurant, yeah. Metropolis. And what's the cuisine going to be? It's going to be all about telling New York stories through the eyes of an immigrant. You know, oh. uh, think about Southern Manhattan was always the immigrant sure. part. That, where was, we, that was the gateway. Yes. And, you know, 20 years ago, plus 20 years ago, I worked in the tower a week before 9-11. So it's very personal. Yes. And, and very excited to, to be part of it. Mm -hmm. Today we're cooking roasted chicken right. with a hazelnut pesto. Hazelnut, hazelnut pesto. Hazelnut pesto. Yes. So now do you have to roast these? What do you do? We roast with? them, uh -huh. and then we're just going to be we're okay. taking some of that peel off. Uh -huh. Just by just taking them out of the exactly, rubbing them in the towel, mm -hmm. and we're just going to put them in here, just right. like so. And then this is the trick, right? Okay. A little bit of you're going to dump that some in. parsley. Parsley. Yeah. Is We're gonna add in some. Your restaurant? Some. Uh, this will be yes. Yeah. At Metropolis. I mean, uh, yes. Basil. At Metropolis. Okay. You know, you know who's gonna be at the Performing Arts Center? Who? Yeah. Jenna and her sister and her mom in a couple Whoa. of weeks. Oh, awesome. Yes. So fun. you guys gotta come down there and check right. them out. That's right. They're doing Don't all... heckle, Joda. You're not allowed to heckle. No, no. 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 It's sure. a rock opera. It's gonna what be the former performing? first lady. Behave. Okay. okay. So you got a little Parmesan? Yes. A little Parmesan. Maybe they're making queso live. All right. Boom. That's it. That's it. That's it. All right. We got a pesto. Okay. I'm gonna turn that off, maybe. Mm. <laughs> and then we're doing a hot honey. Oh. I think that's like one of the hottest. That's what I always friends. call Hoda. Yes. Hot oh, honey. Oh, thank you. So we got berberin. That's what Aaron Andrews calls you. From home country Ethiopia. <laughs> right. We got some chili flakes. Yes. Jalapeno. Now you could dial back the heat if you uh, wanted so, to. Or up. Or you up. You know, depending a little that's soy. It. Perfect. And a little garlic. Okay. Favorite. Just like that. Boom. And you're just going to cut that down? Yes, that's going to just simmer a little bit. Okay. 
We're roasting our chicken. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put it in a pan. Mm -hmm. I hear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. What do you think? What, wow. what's, what's the and I gotta tell you, it's, it's hot it's honey. Like it's interesting, but it's not too hot. Not You're too not hot. like dying. Not too hot. Not too hot. Uh -huh. So we're roasting and flipping it. We're gonna put okay. it in a pan, a little hot honey. Yeah. About 10 minutes, 12 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna pair it with carrots. Right. Gonna slice them up. Uh -huh. By the way, I heard today. What? Craig, is it your anniversary today? It was. It was Sunday. Yeah. Happy anniversary. Uh -huh. Thank you, Marcus. You kind of started. Yeah. 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 I'm glad I got the date. I'm more excited than you are. What's going on here? October 15th. How do you remember the date? Happy anniversary. Now, how do you? Now, we'll remind you next year. We're just gonna put the pesto on top, just like this, just like that. Look at that, Al. Look at that. Ooh. Look at and that. A little more, a little yeah, more a little uh, parsley. It's like this is an anniversary of this. We got to be fancy, you know? And you then the hot honey. Easy, but Can you drizzle this on top? I'll drizzle. You drizzle. I you like drizzle to drizzle. That. Chef, did you prime this chicken? I mean, what is the key to just making your average white meat chicken this juicy? Listen, it's, it's just about searing it. Don't overcook it, mm -hmm. right? Don't overcook it. And you also have to let the uh, chicken rest a little. Like a you snake, let it rest. Let it rest. Well, that's, the, that's the beauty of so pan you Carson, did you th Is that your chef move? You know how to let the steak rest. My I'm chicken impressed. doesn't taste this good. I know. Oh, it's it's doing it in the pan. Do it in the pan. As opposed to the oven. Yes. You put it in the pan, then the oven? A little bit. Just to get that glaze, see that yeah. beautiful. No, but do you hot, bake it off after you, you cook it? it in the pan? Ten minutes in the oven, just to get it nice and like crispy. Mm. Like and then you got the hot steak. honey. Wow. How come everybody's eating and Al doesn't have anything? Oh, no, 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 we got you. We got no, you. We got you. I like the skin. I'm just a <laughs> skin man. Norman <laughs> Samuels, yeah. Normally, you can also do this with thighs because I know oh, you love thighs. 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 The thigh guys. Thighs. We're thigh guys. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Chef Mark and Samuel for the, this recipe and more. Skip the QR Al, code or go to today.com slash food. This morning on the third hour of today, high stakes visit President Biden set to travel to Israel as the war ramps up and the U.S. puts 2,000 troops on standby. We're live in the region. Then later, our consumer confidential. It's prime time for fraud. The scams that are on the rise as we head into the holidays and how to protect our money and identities. Plus, in Tune Up Tuesday, the winners of the first ever New Beauty Reader's Choice Awards. Five-star products for your face, your hair, and makeup routine. And they write the songs. Barry Manilow and Bruce Sussman here live, bringing their new musical Harmony from Broadway to 1A with a special performance. Today, Tuesday, October 17th, 2023. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the third hour of today. Whole team is back. Chanel. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. And once again, we need to bring you up to speed on all the overnight developments in the Middle East. Indeed, the White House announcing that President Biden will travel to the region on Wednesday to show his unwavering support for Israel. All of this coming as Hamas claims that the group is holding some 200 hostages now, saying they are willing to release the foreigners, including Americans, because they are not part of their fight with Israel. But Hamas did not specify when that would happen. And it all comes as Israeli forces continue to gather at the Gaza border in anticipation of this possible ground invasion we've been talking about for a number of days now. NBC's Kelly Cobiea remains in Israel for us this morning. She's in southern Israel. So, Kelly, let's start there. What's the latest on the ground where you are? 
Well, President Biden will be coming to this country tomorrow to a country that is very much still in the grieving process and very much still in shock. The National Security Council spokesperson, spokesman John Kirby, telling Savannah a short time ago that the president wants to get more of a fingertip feel on the Israeli plans and on how things are going here on the ground. The president spoke to Iraq's prime minister late yesterday, continuing those diplomatic efforts on containing the war war and on getting aid to Gaza. Also this morning, the Pentagon saying that they are putting 2,000 troops on standby in order to, uh, on orders to deploy to the Middle East, according to one defense official. That defense official telling NBC News that those troops would not necessarily be coming to Israel or Gaza, but rather another Middle Eastern country in order to support Israel in the war against Hamas. And more concerns again this morning after Hamas said claim to be holding some 200 hostages inside Gaza. Meantime, here in Israel, troops are moving closer to the border, but the IDF spokesperson, one of them anyway this morning, saying the next phase of this war may not be a ground offensive. He said that's what everyone's focusing on. It may be something else entirely. Craig? All right. And Kelly, you know, listen, we can't ignore the growing humanitarian crisis in Gaza. How bad are things getting? Yeah, Chanel, that's right. It is increasingly dire there. Reports of fuel running out at hospitals, reports of very little food, water and shelter down in the south where so many people have evacuated, waiting, hoping to get across that border crossing with Egypt. This morning, it is still closed. Uh, the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, said that the U.S. and Israel have agreed to develop a plan to get humanitarian aid to civilians in Gaza and to create safe zones and said that that Rafa crossing will reopen, but it hasn't yet. And no details on humanitarian aid plans released just yet. So those folks staying on the border still uh, in, a, in a state of limbo. Meantime, here in Israel, an army of volunteers has been mobilizing over the past few days. They've been cooking and packing meals for people who have been displaced and also for soldiers who have been mobilized in all of this. One volunteer said she just had to do something. Take a listen. I want to do something, you know, you feel so frustrated, you see, you're sitting home, you listen to the news all the time, and you feel that you need to do something, and you want to help. So, I'm so happy I had the opportunity to come here. This one restaurant say they've, they're producing more than 20,000 meals a day, and they've been doing that for several days now, going out to people in need and to soldiers. And there are other grassroots campaigns for to donate food, clothing, whatever folks need uh, who've been displaced, guys. So many people just trying yeah. to figure out what they can do uh, to help. Kelly Cobier, of course, there once again in Israel, Kelly. Uh, continue to stay safe and, of course, stay with NBC News uh, and NBCNews.com for continuing coverage from the Middle East throughout the day. All right. Taking a turn now to some sports trailblazers. Baseball playoffs are in full swing, but it's a handful of talented and groundbreaking, uh, groundbreaking who are making news off the field. NBC's Sam Brock is live outside Lone Depot Park in Miami with more. Hey, Sam. Hi, guys. Good morning. Look, it has been breakthrough after breakthrough for women in sports in recent years, especially in baseball. And it was only a couple of weeks ago that we were talking about the historic achievement of Kim Ang, who was the GM here for the Miami Marlins, although recently we found out she's leaving the team. The question now, where will she go next? As thousands of miles away out in San Francisco, the Giants are considering a historic hiring of their own. Over the last few years, Major League Baseball breaking boundaries that have endured for generations. With perhaps the most significant symbol of that growth, former Marlins GM Kim Ang, who's now out of that role. I think when I got the job, I understood the magnitude for society, for my career. Ang talking with us only two weeks ago about rewriting history by reaching the playoffs. But in a stunning turn of events Monday, the Marlins posted this statement. Although the club exercised its team option for her to return for the 2024 season, Kim has declined her mutual option. We thank Kim for her contributions during her time with our organization and wish her and her family well. After first starting the job three years ago, Ang talking to Hoda about the decades-long trek to get to the mountaintop. Did you not get 
jobs because you're a woman? You know, I, I, it's hard to say, but I would suspect yes. Now, the main question is what job she'll take next, with speculation swirling about the recent GM opening with the Boston Red Sox. Ang telling The Athletic and MLB.com she had a fundamental disagreement with Miami management about reshaping baseball operations. Meanwhile, on the country's other coastline. It's like hitting a wall. <laughs> Alyssa Atkins already etched her name into the history books with the San Francisco Giants. Hi. How are you? Get in here. Coming in, squeezing yeah. in. The first woman tap to serve full time on a big league coaching staff. She is a great trailblazer. Former star softball player at Sacramento State, now believed to be the first woman formally interviewed ever for a managerial job. A story broken by the Athletics' Andrew Baggerly. She's just part of the team. As more women move into positions of leadership, it's just going to mean that there's going to be more of a pipeline of people that will follow. At a time baseball has fundamentally overhauled some of its oldest rules, its developments off the diamond that may finally be leveling the playing field. Now we've reached out to the San Francisco Giants. They have not commented on this story yet. Guys, Alyssa is only 33 years old, which is to say if she were to be hired for their next manager position, she would immediately become the youngest manager in Major League Baseball. So perhaps that may or may not be in the cards, but it's certainly indicative of the investment they're making in Alyssa. There's a lot on her plate right now, no pun intended, <laughs> as she and her husband Robert recently announced that they are expecting their first Aww. child in February. So baby oh, Mac wow. is coming. They will be the, the youngest member, perhaps, of the San Francisco Giants. And just great <laughs> news for them. <laughs> Babies and baseball, how can you go wrong? Babies and baseball. And, and you guys. well played, Sam, to have a, a baby in February. Yes. You know, <laughs> it's, it's a much better time for That's true. baseball. Yes, season. exactly. <laughs> there you go. All right, All right, thanks so much. Thanks, Sam. Well, from the sports galaxy to a galaxy far, far away, a piece of Hollywood history setting records at auction. A miniature model of an X-Wing fighter used in the original Star Wars movie, one that obviously took a few hits from laser fire, wow. just sold for more than $3 million. Of course, we all know the X-Wing is the type of spaceship flown by Luke Skywalker. I'm on the leader. The model had belonged to longtime Hollywood visual effects artist Greg Jean, who just passed away last year. And this is incredible. His friends actually found that X-Wing fighter <laughs> packed wow. in a box, a cardboard a box, peanuts. in his garage with those styrofoam peanuts. Uh, just one of several Hollywood props that he's... I wonder what else he had in that game. I know. Well, he's got several, he's got several other props that, that are up for auction. That was a big purchase you just made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ms. Roberts would have put a, a stop <laughs> to that. A million dollars in so. a box in the garage. Yeah, he's yeah. also got a batarang from the original Adam Look West Batman wow. series and a uniform worn by Captain Kirk wow. in Star Trek. I guess probably got like 15 garage. million bucks in that garage. <laughs> I know, right? That's, that's, in that's pretty good. Right. What do we have in our garage? Anything? No, yeah. Nothing like that. <laughs> nothing nobody sure. wants. <laughs> Something busted up and beat up. Uh, when we come back on this Tuesday, Consumer Confidential Tom Vicky Wynn here to break down the scams that are on the rise and what we should be watching out for as we head into this busy holiday shopping season. And then a little bit later, look who's here, y'all. Trailblazer Lindsay Jacob Ellis here live in studio to look back at her historic career and the grit, the sheer grit it took to reach the top of the mountain. Third hour of today, right back it. after and this. Wait until you see her boots that she used to climb that mountain.
We are back with the Consumer Confidential to prepare and protect you from fraud this holiday season. NBC News Senior Consumer Investigative Correspondent Vicki Wynn is here to tell us what scams are on the rise and how to keep our money and identity safe. Good morning to you. Good morning. Hey, I feel like we talk about this, you know, around the holiday season, but this year in particular, is this a bigger problem than normal or is it just one of those things where we have to remind people? It is a big deal and every year it seems like the problem grows. Last mm. year, consumers lost $8.8 billion mm. to fraud, this according to the federal Trade Commission. And in 2.3 million of those cases, credit cards were the top form mm -hmm. of payment. And it's easy to see why. You know, yeah. this year, more than 53% of people surveyed by Bankrate said, yeah, I'm absolutely using a credit card for my holiday shopping. It's convenient. Often you get cash back or miles yep. or points. But you have to be really careful about where you're plugging in your credit card numbers. You know, a lot of sketchy websites pop up this time of yeah. year mm -hmm. saying, you can get that X-Wing fighter Lego set. <laughs> it's normally, uh, you know, selling for $200 for 50 bucks. Don't fall for those. That's a red flag. Scammers set up these fake sites to try to steal your money. So be really careful with your credit card information and only use those cards if you can pay them off because interest rates are at record highs on credit cards right now. Beyond the websites, though, I feel like text message scamming yes. yeah. has just gone through the roof. Yes. This Amazon scam, yes. for folks who aren't familiar with it, what is the Amazon scam? Yeah, Craig, and here's the thing. It's not just Amazon. Amazon happens mm -hmm. to be one of the biggest companies, but scammers will use the name of Apple, mm -hmm. Best Buy, UPS, and it's yes. really a twist on the same scam. So it comes in via a text message yes. or an email or even a phone call, and it's basically the same thing. We're going to freeze your account. We're going to cancel your Prime yep. membership. Your Apple subscription is going to be suspended. We need your payment information, Al. Please go to this link and mm -hmm. enter everything. Update it for us. If you get a message like that, delete it right away. Do not click on mm -hmm. anything in it. And if it's a phone call, hang up immediately. If you are concerned, maybe something's going on with your Amazon account, in their case, go right to Amazon, log in, look in the message center. If they need to reach you, that's how they're doing it. Mm. They don't got time to call you and yeah. be like, yeah. oh, no, we need this yeah, information in your mother's maiden name. That yeah. is not real. That's good. I came from a text that said, if you do not make this purchase of $119.99 yes. with this link. Right? And I'm like, this just doesn't sound right because I didn't just spend that, but why would they be asking me that? I mean, exactly. it's, it's sneaky. And let's say it was a real fraud alert. Someone had gotten a hold of your credit card. Mm -hmm. Call your credit card company directly and mm -hmm. ask them about it. Okay. Never click on a link that is sent to you unsolicited. Okay. And there's another uh, few scams that we should look out for, too. So it's autumn, oh, winter. It no. gets cold. What do they call it? Cuffing season, right? When no. people sort of couple up just for like yeah. the warm. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with going sure. online. <laughs> no, it's a thing. Oh, it's a thing. It's beyond a thing. Okay. <laughs> Right. Nothing wrong with going online. Too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and hopefully you're not online looking for romance, swiping right or left. But here's where it gets bad. This would have been rough for you. It was just your anniversary. That's true. <laughs> yeah, we do not want to go there. No. But people are online all the time looking for love. The, the <laughs> moment it gets sticky is if someone you have never met suddenly asks for gift cards, or money I mean, to doing? come and visit you, Craig, don't or get young. they people want you to it. invest in their crypto, you wow. know, so that you can, this happens all the time. Yeah. Literally, people you lose millions of dollars wow. to these romance scams. So that is your first sign, and cut off all contact, because you know what? That person is not real. Go ahead and do a Google image search. The chances are they're using someone else's picture <laughs> to fool you into thinking they are a real person. It's probably just a group of guys in a boiler room somewhere right. trying to get you just, to I mean, get your money from you. Stop talking. Okay. Yeah. How about charities right around this time? Yes, Al. This is a time where we see a lot of suffering in the world. Also, people, it's the season of sharing and caring. You want to give. But a lot of new charities are popping up, or you might be donating to a cause that you haven't before. Always go directly to the website. It doesn't matter if you see it on social media or someone's shared it on their Facebook. Look up that organization website. on Charity Navigator or Charity Watch to make sure it is actually legitimate and pay only on that website. Skim Scam. Oh, yes. Skim scams, Al. Okay, so these are those little devices that get... I'm trying to move this along. You're just sitting there. Skim scam. He's obsessed with the romance scam. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to happen, Craig. Got quiet over Okay. You do not want to enter your information on a pin pad that looks uh, not yes. legit, or if you're having to press those buttons really hard, it's most That's common. Scary. Yeah, it happens at gas stations and ATMs. Use the well-lit ones. Use the pump that is in view of the attendant. If you're, if you're ever in doubt, just go inside and pay yeah. with your card, or go inside and talk to the bank teller to so get the money. So when you put your ATM in, yeah. or your your card in, right. and you is, slide is it, it loose, or what? What's the telltale sign that somebody's 
put something in there. Sometimes it's really hard to tell, but mm -hmm. usually what it is, it's, it's a whole device that they put on top of the legitimate uh, yeah. device. Uh, so if you're looking closely, sometimes it's a little loose or you can kind of peel it back. It's not attached physically. Oh, it's not actually part of the machine. And it's really there just to steal your credit. Or if it's a cardboard box with some LED. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a real problem. Yeah, yeah. If it's a light bright, today. stay away. All, yeah. all I was saying about the romance scams is if yes. you're dating somebody all of a sudden and you like you just met them and they're asking you for money, Very you true. probably don't okay. want to be yeah. dating yeah. them. You can let this go. You've been talking to them for months online. That's the they say they're different. in the military. Yeah. Yeah. They just can't see you, but yeah. they could really use a gift card. Next thing you know. That's a good, no, that's a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, when we come back, we're, we're going to turn. Nice cleanup. The yeah. most decorated snowboarder in history. Lindsay Jacob Ellis, she is here to tell us why she decided to reflect on her ups and downs and share her story right now in her own words. And then later, tune up Tuesday. Five star products for your skin, hair, makeup routine we're going to cover all of it when the third hour of today comes back in just set your watches 60 seconds that's not a skin series grit a snowboarding legend who conquered challenges on and off the mountain on her way to the top of that sport Lindsay Jacob Ellis has two Olympic golds she has 31 oh. World Cup gold medals she has six world championships and she's opening up about her remarkable career in life in a new book it's called unforgiving lessons from the fall. That's a good title. It is. It is. So happy to have you. Thank you so much for having me on today. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, it's, as you know, it's really hard for, I feel like athletes especially sometimes to own their own narrative. Why did, why did you decide to, to do that now? Well, for the last 16 years, I was always a part of the story, but it was never from my perspective or what I was experiencing. And I felt like my story was always just being told through a different lens. Mm. And I decided after Beijing that this was a chance to get my experience out there and to educate, you know, sportscasters or even aspiring athletes or anyone that is, you know, in their own ventures in life mm -hmm. to be able to find that way to grow after making mistakes and, and working through those challenging moments. So in Torino, I mean, to be yes. fair, I, you know, the, the journalists weren't always fair to Lindsay Jacob Ellis. I'll say it. You don't have to. Um, and then take us back to Torino and, and how, how that played a role in all of this. And for people who don't know what happened. Yes, I mean, I was 20 years old. It was my first Olympic appearance. And, and that second to last jump, I fell. And it was not something I was planning to do. It came to me in the spur of the moment that I decided because I was having so much fun, caught in the moment, and not understanding why I did that. It took me years to reflect back, working through therapy. And I show that process through my book. And, you know, I, I chose the title, Unforgiving for my book because I felt like it reflected on how the media treated me, but more importantly, how I treated myself. Mm. And it took almost up to 2016 till I realized that I needed to look inward and figure out how to work through these processes. Mm -hmm. And I worked through with Denise Schull on, uh, with the Rethink Group, and she really looked at the emotion base and my reactions with that to help me grow from those mm -hmm. moments so I can anticipate what I was actually going to be feeling in mm. these challenging mm -hmm. moments so I could work through them. Yeah. You, you were a trailblazer in snowboard cross before it was ever even an Olympic sport. Were you just doing what you loved or did you know that you were kind of paving the way? 
I definitely was doing what I loved. And I give a great description of my life from a young kid mm -hmm. and then going through Torino, but then also as I'm just growing and it shows that I have that passion and that continued love for the sport and that I was just excited and always driven to win. You know, Lindsay, before Beijing, you had some, some major injuries. I mean, you, you had two ACL surgeries, a, oh. a broken elbow. Not only did you have to show this, this grit to come back physically, but talk about the mental aspect oh. of that. Coming back from an injury from an athlete or anyone, the mental side of things can be the most challenging because you know time will physically heal a wound but you have to then mentally be prepared to return to sport you have to trust that your knee will hold up your arm will hold up in my case right. are you worried and, it would happen again and and very possibly yes and it almost took that first fall to be on the ground and be like oh I'm okay. I'm okay. My knee held up or my arm's okay. Mm -hmm. And to help start to repattern yourself that you are not so fragile mm -hmm. to, to show that you have that mental fortitude is just as important. Do you think you learn more from the, and I try to tell my kids this, the, in, in a way, the things that, that injure you or whatever, where you oh, have wow. to come back mm -hmm. as opposed to the successes, which everybody loves. Failure is important and growing is important and especially when you're working through injuries, those challenging moments, it's when you learn the most about yourself. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to get to those steps. So my message in my book, I hope it's inspiring. I hope it gives hope. And if I could not have an athlete ever feel how I was feeling yeah. in those mm -hmm. challenging moments to give them that little push or head start to be on the right path, that feels like a win for me. Mm -hmm. Lindsay Jacob Ellis, we're glad you wrote the book, and Chanel is especially glad you brought the boots. Yeah, I'm like, if you yes. didn't bring me the gold medals, you brought me some gold boots there. You know what, in fact, I love could, it. maybe Lindsay, you could uh, give, give a little message to Uche, her son, <laughs> what? who just... I know he just broke his wrist yesterday, but it's different when you're an Olympian versus playing at recess. No, but he's a star soccer player. I know, and then he's playing around at recess and tried to, he was goalie and... Broke his but now you can point to Lindsay Jacob I am. Ellis. We're going to replay this segment. Yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Unforgiving, by the way, Lindsay's new book, Unforgiving, is available right now. Those shoes are just calling my name. There's no place like home. I just want to. I know you want to. <laughs> I want to click them and go back to Kansas. All right. Thank you, Lindsay. <laughs>Tuesday for your beauty and skincare routine. New Beauty just released the winners of their first ever Reader's Choice Awards. Readers rated thousands of products and New Beauty senior editor at large Sarah Eggenberger is here with a few of their favorites. Sarah, good morning. I always get access to so many good yes. things. Yes. And we're starting off with something for the face. Right. So the people have spoken. These are <laughs> Reader's Choice Awards. They tell us what they like the same versus us telling them, which I love right. to get that feedback. So starting with Olay, because this is a very affordable, iconic, mm -hmm. moisture Moisturizer. I mean, really, if you look at any of the Oilay brands, they're going to have like your best, your most coveted drugstore products. Mm -hmm. But take a look at this because just a little bit, if you want to collect a little bit and put in yeah. your hand, it's so soft yeah, and course. smooth. It's oh, so it affordable. Is. So what's it supposed to do? This like, is going to be great the... hydration all day long, plus the signs of aging. So it's really a two-in-one where you're going to have the okay. anti-aging benefits plus the moisturizing benefits. in the morning, mm. at night. Both. I love it for the moisturizer, but you can okay. use it at night as well. Ooh, this Talk can't about be this. That's for boys and yeah. girls, correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This, boys and girls. And this price point is so amazing. 
that everyone can use it and afford it too. I this is that. nineteen dollars oh. or twenty twenty four ninety seven. What is this? What is this stuff you're spraying on your face? Yes. Face Doesn't mister. it feel great? This feels nice. Al, this is wonderful for after Ooh, like shaving. Oh, it feels like so that. good because it's nice and refreshing. Right on my face. This is a sprayable hydrator. So think of this like <laughs> think of this as a That's serum. Nice. Um, it's going to hydrate your skin. So we're going into furnace season. Mm. It's cold outside. Mm. We need to constantly hydrate our skin. Mm. This is the way you do it anywhere, everywhere. You can layer it over makeup if you want. You can put it on after mm. you shave. You can put it on, on top mm. of your moisturizer. Nice. Yeah. Underneath your moisturizer, it helps to prep your skin to give you the best hydration. I love that. Nice. So I use it multiple that. ways. Is it expensive? As this is going to be a little bit higher price point. It's forty-eight dollars, yeah, but nice. it lasts forever. It lasts I mean, yeah. I've had this over a year because oh, it's wow. just a light mist. So this yeah. is the body category. We have a moisturizing body and hand wash. Yes, right? because if you're going to do it every day, you might as well enjoy it, right? So you want to make sure oh. your hand, so hand, hand wash. Oh, whoops. So. Yeah, it is the hand <laughs> but wash. But it smells delightful. So why do they love it? So they love like it Italy. because it's so hydrating. Because if you're going to use a wash, you need to make sure it works with your body, not against it. So it should be hydrating okay. because you're doing it all the time. But yeah, now you have nowhere to go. I know because you don't have any water. So. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this is what so that is. And there's a wonderful. lot of different scents. So you can so you use can it for your with, hair also. You can use it all over. Yeah, wow. it's amazing. It's, it's, it's seductive wow. comfort. Sarah, let's move down. Let's move <laughs> down, really down to this, like this next the smell product. Of this. Because again, this is something for for men and women. It sure is. So this is going to be a healing balm that you can use on chap lips because if you don't have chap lips this time of year, you're a unicorn. True. Yes. Yes. Like, everyone has chap lips. Put this on at night. Feels great. Okay. Also around the eye area. Yeah, I was going to say, what is it this It feels part? amazing. This is a Dr. Rogers healing balm. So you can use it on your cuticles, this? your elbows. Yes. This is just a smaller size. So you can take uh, it anywhere and everywhere. Oh. So there's multiple sizes you know that you can work from. I just from. put some on my lips. Yes. yes. Like, it's, this is pretty good. good. It's nice. It's not tacky it or sticky you either. It's not goopy. Yeah. Elbows. Yeah. Hmm. That's great. That's great. I like that. Okay. Yeah. We say yes to that. I can't play with it because I'm covered in soap. Just leave your hands like that. I'll take this one home with him. Mother. What is this one? Oh my gosh, we love I this. I love shishates. I never can say Shishate, it. Yep, Shishate. this is their primer. So oh, people know. think of a primer as it's a great way to really prep your skin prior to foundation mm -hmm. because it elongates your foundation, also gives it that flawless coverage. Oh, but if you just want to have a smooth, flawless <laughs> look, <laughs> this is also an option. You're, you, you've tried every product. <laughs> well, I have every a product. Product. I have a pinky oh, right there. I have a pinky. Oh, oh boy. So what you're going to do, I'll blend this for you. Thank you. Oh, that smells good too. Doesn't that smell so good? So yeah. you create a smooth canvas. Mm. If you just want to wear it by itself, it's a great That's standalone nice. to Does like, it like blur give you out. Like that dewy, fresh yes. look. It also helps to mattify the skin, looks. get rid of any oil on the skin, and then just give you that smooth, flawless coverage. You know what I mean? Or prior to mm -hmm. your foundation as a right. great skin That's prep. J-Lo esque. Yeah. Yes. Bumble and bumble. Right. Coming down here. So this is Al, your best, laziest hair day coming at you. Yeah. Because <laughs> you do not need it's any hair styling yep. tools with this. It's actually you just put it in your hair, especially for curly or textured hair, mm -hmm. and then you just let it air dry and it controls the frizz, the moisture really? in your hair. Oh. Braid it up, put it down. This is Jessica using it. The before and afters are hard oh. to see because the benefit is that you don't have to use a styler with it. Okay. So you just let That's it air just, dry. Right. Thought, wait, I was like, Jessica. isn't that There you? she is, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I was like, wait. <laughs> <That's> just, <laughs> from her shower to the segment. studio. Yeah. Your Do hair you looks like lovely. it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's okay, great. good. It looks well, good. Well, Sarah, thank you. This has been Sarah. Yeah, we gotta show Jessica. Yeah, there she is. Look at that hair. That's amazing. These are great, Sarah. Thank For more so on these products, just go to today.com slash shop. All right, well, coming up, we are going to be making a beautiful dinner in today food. It's got a classic Italian dish you're going to want to serve to your family tonight. And then later, songwriting partners Barry Manilow, Bruce Sussman, live talking about their new Broadway musical. And the cast is going to bring us a little harmony in Studio 1A. Love Third hour today will be right back.
This morning on Today Food, they are already digging in. I know, Dylan just, just said it's amazing. His praises. We're making a classic Italian dish that doubles as the perfect cozy meal for Floral. And here to show us all about it, Elena Scotto, the co-owner of the iconic Fresco by Scotto Restaurant, which I so cannot beautiful. believe you guys are celebrating 30 years, 30 years. next month? 30 years. Oh, Can you imagine? And we are so thankful. You were 12 when you started the I was an infant. <laughs> um, we're just so grateful for all of our loyal customers and for our Today Show family yeah. because you guys have been with us since the very beginning. Well, I love, love it. it. So what is the dish you're bringing Okay, so today? we're doing chicken scarfariello. Scarfariello. Oh, yeah. I don't classic, like scarfariello. It's classic Neapolitan dish. We're going to mm -hmm. start here. This is a chicken, whole chicken cut up. Okay. You could use any parts you want. You want wings, you want legs. You, you can. Okay, okay. So, okay, so here we put some oil in the pan. Okay. And then we're going to brown it nicely. And uh -huh. you want it to be this color okay. before you move on to the next step. Okay. Okay. So we're going to let these brown. Okay. Right. We're going to come wrong. over here. These smell so delicious, so you're right? Just caramelizing onions slowly. Caramelizing onions. We're going to add peppers. Okay. Garlic Ooh. and pepperoncini, Ooh, which give it that great kick. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Bite there. Not too much, though. It's just the right amount. Not just the right amount. So we're going to let this like comes cook jar, down right? until the peppers are nice and soft. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to deglaze the that? pan. That's the white wine. Oh. And what we do is we try to scoop up all the nice brown bits oh, on bits. the bottom because okay. that's what Crunchy gives it bits. that great flavor. Okay. okay, so now imagine the onions, uh, the peppers have cooked down. They're right. nice and mm -hmm. soft. Mm -hmm. Soft. We're going to add some chicken stock. Okay. And then we're going to throw in, Al, thank you. Yeah, let me come on this side. Let's our chicken. Mm -hmm. And we have chicken sausage. Oh, chicken you could sausage. use any kind of sausage. Mm -hmm. okay. You could use regular sausage. or you could skip it. Okay. But we like it because like we throw sausage. in a little spice. And Elena, you just let too. it all do in the same pan? And all in the same oh. pan. We but wait, add, there's more. Yeah. There's more parboiled potatoes. Ooh. Mm. So we're going to let that cook down. Mm. How long does that take? What would you say? Probably about, I don't know, 15 minutes. Right. Not Cover long it at all. Leave it uncovered. No, you're going to leave it uncovered. Okay. okay. And then we're going to come here. So here is everything cooking nicely. Mm. Now we're oh, going to butter go to our sauce. Butter makes everything taste better. That, that's got to be like a stick of butter. Okay. And then you're going to thank me for this. Mm -hmm. This is raspberry vinegar. Oh. This Never is sweet. It takes out the acidity in any dish. Oh, this is delicious. You definitely mm. want to put it. In your cupboard, mm -hmm. some red pepper, a this little bit of delicious. spice. Oh my gosh. Isn't it so good? Mm -hmm. And by the way, tastes even better the next day. I love the, the spice. It kind of cuts the butter a little bit. Cuts oh everything. Gosh. Oh my gosh. Mm. You yes. know what? There's so much going on. Sometimes you cook chicken and you're like, oh, I've got to do another chicken dish. This is delicious. This is like a meal Great. in a pan. And it's like something pan. different. <laughs> Everything yes. all together. Home run. It. Elena, thank you so much. Yum. Thank you for having thank me. You. And again, the anniversary. Back. Congratulations on the 30th. Say hi to thank mom you. for us. Yes, all righty. Thank you. Uh, for this recipe, head to today.com slash food. Mm -hmm. So good. Thank you. All right, coming up next, songwriting dynamic duo, Barry Manilow and Bruce Sussman are here along with the cast of their new musical. It's called Harmony. They're sharing a special performance for us. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.
City Music Series on today is proudly presented to you by City. My gosh, we are in for a musical treat, courtesy of longtime creative partners Barry Manilow and Bruce Susskind. They've written classics like this one, the Grammy-winning hit, Copacabana. Well, now the duo are opening a new Broadway musical. It is called Harmony. It tells the, the true story of a very successful but little-known singing group from the 20s and 30s. The cast is here to perform, but first, Barry and Bruce, who wanted to chat for just some, a bit. Good morning to you guys again. Good morning. I'm so excited. The moment is here. We've been talking about this yes. um, for a while now. Before we get to this phenomenal show, I wanted to ask you just quickly about Suzanne Summers. I know you two were great friends. Uh, what would you want people to know about her? And I saw that she had a chance to see the show. Yeah. Yeah. What well, she did. She, she saw, saw, she saw, saw Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Yeah. 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 What, what do I want people to? Well, sure I think everybody that. knows that she was a really great person. Mm -hmm. We all we all loved her. And uh, what they might not know is she was one of the great comedic actresses mm -hmm. that we ever had. And uh, I, I know I'll miss her forever. I, I, I knew that she was ill, but I didn't know it was going to get to that. Let's, let's she talk. was a huge fan of the show, too. Yeah. She really yeah. was. She'll be missed. Let's talk about Harmony for a second mm -hmm. here. It's, it's taken 25 years mm -hmm. to, to get it to this point. How does it feel now that you've given birth to this thing? You know, it's kind of surreal yeah. that we're actually here, but it's very exciting. It, mm -hmm. It's ready. We are ready to go. Yeah, we, we walked down 47th Street just to make sure the marquee is still there. <laughs> <laughs> it's really happening. Yeah. Bruce, set up this song we're about to hear. Yeah, this is the uh, title song of our show. Our show is about the most famous, extraordinary singing group that you likely never heard of. And the reason why you haven't heard of them is the story of Harmony. Mm. And these six beautiful young men play those. And there's one other guy. Where is he? And uh, there he is. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a seventh harmonist who, uh, who, was, uh, who was telling us the story from many years later, and he is played by Broadway treasure Chip Zion. I love so that. with that, this is uh, the title song to Harmony. Oh, my okay. goodness. Should I say their names? We have cast yes, members. Yes, please. Uh, Chip Zion, Sean Bell, Danny Kornfeld, Zal Owen, Eric Peters, Blake Roman, and Steve Telsey for That's all of you guys. The title song, <laughs> Harmony. Take all it right. away, guys. New York, we are the Comedian Harmonists. Yes, first there was harmony, unforgettable harmony. Harmony, did we have harmony? But that's just about all we have Suddenly a little harmony And the poverty's not so bad Then we were poor as sin in Berlin We were ashes on our pets Mercifully when you're in harmony You're in a trap I was a rabbi before all this started. Can your rabbi do that? Here we go! Hey. Ho, ho. Hey. Woo. Woo. Ho. Chopin! 
my gosh. Congratulations. You guys are so well done. You guys play the same character. Younger, yes, the younger and the older version of the same character. play the same person. I mean, it really looks like you guys look like it. I was a lot handsomer when I was younger. Well, that was absolutely fantastic. I can't wait for everybody to see it. Thanks to Ken, to the cast of Harmony, Barry Manilow. Your smile is priceless right now. And Bruce, Sussman, I know it's been a long time coming. It is here. Uh, previews for Harmony begin tomorrow, and opening night is November the 13th. We'll be right back. You know what? You wake what? up in the morning, you just never know who you're going to see outside on the plaza. Yeah. We saw this sign. This couple, um, my grandmother, my dad's mom, was her t their teacher. Isn't that amazing? Tracy and Leslie, oh Leslie. Tracy and Leslie Reader from Oklahoma. Check out their sign. My grandmother was <laughs> their teacher. That's so, fun. That's so cool. special. Look to all that. the folks in Claremore, Oklahoma. I love you guys, and thank you for all of your support. And what they a cool, love you. What a cool morning. That's awesome. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Good morning, everybody. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Oh, you deserve to be celebrated. Way to go, Reynolds. Oh, Al. Al, you're all of our heroes. Yeah. Y'all love Al Roker. Today, powerhouse women, Jada Pinkett Smith, live in Studio 1A as she releases her candid new memoir, Worthy. Plus, the woman who inspired her, Debbie Allen, joins the conversation. Also, sportscaster and TV personality Aaron Andrews on Life as a New Mom. From Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, so up, it's today it right with Hoda right oh, 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 and Jenna. Oh, 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 it all starts right now. So <laughs> Happy October the 17th. You know how I know this date? How do you know I've this known date? this date for a long, long time because this is the date my sister was born. Is so your sister your baby sister? She is. Well, she would like to think that. But oh. um, anyway, happy birthday to Halla. It's her birthday. We had celebrated last week. But anyway, you've wish known the this best. date your entire my life. My whole life. And it's a beautiful thing. It's mm. a beautiful thing. October 17th. All the Libras out there, shout out. We love a Libra. And we're so happy you're born. You were born. Oh, happy birthday! Yes, we were. And by the way, this is a show of all incredible women, not I just mean, my sister. No. We've got in studio with us Jada Pinkett Smith. Her memoir, Worthy, out today. Let me tell you something, Jada has a big table like this, and yes. she's laying it all she out is. on the table. And I didn't know. People will say, are you a speed reader? And I didn't really think I was because I read some books yes. very slowly yeah. because I have to yeah. share them with the yeah. world. I read her book in two sittings. I read her book over two days. By the way, it's that kind yeah, of book. Yeah, it is. And the funny thing about the book, and we're going to get into a lot of, there's been a lot of discussion about what she said and what she meant, all these things. But the book is chock full of life lessons. It, is. it really is. It so, is. And also, there's a woman who inspired Jada. And this woman inspired so many people. Her name, of course, is Debbie Allen. I mean, we hear it on our show. How often have people said Debbie Allen believed in me and therefore... Debbie Allen. Yes, Debbie Allen saw me. Debbie Allen gave me a shot. And here Debbie I am. Allen. Debbie Allen gave Jada her shot. We're going to have a beautiful yeah, moment, I think, between it. the two of mm -hmm. them. And we have Fox, Fox sportscaster and podcast host Aaron Andrews. 
She's opening up about her whole journey to becoming a mom. She's hilarious. She also wants to set you up, which I have some thoughts on. Oh, you do? Yeah, I believe I should be the one setting you up. And I, normally I don't get competitive about these or territorial. You... Although I do get territorial and competitive when it comes to you. Oh. So now we're going to be in a little bit oh. of a set her up She's going to set me up with an owner or a well, general manager. I'm going to have to go and find some of those. <laughs> she may have easier access, but I know some people but, too. But by the way, Erin, we're going we're to have so awesome. much fun with her. We she's, sure are. Yeah. Okay, Millie Bobby Brown, mm -hmm. y'all, is one of Glamour Magazine's Global Women of the Year honorees. She was just here. By the way, what a delightful she's human delightful. being. She's delightful. She's down to earth. Remember, she slept in the bed with her goats? Yes, that was strange. Remember that? She loves animals. She's got, like, this incredible personality. She's She marches to her own drum. She doesn't care what A, B, or C are saying. She knows what she likes. And she, and she knows she who she is at such a young age, which well, is kind of remarkable. I think once you have your voice young, because this is what she said in her interview uh, on marriage and this was interesting she says marriage that the marriage was not in her plans but falling in love with fiance jake bon jovi uh changed that she says i think i was so afraid to be a strong woman in a relationship when i met jake i just felt i could be loud he embraced that and encouraged that here's the best line and I fell in love with myself while being with him. Oh, don't you love that? Her voice. Now, I, I am in awe that a teenager, yeah. that someone who wasn't even 20, yes. knew who she was. Totally. Because we're formed by, what does your mom say you are? What does your classmate say you are? What does your dad say what you are? What does the culture what say you are? What is the culture? Are? What yeah. do the boys think of you? And then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, this is me. I'm the smart one, or I'm the uncoordinated yeah. one, or I'm the, I'm well, the athletic and one. And I'm the, you know, there's this great TED talk called The Danger of a Single Story. Yeah. Oh, that's And good. it's always about, like, you don't have to be just one. Yes. You can be all of those things. Yes. But also, it's such a strange thing to me that sometimes women feel like we have to be smaller. Yeah. You know, she said, I was allowed to be loud. And, you know, I think yeah. many of us who are louder have heard. Well, no, here's the have thing. Have heard you're too much. Oh, you're too much. You're too much. You're taking up a lot of space. You can be a pain that, like, can you be quieter? And so you internalize that. And then you think you put on this pretend show yeah. for whoever the boy is. And you're not actually yourself. And she's at 19 being exact loud. I love it's that funny. word. I was in a long relationship where I felt like I made myself so small so that he felt seen, seen and worthy. And, you know, in our business, sometimes people do come and say hello to you. And every time it happened, it was an ouch to me because I was like, oh, he's going to feel. And this was a long, long yeah. time ago. So he's going to feel an ouch. And so to me, that was one of those things that I thought, well, let's just, we'll eat in. Let's do things that don't make him feel bad. bad. And, and therefore you, realize, you weren't. Yes. And all of a sudden you don't realize this, but you're down here. And if you have an exciting day at work and you want to come home and tell about it, you don't because it doesn't compare to what yeah. His day would have been. So you just say, oh, well, how was work? It was fine. You know, and then all of a sudden your relationship, you just get smaller and smaller. It takes a minute before you go, that doesn't feel yeah, great. Yeah, like me. Right. And you think because you're helping him that somehow you're doing a service, but you're not. You're doing a disservice to yourself. Well, to and him. to him because to him. you're not even being yes. your Yourself. real spirit, you know? You were always, I feel like you were, you always had your voice. I don't know when it, I mean, it must have come to you at some point. I mean, but I definitely in college, I was embarrassed a little, uh, yeah. you know, to be yeah. me and sort of to yeah. raise my hand in class and yeah. to public speak and do all those things. But I think pretty soon after I graduated, I was happy in my skin. Do you think, did your parents, because that's something that I think parents either encourage or discourage. They either say, shh, don't oh, come on. Oh, you know what people think? Don't do that. But what did your parents do? I think it was a combo. Yeah. I mean, I think they definitely allowed Barbara and I yeah. to have our own views. Yes, yes. People are always surprised by that. Yes. That like, oh, well, didn't they want you just to believe in exactly what they believed in? And in a time where things feel so fraught yeah. and fractured, yeah. I feel like we got to raise kids who believe their own things. Yes. Are curious and independent. And so they always allowed us just to be us and think the way we want to think, That's vote the way we want to vote, vote, go to the churches thing. we want to go to. Do your we thing. didn't have to just like fall in line. I, I, and that leads us to be independent and use our voices. I think a good exercise for anybody to think about is, think about 
what you believe, what your core values are, and think about do you really believe those or were you taught them? What things are yours and what things have you have been drummed into you that you feel like, oh, I guess that is me. Now that is me. And you're like, wait, I never stopped to think. Totally. Like, but if you purse it out and think about your life, yeah. what do I believe authentically myself? Yes. And what do I believe because since Our I was a kid. parents asked us to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was such a gift to yeah. be able to just be yeah. curious and yeah. think for ourselves. Oh, we're, we're all speaking in the same vein. Oh, Y'all, coming up next, the woman everybody is talking about, Jada Pinkett Smith. She's here with us on the same day. Her new memoir is being released. It's called Worthy. Jenna read Worthy. I read it. It's all it takes. <laughs> it's we'll incredible. be with Jada right after this. She is one of the most talked about women in the country right now, Jada Pinkett Smith. Today, her new memoir, Worthy, bears it all. And we're going to visit with Jada in just a moment. But first, a look at the whirlwind days it's been. Jada Pinkett Smith, actress. We ain't come this far. Talk show host. We are back at the table. And half of one of Hollywood's most famous couples. And now in her new memoir, Worthy, she's opening up like never before. The book touches on everything from childhood trauma to the Oscar moment seen around the world to speculation about her marriage. I sat down with Jada ahead of the release of her book. She revealed to me that she and Will decided they'd be living separate lives, not divorced on paper, but no longer married. So from the year 2016, which is seven years ago now, <laughs> yes. y'all have been apart. Yeah. A headline that caused a firestorm of reaction. Yesterday, she said something different. We are working very hard at bringing our relation, yes, bringing our relationship together. Back, back to a marriage again. Back to a life partnership. Ship. Yes. Jada, as she describes, is on a journey of self-acceptance and empowerment. And now, after weeks of anticipation, the book is finally out today. Oh my gosh, the Jada. moment, the moment's here. Today is the day. Today You're giving the day. birth to I'm the book. I'm giving birth. And you know, it was so strange because, you know, at the end of your special, yeah. I said, now I'm saying it funny, yeah. Will's getting old. Somebody needs to take care of him. And I thought people would get like, I'm a, oh, that that's going to be you. Yeah, I said, that's going to be me. Oh. I'm going to take care of him. It was in the special. You know what I think? This is what I, this is what I kind of think. I think people hear like straight uh, right. talk and you're a straight talker oh, no yeah. question right. so i think the i think the confusion came from we were know, broken up we were broken seven, up and then right. and then i think the next statement they would expect is but not anymore. Yeah, we're back right. together. Not anymore. Because yeah. I think, you know, right. there, I, there, the I feel like there were nuances. There but are not. a lot of nuances. So can we just again for the, because then it, cause people call me like, wait, what happened? <laughs> so where, if you were we're to describe your relationship. We're beautiful place. Yeah. I will never leave Will's side. Never. Ever. Never. And that's all, you know what I mean? I'll never leave a side. But just like I explained to you yesterday, mm -hmm. I'm not putting it in that box. Yeah. You know, like I worked so hard to dismantle all the romanticism. And I just want to love Will as he is, mm -hmm. right? I don't want to put him in any boxes. And I don't want to be put in a box. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, it's been beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's what, been beautiful. What does that beauty look like yeah. for you day in and day out? So are y'all living together? It's just this mm -hmm. beautiful connection. Pro we will 
Mm -hmm. Look at that. Not right now. But you will. But yeah. You will. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Why yeah. do you say that with such a clarity? Um, because that's that's what it's going to be. That's mm -hmm. where it's headed. Yeah. And you, you both know. are on that page. Yeah. And you know, but right now, I really do enjoy my space. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've been living I, you alone. Know, I'm a, I am a, I am a, my mother's only child. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so having this time that I've had to myself has been fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just to get to know me, you know, even to have my house exactly how I want it. Yeah. I don't have to be like, well, what color do you want mm -hmm. this one? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I can just do it. You You're know? the so, chooser. So I'm just, I'm the chooser. You're the chooser. Right. So when you imagine your life back together, because mm -hmm. I'm sure you've seen it, how does that look to you? We don't know yet. Mm. You'll build you know, that. We'll build that, and well, there'll be something new. Something con a little confusing, might have added to the confusion, was on Instagram, and people like to read into Instagram mm -hmm. what they like to see. Will posted something on Instagram yesterday, and in it it said something like, I'm turning off all my um, alerts or notifications. So here's what it looks like. Take a look. Fun fact about me. <laughs> I can take it now almost anywhere. Uh, oh, I don't know. What does, what that, does mean? that mean? I have no idea. That you isn't a reaction to this, you don't think? I don't know. I have no idea what that means. You didn't call I, him and say, hey, what, what is, is this? That? I know. No. You yeah, know, you you know Will has his own sense of humor. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> I it no said idea. caption. It said all notifications are off, and then it was like. Well, ding, I'm ding, sure ding, his ding, ding, notifications ding, 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 ding. were yeah. blowing up. Blowing, blowing up. up. Yeah. So maybe so, he just and, was like. He was like, I'm don't good. Me. Yeah. 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 Because I looked and you put something on there like a oh, laughing was, emoji. Yeah. 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 That was probably my team. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, I said this earlier. I read this book in two days. I realized I am a speed reader after all. And. One of the things that I learned about you is that you love radical honesty. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even when it was like jarring. Mm -hmm. yes. As a little girl, when mm -hmm. your daddy said to you, like, mm -hmm. I, I, can't I can't be, be there. Mm -hmm. yep. And yet, you know, for the, for the last, since mm -hmm. 2016, mm -hmm. you had to have been pretending a little, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't say, uh, we gotta be careful with pretending, okay. mm -hmm. right? Because Will and I love each other, right? Mm -hmm. right? And so all the love that you guys have was seen. Was real. That's real. Right. Mm -hmm. There's no pretending there. But like yeah. if you would go on talk shows and they would ask you about your sex life. And well, here's the mm -hmm. thing about that. That's mm -hmm. not anybody's business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right? did you want to just say that then? Like this is not none your of your business? business? Um, no. Because then that opens up a whole nother door. Right. right? So, so when, were you trying to just be diplomatic? Like, I think it was just trying to give us privacy so that we could it figure it out. Because mm -hmm. here we are solid as a rock and people still confused. Now mm -hmm. imagine, mm -hmm. right, that we were in, in limbo. Uh, you know, in limbo, not stabilized, both trying to figure stuff out, and then give that to the world but and have to take all the pressure that we're not trying to do all did, that. Um, I know that you guys had solid love over those six years, but you both are human beings, mm -hmm. and to go without any relations for six years is an awful long time. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine that both of you at some point had other, maybe not loves, but other partners, partners or relationships. Listen, I can only speak for myself, yeah. but you know, I had one situation and that was it. Yeah. I've been really working on myself. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I really needed to take the time to figure out me. And that's the problem. You know, people want to go from one relationship to the next. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. And I just realized, I was like, J.D., you have to build your relationship with yourself because mm. you're the common de denominator in your unhappiness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had to get that figured out. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have time to be doing all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I really have been diving into me. You mm -hmm. know, and, and that's what this book is all about. It's this mm -hmm. really beautiful self-exploration. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're putting it all out there. And one mm -hmm. of the things I've learned about your fans is they're fierce, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of them are, are feel betrayed. Mm -hmm. Right. Have you read, do you see that? Does that, do you, mm -hmm. do you well, get that? You know, it, they can feel betrayed, Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's okay. Yeah. You know, because life is messy, mm -hmm. you know, and so is marriage. And unfortunately, it's not anybody's business yeah. of what's going on in the most inner sanctum yeah. of, of our house. 
And so we've done it the best way that we needed to do yeah. it for us. Right. We can't live for other people. And yeah. I'm just sorry about that. Yeah. Is that kind of the message for people who are saying, I'm confused, they let me down? Yeah. You're well, like, people I'm can your be message? confused and people can be let down. You know what I mean? It's like if you really take time and if you read the book. Yeah. yeah. Right? And I think that's what people need. People need context. Definitely. They need to read the book. We should point out that the book, this part of the book is a chunk Tiny of the book. Tiny part of it. The book chronicles you throughout this journey that I think people will be surprised to, to see that, you know, there are moments where you didn't know if you would survive this journey. Right. And it takes you on all life's ups and downs. When someone threw you a life raft, how you almost drowned. I mean, if you're, you know, in your attic and in your yeah. grandma's house, yeah. Ma Grandma Marianne, Absolutely. there's a lot there. There's so much. I don't want people to think that this is the a head Headlines are it. You know, and that the headlines are it. The, the, that part is just a little well, tiny part. We want to get into the more. rest of it, and we're going to get into it. We're going to take a little break. We're going to talk about very pivotal moments in Jada's life, and we're going to find out how she's healing and how it may be able to help you, too, coming up after this. back with Jada Pinkett Smith. Her revealing new memoir, Worthy, is out. So many beautiful parts in this book. And I was thinking about the part that you described to me before that you were at your lowest. It was a yeah. depression that you didn't know that um, you could feel that low. And there was a point that you thought your kids would be better off without you. Right. And I thought about that long and hard. And, and I wondered, how did, you, um, how did you think your kids were going to be, how did you envision them being raised and being carried on? Because that's, that's probably the most painful thing a mom could, could think. Painful in regards to? I mean, to think that my kids are better off without me. Oh, yes, in it. yes. I mean, I've, I felt like they had their dad. Mm. You know? And that was more important. Than and that mom. was more important, meaning like, what? help could I be to them you know what I mean in that state and you know I just didn't feel that I had the level of self-worth mm. to to stick around and and be of value to them mm. it was a very painful did, dark did time did Will know that you were feeling that badly I don't think he he did not know the extent Everybody around me, every every single person around me knew that something was wrong. And with this book, my close friends and my mother, they were just like, we, we just, we couldn't figure it out. And I said, it's okay, they feel so bad, yeah. mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But I said, it's okay, I didn't even know mm -hmm. what was going on. Mm -hmm. You know, it just took me some time. Mm -hmm. We weren't talking about mental health. No. no. Yeah. It wasn't the same wasn't conversation. It. No, it wasn't. Culturally. Mm -hmm. you, you dedicate this book to your, your mm -hmm. daughter and your, daughter, mm -hmm. da your daughter's daughters, your son mm -hmm. and your son's sons, mm -hmm. yeah. all of those that will come after you. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think they would say about you mm -hmm. and putting your truth out like this? My kids? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, kids. my kids love it. Mm -hmm. Like, they've been waiting. Are they mm -hmm. proud of you? They're so proud of mm -hmm. me. They've been living this life yeah. with us. You know, and so they're so happy. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're they're like they're rebels in their own right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you know, they're always ready for the new. I feel like you've had a lot of angels in your life uh, who've <laughs> been have. hovering around you, and there's one in particular who we love as well. Um, she played such an important role in your life, and that's Debbie Allen. Yeah. What, what did Debbie? 
What did Debbie do for you, if you had to nutshell it? What? Debbie has done so <laughs> much. I mean, this woman, she, she, my career just flew because of Debbie. You know, Debbie was the woman that I looked up to. Before I came out to L.A., I wanted to be the next Debbie Allen. Mm -hmm. And throughout my life, she has just been by my side to help me through so much. When I had my first nervous breakdown, I had to call yeah. Debbie, and she got me well, some help. You like her by your side, so why don't we just yeah, bring her let's by bring your her side on one out. more time? Come on, Debbie! <laughs> Here's Debbie. <laughs> Bunny Rabbit. Bunny oh, Rabbit! Bunny Rabbit! <laughs> oh, no! Okay. Yeah, that's her. That's her. I name. feel like we all. She's got a bunch of bunny rabbits. <laughs> I'm just well, don't we all oh, need these on. these women that make us feel seen yeah. and worthy? Oh, yeah. my oh my gosh. gosh. She was the first. She, she was, was the, the first. first. Oh, well, who could yeah. not see you when you walked into that audition for <laughs> Different World, honey? She came in with a light. It was like a clear light was on her. <laughs> she had so much energy. She was so confident. And with me sitting there, said, "I'm the next Debbie Allen." <laughs> I'm like, hey, "This little heifer now." <laughs> Have the job now. Wait, don't move, Debbie. Don't, don't move. Go don't anywhere. Move. We're going to take a break, and oh. we're going to talk all about <laughs> this beautiful friendship <laughs> right after this. Yay. worthy author Jada Pinkett Smith and legendary actress, producer, and choreographer who mentored and inspired Jada throughout her career, the beloved mm. Debbie Allen. Mm. We are so, to watch we're, you all no, we're in hold both hand hands. Hand. I know, I know, I know. Both, both hands. And we each other. We love each other. Yeah. Yeah. We just always have so much to share. That love is, yeah. you can feel it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Debbie, I wonder, like, you've, you've watched your beloved put <laughs> out her heart on mm -hmm. to, into a book give it to the world. Mm -hmm. What is it? Are you proud in I'm this very moment? I'm proud of her. I'm, I'm so proud of her courage. Mm -hmm. I, I've been trying to write my memoir for two years and I just can't tell it. <laughs> I just I'm, mm, can't tell that. Can't tell this. <laughs> She's so honest. She's so authentic. Mm. And she shared with us the characters and the people in her life that just jump off the page. Yeah. Your grandmother, yeah. Mary. Oh, yeah. Yes. I love Marion. Me too. I feel like I know her. Yeah. And, 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 and her husband, Gilbert. and then you get into the whole story about your mom and dad and the challenges you had with that, and then your friends and going to, you know, Baltimore School of the Arts. <laughs> yeah. You know, all of it, all of it. It's, it's yeah, just it wonderful. It so much of Jada's beautiful life, but I thought what uh, I always, one of my favorite questions to ask somebody when I interview them is, who's your 2 a.m. phone call? Mm. Who's the person you call when you're on your knees and you have one phone call? And for Jada, Debbie, that one phone call over and over again was you. Mm -hmm. When she was at her worst, mm -hmm. she called you. Do you remember those moments and what it was like? I and do. I do. And I was just glad that I was there to catch her yep. <laughs> and to guide her and to help. You know, no one can really live your journey for <laughs> you. But, you know, as a surrogate mother yep. is what I feel like mm -hmm. to her. I was <laughs> there for her and uh, was happy that I was there to... Yeah, she knew my number. Yes. yes. 
Ask she Jada. knew your number. Yeah. Uh, Jada, what has she been? What has she been to you? How could you even put into words? Hey, did Debbie, just like she said, she's been a surrogate mother. You know, when I was out in LA, just young and wild. <laughs> young and wild, oh Debbie was right there. And you know, she wasn't judgmental. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? She yeah. was just by my side, like, okay. Just listening. Yeah, she just you. listening and just held space for me mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just helped me through a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Well, we remember back when you saw you. You described how you saw Jada as a young actress, Debbie. And there is a we, you booked a role for her, but we have a little bit of tape that we want to show. Oh, Take a look. Okay. Black Eyed Peas can't be there, Lena. <laughs> so I suppose this is just a mirage, plucking my nerves. Need I remind you that the only reason why we are rushing to do this now is because someone wants to take off early to greet her two friends from Baltimore. Let me tell you something. Me and my girl Yolanda, we know how to get a party started. And I suppose all I know how to do is end one. You're always right. <laughs> what, what did you see in her, Debbie? What was it about oh, Jada? She was so alive and so beautiful and had such spirit and edge. Uh -huh. I mean, she was a little gangster. I didn't know quite how <laughs> gangster she really was. Yeah, you read the so book, you read you're the like, book. I read the book. I, I know now more. Mm -hmm. But she was a little gangster and it was just, uh, she breathed a light, a light mm -hmm. and a life into the cast. We mm -hmm. didn't have anybody like her. Mm -hmm. And when she auditioned, I said, no, she can't be the girl with AIDS because there was no cure for it. Mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah. It was a death sentence. And I said, nope, we have to put her on the show. Oh. So um, <laughs> she came in and just brought a whole world with her. I mean, Tupac came yeah. to the show because Tupac? of her. Yeah. Of yeah. course. Uh, so much. This whole book is about owning your mm -hmm. truth mm -hmm. about finally stepping into your power and feeling going from unlovable mm -hmm. to worthy yeah for women out here who are watching from both of you all yeah if they're feeling less than what's mm -hmm. your advice you know i would definitely say it takes I, I don't think people say enough how much courage it takes to be happy mm. you know and that you know we feel like happiness is just supposed to be mm. you know and for women we're not always given the permission to speak our authenticity, you know, and specifically women of color, mm -hmm. you know, a mm -hmm. lot comes with that. And we have to give ourselves permission for that. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of courage, mm -hmm. but that's where your authentic happiness mm -hmm. sits, you know. Mm -hmm. Courage and so, work, right? Mm -hmm. Like you've yeah. been at this. This yeah. isn't just something you were like, yeah. I mean, you, you really are healing. Well, yeah, and I mean, if when people read the book, I think they'll see that. Yeah, yes, It's quite will. a journey, will. you know. And, um, you know, I think just, you know, get the book and you'll get, a, you'll get, the, you'll get the whole story. And some yeah. major inspiration, yeah. right? Yeah, major absolutely. Inspiration. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for letting me come on your journey with you. I feel like we've been holding hands through this. <laughs> I know, great Hoda. To, uh, you had a good you. hand to hold. I did. Oh, and Debbie, thank you. We yeah. adore you. We're so happy that you're here supporting yeah. Jenny. You're going to be on your book, book tour. tour. Major yes. book tour. Yes. Yes. You're going to Howard going, University. Yeah. You're going to Howard together. Yeah. What is their that going to be? Um, that's going to be Thursday. Night? Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. You're going cool. everywhere, Jada. You're going to inspire yeah. a lot Everyone of people. Everyone look online to see where you can get the book. The book is incredible. It is. Thank you. It is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. Coming up next, y'all, it's her to move on. Sports broadcaster Thank and new mom, Erin Andrews. She's opening up about her long journey. I, no, it's mother. What she's hoping other women will learn from her story coming up after this.
know Erin Andrews as a trailblazer in the world of sports broadcasting, and now she's inspiring women by opening up about her difficult road to motherhood. Yeah, we're going to chat with Erin in just a moment, but first, let's take a look at her story. You tell us this week, Patrick Mahomes. Aaron Andrews has been a fixture on NFL sidelines for more than two decades. Penalties, check. You guys did well. Turnovers, check. And in June of this year, after nine years struggling with infertility, she became a mom. It's Mac, Roger for my grandpa, who loves sports so much, stole. But Aaron's journey to motherhood was long and grueling. Everything I was doing for the last nine years was affected by IVF. In 2016, she was diagnosed with cervical cancer and underwent two surgeries. And then, after deciding to work with a surrogate in 2021, heartbreak. We ended up putting two embryos in and um, we lost them both. Last year, Aaron and her husband, Jared Stoll, tried again with another surrogate, which led to a pregnancy, the ultimate gift. Died a baby boy. Now Erin is sharing her journey to inspire others and let them know they're not alone. Oh, the dimple stage. She's got the dimple oh, right the here and here. In the yeah. Legs. Oh yeah, oh. in the legs, yeah. But in the little elbow, oh, it's really cute. So many yeah. roads to motherhood. I feel like each one of us yeah. here on this mm -hmm. couch has had a different totally. road. But um, the waiting, the praying, the hoping, yeah. the wondering, disappointment. Right. the disappointment, the road. The injections, I, the what? ultrasounds yeah. that I could give myself at this point, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. How did you um, How did you have the strength? Like, what kept you say going and saying, you know what, one more round, let's right. try again? Well, we talked about it when uh -huh. I, you guys allowed me to break mm -hmm. the news with you. I, for a while, I was just like, shh, shh, don't say my name in these waiting rooms. Like, let's yeah. just be undercover that I'm going through this. And then, like I said, you start seeing these waiting rooms are packed. Yeah. You have Kristen Walker on your show yes. and yeah. talking about her journey. And you realize there's people that are going through this. They don't know where to turn. We're so lucky because we have women in our life and we can talk about it that mm -hmm. I just decided to be open about it. But it's hard. Mm -hmm. It stinks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's difficult. You're hormonal. You yes. deal with loss. By the way, you have to deal with your partner. And yeah, that, how was that? that was because so that, hard. I mean, yeah. I, I've had a miscarriage yeah. and it was tricky yeah. for my husband and I to navigate because we had different feelings, uh -huh. you know, for different people. Right. How, how did you keep your marriage strong amidst all of it? I think one of the hardest things, and you guys are successful at what you do, my husband won two Stanley Cups. You know, I'm mm -hmm. on, you know, it, you're successful. You can yeah. say, own your worth. Love you. But <laughs> dealing with failure. And it was yeah, like, wait, yes. why is this not working out for us? Yeah. And then feeling like we were the only one. Well, who else is going through surrogacy? Who else is going through infertility? Things like that. But that's one thing I'll say about my husband from a really small town in Canada. It's not like infertility was really talked about yeah. too much. We were very, I was very vocal about it. And, you know, even when our surrogate gave birth, I think I said this to you guys, he was just like, thank you so much yeah. for what you've given. I mean, he just let the emotions yeah. pour out. And that's hard for men sometimes. Yeah. And I kept telling him, Jarrett, this is amazing you're like this to show other men. Like, it, totally. yeah, it's hard to go through it, but let those emotions come yeah. out. How was motherhood? Crazy. We're just talking, <laughs> they point out when you have bad breath. Yeah. I'm waiting yeah. for Mac to turn around and be no, like, wait Mom, till they're 10. <laughs> if coffee. you think it's hard now, wait yeah. till they have a voice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, my man's got a voice. He's got a smile and he's got oh. a little voice. I feel like I'm in school every yeah. single day, yes. you guys, because yes. I'm learning so well, much. And for us type A women, yes. I'll just speak for you. Yeah. Like, you always feel like you're inadequate. I mean, yes. we talk yes. every day. Right. Yes. Or we're doing Failure. it right. Why yeah. isn't it working? Yeah. I'm yeah. doing it, all the things. And it's working for this person. Why yeah. isn't it working for Yes. Me and what and exactly you don't want to mess up you don't want to screw up you know when you are getting screamed at all day long and then bath time and they're looking up yeah at you, totally you like, nailed it <laughs> do you want do you want another one yeah it, we do yeah. it's not it's, too early to ask no I'm actually trying to figure out when would be the right time to do it I was joking yeah. with um, Hoda about mm -hmm. like do you forget everything that happens <laughs> yeah, so exactly. being and at by the, the way, coffee shop you, and he blows you out you of do. his hands you, you do. actually do. You, do you have to relearn how to do everything swaddling it's yeah. like well, it's like for the very first time can you stick around though I would Love. Don't go I'm anywhere. We're going to okay. talk You're more about Al time. Here? Al Al is in our hour, but we're, okay. we're also going to talk about why the Swifties ha might have this young lady right here to credit for the matchup of That's a really Taylor and Travis after impressive this. Impressive And I heard you're like very a little like territorial.
director and TV host Aaron <laughs> Andrews. We are talking motherhood. We're also talking matchmaking because you may have set up the couple of the future. The right? century. The couple of the, the century. Amer as, and as we said America's on our podcast couple. and also at the game where Taylor came for the first time, America needs this. Oh, yeah, we do. It's our royal I mean, couple. And what is people's problems that aren't into it? I think this is fantastic. <laughs> but can I ask you, American royalty? Because I love, I'm, I am a Swifty. I, I yeah. take uh -huh. her mm -hmm. very seriously. Yeah. Do you, what, I don't know him. I know her very well. What? Wait, you no, no. Well, her. just through her music and <laughs> just, internet uh, fantasy. Yeah. The way you know her. Yeah. Now, yeah. you actually know him. Why right. is he good for her? I, well, I don't know her, but I pretend to. No, but you to, know right? him. And yeah. I know him. And so, prime example, did a sit down with him last year yeah. during before a game. He walks in. And he's a character. Yeah. He just lights up the room. Yeah. David Ortiz works with us on Fox, and he's the same way. Big Poppy, just big. Yeah. yeah. It's like Mickey Mouse. Yeah. <laughs> Not to mention. In a good way. In a great right. way. Okay. Another thing about him. Yeah. Guys and girls love this because I have a story about him with my crew. I sat down with him. He smells like a dream. He'll okay. say oh, it's I Louis Baby. It's I like don't know what Louis Baby is. Louis Vuitton. Sure. Oh. Oh. Um, and so <laughs> hugged me to say goodbye. Yeah. I'm teaching you. Let's go. go. So okay, I, teach me. I go. Hugged him to say goodbye. Then when to a crew meeting with a bunch of guys and they're like how'd the interview with Kelsey go this is last year I'm like come smell me guys were like wow <laughs> he's great so he's one of those guys and that gets in an elevator and smells good. good and don't forget this he bought you a baby gift. Yeah. He, see, oh, thoughtful. 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 Like, so do you see, things. like, let's go out Can and predict it, it. We want you, like, as you predict games and yeah. other things, sure. you predict gender reveals. Do you think <laughs> they're going to get married? I hope so. And I hope to officiate the wedding with oh. Carissa Thompson live on the Calm Down podcast. Oh. No. And we didn't set them up. We just, well, like, you, you, you encouraged have, it. You she never know. We encouraged it. it. Yeah, yes. because they had, he had already got the Swifty bracelet. Yeah. Told, yeah. And we were like date our friend date, date our, our friend. friend i want you to now talk about hoda but i'm gonna need to be the guest yeah, yeah. i don't know if you have guests but if you do i'm gonna need to be there because i'm very specific about who my girl dates See? and i'm a little jealous here <laughs> that, I'm gonna take oh, you're setting me up yeah. so wait you're gonna Who's set me good up for her okay. like do, what are some of the she things needs she needs somebody for? that wants to evolve yes somebody <laughs> that <laughs> evolution that's Great. you know important growth sports somebody that's into sports, sports. Into sports. Yeah, into sports. Yes. Um, career yeah 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 I said rich she yeah. needs <laughs> I don't care I don't care about that as much as no. long as career. they're fulfilled career career yeah. Yeah. She, would, she would not say rich herself. I wouldn't. I'm and I don't joking. Care. Yeah, by the but way. kind of. Um, but it smells good. Like, <laughs> leaves the room and smells yes, good. But yeah. I Aaron. think too much cologne she's not going to be into. My yeah. girl likes a light <laughs> set. Okay. Ooh, like a woodsy or an oaky? I think or... a woodsy, but not something that's going to leave the elevator stinking. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Too much used car salesman. Okay. Not, she doesn't want it All too right. much. Wait, we have to get to this because oh, yeah. you're Miss Entrepreneur. In addition you to all the things you're doing. Wait, wait, wait. You have a baby line. Oh, wait. How do you keep her in order? She's me. This is crazy. I, I'm, I'm trying to keep her. it straight. Isn't We've she? got to run down. Yes. All right. You've got to come host with me and we'll just yes. talk so much By that the people line. Turn the it bar down. here is crazy. I predict one day you're going to I predict, I predict one day you're going to work here. Wow. So you made a prediction. Now I made a prediction. Let's go. One day. All right. Forget so what do we Roker, got? Roker, you're my boyfriend. <laughs> um, so we saw Taylor Swift ended up wearing our windbreaker. Yes, of course. Windbreaker. And it's sold yes. out. And it's sold out. Here I it know. is. Mama yeah. Kelsey. And I love how she wore it off the shoulder. Yeah, my that, that's kind of cool. She's got that James Dean daydream yes. look in her eye. You know? uh -huh. um, Cowboys, it's yeah. the windbreaker. Thank you. Do you think we've they're going to go to the Super Bowl? you got the Saints? Yeah, we've got the Saints. We have more coming for you. Wait, wait. Do you think they're going to go to the Super Bowl? I don't know, but I know they lost or they won last night, and I had them against the Rams. Okay, in a, in a we week gotta or so. go, but wait a minute. Wait, wait, we've got a new announcement. Say it, say go. it, say it. Before you go to break, we announced Mac on your um, network, Show. and we're gonna uh, announce where is coming out with a baby line this week. <gasps> Get involved, all wait. the baby oh. show. Thank so you. happy. We love you. Where are we going next? Let's I don't go. know. Somewhere good. We we'll don't know. Back. Mexico. Right after Wait. this. Do you like how I tied this yes. around? I liked it. Let's go to another show.
talk to our best-selling author, Clea Wade, on learning to love yourself in the midst of self-doubt. Plus, pop culture podcasters dismiss it. Oh, we love them. And a performance by the English singing sensation, Birdie. Oh, hey, y'all. Bye-bye, Birdie. Bye-bye, Birdie. Welcome to today. So happy to see you guys. Would you like my boost? Yes. Get back. Here we go. Sometimes we just do things to help. That's our Hoda. <laughs> happy birthday. We got an awesome crowd, y'all. Welcome back this morning on Today Food, the one, the only Giada De Laurentiis, the famed chef and founder of the website and blog, Giadzi. Is, did I say that right? Yeah. That's so cute. Giadzi is here with a simple, flavorful recipe for pasta zozona. I heard you, you've been cooking. Well, <laughs> that's a stretch, but no, okay. I have learned, I, I okay. can do well, a couple can, things. Can you hold a knife and chop this for me? I think so. Or do you want me to How do, do, do you want it chopped? Like that. Oh. Well, it's not going to be that good. <laughs> Just watch your fingers, okay. whatever you do. I know, that's so, what everyone says. This is a shallot. Yes. Um, I like the shallots because they're a little bit sweeter, but you could definitely use just a regular okay. onion if you wanted to. Okay, but let's the, pretend I did this. Okay, that's great. Perfect. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, Throw it in there. there. Okay. Okay. No, no, wait, 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 wait. I got to take the, the panchita out. So this oh. is panchita. So this, the panchita this, is coming out. Wait, oh, this man. pasta is a mashup of two of Rome's classic pastas, okay? okay? Um, carbonara, which we all know is creamy. Hold on, hold yes, on. delicious. Here, dump it in there. Yeah, I was just like okay. taking an hour. Well, usually, okay. <laughs> usually I do this all in one okay. pan, but you know, today. Okay. Okay, great. That's so <laughs> good. Okay, what is this, sausage? Yeah, and this Yum. is sausage. So it's a mashup of carbonara yeah. and I'm amatriciana, <laughs> both okay. Roman dishes. Okay. One is a tomato based and one is like sort of a creamy egg based, okay. right? Okay, Would you so use you cook the these same together. Pancetta plate or whatever this is called, saucepan, if yeah. you can normalize. Yes, so I use okay. one skillet okay. to right. do everything. That's what, some I, of the fat from the <laughs> That's what I was trying to articulate. Some of the fat from the panchita cooks the onion. Yeah, I like that. Okay, because the shallot. Okay. okay. What about So all then, this? you can dump the rest of the shallot in here. Okay. This is great because this is jump and stir for you. It's I know, it is, okay. I do like Garlic. that. Garlic. Garlic, okay. Big old whole Just clothes. have your husband prep it all for you. I and know. then you can come home and put it mean, together. Seriously. Right? Okay, wait a minute. Tomatoes first. Give oh, why? Why does that matter even? So that, I'm going to show you. Yes, the whole thing. So you see how smooth this is? Mm. So in, Ita in Italy, we call this a passata. Mm -hmm. So it's basically no seeds in it. And oh. It's very creamy. Yeah, it you looks... buy it just like this. OK, it looks like ketchup, but isn't. But isn't ketchup, okay. I promise. So I'm warming this up, and then I add the spicy stuff. Yeah, so this is Calabrian chili, mm -hmm. which you may have heard of. You guys in all may have heard of it now. It's very popular these days. Delish. We're, we're too busy eating. Yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry. <laughs> anyway, this makes it spicy, and mm. it's going to make it really spicy, because that's a lot of Calabrian chili. Okay. But you could use red pepper flakes yeah. in place of it. But this has more of like a, a balancing sweet and spicy. Is it easy to find though? Spicy. All these fancy ingredients you've got. Can we find that? Yeah, you can. Okay. Okay. On Jazzy.com. Okay, oh, moving on. Oh, oh, yeah. oh my God. Move on. But black. you can okay. find it on other places. Now, what too. are these cute little pasta? Okay, so look at this I mean, little pasta. pasta. Aren't they the cutest? So these are known as Nodi Marini. So they're from Marini. Naples. Okay. And you see, they look like a little knot. I love yeah. them. And thank you. Marini. Marini. Thick. So like I, donuts. I found them in Naples a few years ago, and then I started, you know bring them back for everybody okay. to have. A little taste it. of Italy. Okay. Okay, sauce is cooking. It yeah. takes about 10 minutes, but on this burner, it might take five. Okay. Um, anyhow, so that all cooks together. So this is the tricky part right the, here. I did not see eggs coming. Well, because I said it was a mashup between carbonara yeah, that, okay. and a matriciana. Matriciana right. has panchita, it's a tomato sauce, mm -hmm. carbonara, as we all know. Okay, so how does yeah. this get into it? So it got into the bowl. Oh, I no, separated no, I mean, how the eggs. Egg yes. Get into the recipe. Yes, <laughs> because it's, it's a mashup of car carbonara has eggs. Yeah, I know. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. go. What, so whisk? You're, yes, you're gonna break up and whisk the three yolks. Look at this, y'all. Uh, look at you whisking. See, see look how good you are, yo. I think you've learned a thing or two. I've whisked. I've whisked. Okay. Okay. Ready? So now we're gonna add pecorino, half a cup. Mm. And one cup of parmigiano de Oh my gosh, now we're getting to it. Okay, so this is the trick right here. Okay. Because if you add this directly into here, it's what thick. happens? It's thick and lumpy. Well, yeah. you, end up lumpy. With, you end up with scrambled eggs. Right, right, Which you don't right, want. Right, okay, no, so no. here we go. This is a problem. It's okay. This is my issue Just with water. water. It's okay, okay. it's okay. Bring the Ready? Water in. Yeah. Okay. Is that warm Slowly, water, this is pasta water. Oh, oh. So we're using oh, it when so you cook the pasta, reserve about a quarter cup, and you're going to use hot pasta water to break this up and create a creamy sauce, slowly. So when you add this, really bugging me. 
Okay, yeah. Don't you always want to get that out of there? I don't understand. What the would whisk. you do? It makes no sense. The whisk. Right? It always happens with there the whisk. Go. Okay. Totally fine. <laughs> okay. Don't take okay. it out on the whisk. It's totally fine. Okay. Leave the whisk okay. alone. Okay. 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 So you're going to use this instead, yes. and you're just oh. going to continue okay. to mix it. We got to keep mixing it. Well, mix, and mix and add. Mix and add. Mix and add. Okay. I'm so now glad they gave us so long for this segment. Yeah. There we go. And that's it. So that this is. This oh, is now the part. we can get that yeah, in there. Yeah, so now you can get this back in there. All right, we're back to the And list. I'm going to add the pasta in the sauce. You remember when you had that cooking show, Samantha? <laughs> remember, it's coming back for the holidays. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, ye of little faith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh, you guys. You should come on it, actually, Jada. Oh, I'm good, I'm good. I'd love to. Now that you've invited, now that, you, now that you've invited me, I can come on yes. it. Okay, okay, now what? Okay, so now look. You ready? Yeah. Okay, off the heat. So we're going to turn the heat off. Yes. You want to do this off the heat? Go ahead and add it. And then you pour it in. This is exciting. I, there I we really go. didn't see this coming in the recipe. Well, what there does you it go. really add to it? Just like a thicker sauce? It creates creaminess. creaminess. Go grab a bowl and taste okay, it. Okay, I will. I will. And then this we finish it. Yeah. So we basically do this okay. off the heat. You got to do this yeah. off the heat so you don't scramble the eggs. It just keep tossing it. And yeah. the eggs get cooked by the boiling hot water. Mm. Mm. Got it. Oh, and then the heat of the pan. It is so good. Oh, good. See, you look good, good, good. good. Then a little bit of pancetta to finish oh, it off. Pancetta. Mm. Did you want to taste? No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so yummy. And then a little bit more cheese to finish okay. it, and we're done. Okay. Pasta de Donna. Donnie Marini. Donna, thank you. We have the perfect Italian dish that you can make this weekend. Homemade stracci with sausage and lentils. It's sure to impress everybody at your dinner table. Something that you could do for the new year or you could do throughout the year if you like as well. Hilary Sterling is the executive chef at Chisiamo, an Italian restaurant right here in New York City. What a beautiful spot. Hilary, it's so nice to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you an too. An early happy new year to, do, to you. So walk us through what type of pasta is stracci? Stracci is, uh, translates to rags. It's misshapen. It's something that you can actually have fun with. So do it with your kids. Do it with yourself. There's no rhyme or reason to it. You can just cut and go. This sounds like something for cooking with Cal in the future, Dylan. Okay, so keep some good notes here as we go. I will gladly do that. This is delicious. Kodakino, when you talk about Kodakino, that's a kind of sausage. But what is unique to that sausage as we do that? And I want you to show me how you do some of this. We are just going to get our pasta sheets ready to cut fine, our fine. misshapen rag. Then we'll talk well, sausage. So, so I want to be a part of the rag making process. Okay, so we have some pasta sheets right here. Yeah. So well, for rags, I mean, you can choose your poison. Yeah. We can go and cut them also. Can I like, choose my yeah. poison, as it were? Yeah. We so can you make don't really need that. Do you need this? Could you just roll this out yourself? You can absolutely that roll it by hand. Okay. That's what the Nonas did. That's what we should do. Fine. But that machine is amazing. Let's just say it. it. I it's mean, pretty epic. I'd be lost without the machine. <laughs> yeah. But it's, um, it's nice to have a rolling pin handy just in case. Okay. And if you aren't doing the rolling at home and you're looking for something that you can buy over the counter, what would you suggest? So for this pasta, especially with sausage and or a dried orchette or dried rigatoni, works just as well. Okay. Dry this is, yeah, this is what it looks like in our closet right now. Absolutely. So walk me through the cooking process. So, what are you going to make for us? Um, we're going to get our pasta boiling, our pasta water boiling over here, and then drop our pasta. So this is that cotequino. So this is the cotequino. So what, like, where do I find cotequino if I'm trying to buy that? If you are looking for cotequino right now, Italy is probably your best bet. Mm. Um, <laughs> there is a couple, or Bonitalia in yeah. Chelsea Market. There are a couple of options out there. This is one of my favorites, Livoni. Um, Cotequino is just pork sausage. Yeah. It just has a bunch of skin and fat and spices that you would never know is in there. Skin, fat, and spices. That's what sounds good as we So we're just going to pretend it's just pork sausage. Skin, it's delicious. Fat, and you guys like it? It's, it's my it's my we're like halfway done already. This mm -hmm. is amazing. Jacob's crushing it right now. We'll All let day. him just keep chewing and not talking <laughs> if he wants for a sec. So how do you make this? Walk me through the process. So we then. have our um, our cotequino. Should should I be stirring? Please. Is that how I help you? Um, so you want to get it nice and crispy. Yeah. Um, and Which means how you're cooking it high or medium. We are cooking at a high heat, okay. um, and then we're crumbling up the sausage. It comes in a, um, an already pre-cooked form, yeah. Yeah. so you just have to crumble this up. This is a really fast um, way to cook pork sausage as well, and nice and good weeknight meal if you're if you're in need of something desperate. You have the um, lentils, and what else that you're doing with it? So a traditional New Year's Eve uh, Italian dish is cotechino and lentils. Okay, it's wishing you a prosperous New Year. Am I going right in? You is are that going right in, in this order. Um, yep. How much lentil, lentils, how that, many are we? Like we are, a we are, cup, a two We cups? want a great prosperous year, right? Good yeah. fortune, so yeah. load them in there. So just put them um, in. Yep, and then we're going to put some chicken stock in there to stop that cooking process. Okay. Cooked or are you putting they them in? They are cooked already. Okay. So Good we, question. We cook them in chicken stock before. Oh, nice. 
You cook them in the chicken stock before you put them in? We cook them in the chicken stock before. Okay, okay. So once we have our chicken stock and uh, cotechino and lentils cooking, we're gonna reduce that down. Okay. Maybe just touch a garlic. You wanna grab that Yes, garlic please, I shall. And throw it Dump. in there. Yep, go for That's it. a touch, let's toss it. So we have our pasta cooking and then this is the reduced version of this. Yeah. So that we're making our pasta sauce. And how long did it take for you to get to that place? How uh, long is that cooking I would take? say um, about 30 minutes, nice and slow. Yeah. So we're going to get it nice and creamy. Let's get to the strachi, the rags, as you our say. Our rags are in here. Um, they're cooking away. And then before, we're going to put them in, and then we're going to always add the butter at the end. Mm. Mm. The butter at the end. Because the issue for me, I think, when you make noodles at home, right, is that these sometimes stick together mm -hmm. and, and it becomes problematic. Does that happen with this? Or if you mix it in, it should be as a little As long bit... as when the pasta hits the pan, we immediately move it around and okay. your pasta will never stick. Yeah, no doubt. Fine. That's the problem with my spaghetti for the girls at night. I always ruin that Also, part. butter's delicious. Let's just but be I mean, real. Yeah. Never we, have too much butter. This is butter on top. We're going to go all the in. I trust all in we there. are. Yes, we are. All right. Um, and and when you're plating just... it for folks? We are plating it. We can, as soon as we get that butter cleaned yeah. up, we'll put it right on the plate. Okay, you go, because okay. our time's limited Let's and I want to eat. All right. <laughs> you have to take a bite of yeah. this, Peter. I love how the noodles, the stracci, are thick in terms like of their width. Mm -hmm. They're wide, but they're very thin and delicate to eat. And they take a mm. few minutes, barely, mm. to cook. Mm. Uh, so. They're excellent. That's really good. This is delicious. <laughs> So we're just going to finish with some Hillary, that is amazing. What are you Thank throwing you so on top much. of it? We are throwing uh, Parmigiano Reggiano. Mm. Parmigiano. Put a little extra parm mm. when you're done with that. Dude, we're going to take care of you. And Hillary, then, this is fantastic. We can't wait to celebrate New Year's like this. This is a good way to do it. Yeah. Thank you so much for visiting us. Thank you for having me. What was me. that that you put on top? Just a little balsamic, a little balsamic to finish. Balsamic. Ooh. Delicious. Guys, this kills it. I'm well just going to sit here and Excellent. finish. Excellent. Hillary, thank Delicious. you so thank you much. You thank happy you New Year to you. For a lot more, head to today.com slash food. with today food and this morning we are rolling out the red carpet for my fiance is obsessed <laughs> the, pa the pasta queen nadia katerina munoz family started a pasta factory get this back in the 1800s wow. well today she is carrying on the cooking tradition on TikTok. How cool is that from the 1800s and now this is a new way, TikTok, yeah. right? And Nadia combines cooking with the drama of telenovelas. That's fun. And her videos have more than 34 million likes. Let's give you a little taste. Got some fettuccine and lemons. Let's put them together. Ingredients. Melt half a stick of butter with the zest and juice of a lemon. One cup of heavy cream and salt it. And now cook for a few minutes and turn it off. Add the fettuccine, sprinkle some parmigiano and a little pasta water. Mix with the passion of an Italian. Just gorgeous. <laughs> oh my wow. goodness, I want to eat right now. Good morning, she joins us now, the pasta queen. How are you, Nadia? Hi, all. I'm so <laughs> happy you're with us this morning. Buongiorno. So let's get right to it so we have Buongiorno. enough time here. <laughs> you're making two recipes, okay? So we're starting off with your cacao y pepe, and I hope I'm saying that right. What ingredient is your secret to make this dish special? So it's cashew pepe's cheese and pepper pasta. You have to use a young pecorino romano, not aged too long, and then pasta water. And 
freshly ground peppercorn. So let's get right into it. Okay, great. First of all, first of all look gorgeous. Oh, oh yeah. that's, <laughs> that's what you need. For it's pasta. so funny. Most of the time we do that off camera. I love how yeah. you like. <laughs> and the first step well, I could actually well, handle, <laughs> but then you have to actually boil water. So what's your tip exactly. on how much to put on the stove? Okay, so you have to use less water for this pasta because you want the spaghetti to be really starchy and the pasta water to be super starchy. So you use half the amount you will usually use to do the pasta. Okay. And first thing you do is toast the pepper ground. So you have them on. I'm going to splash a little bit of pasta water and that's going to be the base foundation for this rich dish. Okay. And then doing straight the uh, pecorino romano, ground black peppercorns, pasta water, which is so starchy, which I, um, I'm going to whisk in. And we're going to create a perfect cream base mm. for the cashew and pepe. This recipe is so underrated. Mm. Two ingredients, and it's one of the classics. That's it? That's it? I bet you got sauce. Yeah, that's that's tic -tac, it. you get like a minute to tell the whole thing. So I she's able it. to do a recipe. Well, no, because wait, yeah, we, have yeah. to, well, we have another recipe, but before, so you really just mix that and that's it yes. for the first one? That's it, that's it. So what we're doing right now is putting the spaghetti al dente. It's we're going sauce. to put them straight in the pan where we have the toasted pepper yeah. and mm. we're going to add the cream, you see? Mm. Oh. It's easy. So, so cool. Let's squeeze in that next one. Cream. Yeah, let's get to that. On a little... Let's jump to the next one so we have time because that looks delicious. The lemon and ricotta. Ooh. So how do we get started with this? Okay, so super simple. Okay. So you've got the uh, pasta. This is like a totally uncooked sauce. Mm -hmm. So you have the pasta al dente that goes straight into the bowl. Okay. And you're gonna have, you're gonna have ricotta, and we're gonna put it right in. Fresh okay. ricotta. Mm. Then you're gonna have a little bit of lemon juice. I like how a easy little these bit are. of yeah. lemon peels. Lemon peels. So the then heat of the pasta melts the ricotta. Was that? Yeah. And I'm going to put, that was, that was pecorino cheese. Oh, pecorino. So ricotta, pecorino cheese, lemon juice, mm -hmm. lemon peel, a little bit of pasta water, and then all you do is mix it in, mm. and the sauce just cook, cook straight with the pasta. So you're using the heat of the pasta so to smart. cook this pasta dish. Brilliant. That looks so and good. And easy. And, uh, and we could actually do it. Thank you, Nadia, so much. It was so nice to meet you. You, actually, you did something that we can all do. That's right. Long live the queen. Yes. Oh, Thank God. you, Nadia. Yeah. 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 Pepe. Arrivederci. Yes. <laughs> She's fun. I love it. And for these recipes and oh, so much more, you can head to our website at today.com slash food.
long week. Let's face it, you barely have any energy left to cook, so it's good to have a go-to dish you can whip up pretty quickly. We got you covered. Josh Mac Mama Clay is a chef instructor and teaches on Milk Street TV. He's going to show us his basil broccoli pasta. I, I just tiptoed through that one, Josh. I'm glad I got you it. You did great. Thank you, honey. Tell us, tell us about what we're making. So essentially what we're making is a broccoli pesto, and it starts with two pounds of broccoli. Now, more often than not, you will be able to get broccoli florets in just the big bags, but if you end up working with a large crown, yeah. cutting it down is actually super, super simple, and I'm not even going to look at it. No, wait. Oh, no. wow. Okay, well, now you're showing no. off. That's a pro tip. I am showing off a little bit. That's a pro tip. But the reason why I cut it down into steaks like that is because I'm getting this really, really fantastic, mm -hmm. like, flat surface yeah. area. And that is going to make direct contact with my pan. And therefore, when it roasts in an oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. it's going to get a really nice brown on it. Okay. And that's going to develop a really beautiful, savory flavor. Okay. But you want to go ahead and just discard any of the stems. You don't need those for this recipe. Mm -hmm. Okay. But... Break your broccoli florets down into one and a half inch pieces. Again, you don't have to be particularly careful about this. Mm -hmm. But all you're going to do is bring all of that broccoli together in yeah. a bowl, Beautiful. along with two teaspoons, actually, yeah, two teaspoons of regular like vegetable oil. Okay. Any neutral oil, avocado oil will work. And you're also going to follow that up with a little bit of salt. Okay. okay. So I believe it's two tablespoons and one teaspoon of salt in here. Okay. We're going to just give that a little toss. And then we're going to go ahead and arrange that on our sheet here. I have a baking sheet lined with tin foil. I'm just going to dump it right on out. Beautiful. And here's my little pro tip. You want to make sure that you're putting everything cut side down. Okay. That cut, way all of that flat down. surface wow. area Smart. that you yeah. established, that's going to get really, really nicely seared in the oven. Okay. So once you get that nice and arranged... You throw it in the oven, simple as that. So again, awesome. 400 degrees Fahrenheit, uh -huh. and I already have one that is working in there. So we'll take a peek at Look that at your one little later. mitt. That's a cute, the <laughs> cutest little oven mitt. <laughs> Thank you. I've never, yeah, no, I have so these big. big, like, sausage patty I hands. I love that. So no, when right you're size. working with, like, it is the right size. It makes things a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Now, while that's roasting off in the oven, we could go ahead and take a look at our pot here. Here, I actually have a large pot set up with six cups of water. Now, six cups is not typically what you would cook pasta in, right. um, but we're cooking in less water here on purpose, so that way we develop a lot of starches. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to help this sauce get really luscious. Okay, we and only have a minute pasta. left, so will you just help Ooh, us okay. yeah. Sorry. Totally, totally. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and blanch our basil. basil. That only takes about five uh -huh. seconds. And this is the same water that we would cook the pasta in. Okay. Like I said, we blanch it for five seconds, uh -huh. and then we throw it into an ice bath. This step is totally optional, but it really helps the sauce maintain its bright green color. Okay, okay. Beautiful. So once we get that in there, All right. we'll go ahead and fish that out, and we'll blend it up. Okay. So, so you hit it, you put it in the little food processor. And you add it. Like and you, you, add, you add to it. Oil. So, yep. Here we have our food processor. I'm just going to throw my basil right on in. If a little bit of water makes its way in, that's no problem. But you'll hit that with a quarter cup of olive oil. Uh-huh. Great. Along with a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese. Yum. Mm -hmm. Two cloves of garlic that have been yep. roughly chopped. And my secret ingredient here, we have some capers. Oh, I love capers. Now that's going capers. to add really nice. Yeah, they're okay. really, really fantastic. So after you yeah. grind that up and just put that right over the pasta? And some lemon. Yeah, we're also going nice. to throw in a little bit of lemon juice. And if you have time, uh -huh. you can go always uh, throw in lemon juice. All right, Josh, why don't you show us the finished product? Because we got to rock. Ah, you got it. So we're going to bring that together right before your very eyes. Beautiful. Show us so, what you got. Show us what you got, Josh. Beautiful. Got Josh, thank you so much. That looks really delish. We appreciate that. Absolutely. For that, for that recipe, go to today.com slash food.
this morning on Today Food. Put away that jar sauce because we are going to jazz up pasta tonight. And we're going to do it with some help from Chef Ann Burrell. She is back in the latest season of Food Network's Worst Cooks in America. This is where she, she, transform, she transforms kitchen rookies into experts, kitchen veterans. And this morning, Ann is going to show us show us rookies how to make one of our favorite dishes. What I love about this, and I was just saying this to you, this is an approachable dish. Sometimes we have chefs on and it's like 12 steps. I'm like, we, people can't make that. We can actually make this. Well, for the record, I do know how to make dishes that are 12, 12 steps. steps. <laughs> But, Don't get it twisted, but, she's also an expert. But, yeah. but at this time of year, when we're talking about light and easy and we're in the, the like, a heat of vegetable yeah. season, like this is, I just want to be eating simply yes. and quickly yes. and just, and it feels light and refreshing. Okay. So I have a pan that I started off with some olive oil and some garlic cloves. I just kind of broke the garlic cloves up with my hand and perfumed mm. the oil with a little bit of crushed red pepper. How many garlic cloves are we talking about? So like four or five. Okay. Oh. And you just put them in there until you start to smell them and then they have fulfilled their garlic destiny. Oh, then you destiny. take them out. Okay. Yes. They have garlic fulfilled <laughs> their garlic <laughs> destiny. They, it's just about perfuming the oil so we get like oh. garlic instead of garlic. Yes. Garlic. <laughs> so then I have some shrimp that I'm putting in there. And we're just doing a quick little saute on these shrimp, and then we take them out of the pan. Okay. So it's like we're cooking them about two thirds of the way okay. because we're gonna add them in with our hot pasta and stuff in later. We don't want them to overcook now. Got it. So don't want to crowd the pan either. No, a nice even single layer. Okay. Look at that. You know something. <laughs> All right. Very, I like very that. little. Something. So then very little. the shrimp come out of the pan. <laughs> we have our perfumed oil with a little bit of crushed red pepper. You know we like a little spicy. Yes, coke. we do. And so then I have some diced zucchini. Perfect because they're in season. Zucchini, you know, I make this all the time for dinner at my house and I switch it up between zucchini, sometimes I add some tomatoes, oh. sometimes I might sub out zucchini and just cut some corn off oh. the cob. So whatever veggies in. maybe you kind of have yes, around. Yes, and anything that you like that goes with shrimp. Okay. So then we have some pasta cooking and that goes right. And that's just spaghetti. Just spaghetti. Is there a reason you like spaghetti more than other pastas for this? I love the texture When of you spaghetti. try it, you'll go, like, yep. You get it. Uh, yeah. he, I mean, this also makes me feel like I'm a little bit on the Amalfi Coast, yes. <laughs> in, you know. And to that end, I have some lemon zest and juice. We bring that really bright lemon okay. flavor. Um, I have some oregano. Oregano. Fresh oregano. You know, like oregano is also like at this time of year, look. everyone just goes straight for the basil. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm gonna, I, like oregano is a little kooky. It's a little, very good. you know. Is very good. And it's less overpowering too. Basil, it's like all basil. All basil, Yum. all day. So then you add the, you shrimp. Add the shrimp. So then we add the shrimp. That have not in. been cooked fully. So, right, they're cooked about two thirds of the way. Okay. The now, th I add a little bit of our pasta water. Oh. This helps, this is kind of like the glue that kind of holds everybody together. Okay. A tiny little bit of butter, okay. just to, you know, for that mouth feel yep. kind yep. of thing. Yep. We stir Plus, that butter in. butter makes everything better. That's what I say about bacon. <laughs> <laughs> so does Al Roker. <laughs> Bacon, butter, something with the bean. Yeah. Amberell makes it better. <laughs> um, so now this is where things can get a little yeah, you know, I'm like, there's controversial. Something else. All right, let me watch. So you can, you know, there's a couple of schools of thought about this, about cheese in seafood. pasta with seafood. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I myself like it. Yeah. I understand if you're on the Amalfi Coast and the fish has come directly oh. from the Mediterranean, you know, but this I is amazing. This so whenever you a little do, bit of like, richness, yeah. it really helps the, the sauce have a so nice Parmesan mouth cheese. Feel. Just a little bit That's of Parmesan cheese and a little bit of olive oil. We turn the heat off so and we just toss it together and voila. That's it. Yep, that's it. I mean, you so could do that in like 20 minutes. Exactly. That's the point. This is this phenomenal. Is absolutely and it's like, you know, I get like a half a pound of shrimp for my husband and I for dinner for this oh. is perfect. So if I buy a pound of shrimp, I buy it, clean it, stick it so in the good. freezer. And bro, uh, way okay. to go. Yeah, you can have the zoodles. You could do zoo oh, zucchini noodles and too. Yes, if yeah, you're you a non-pasta <laughs> person, zucchini noodles are, no, work pasta. really well Thank also. Thank you, Ann. Oh. Delicious. For these recipes, it's today.com slash food.
morning on Today Food, we are making sweet and savory pies with New York Times bestselling author Allison Roman. Her third cookbook, congratulations, is out today, and you are getting back to your roots. As a pastry chef, it's called Sweet Enough, and it's filled with simple recipes for, for everybody. And so, yeah, we were talking about how, for you, baking was like an entry point uh, into the culinary world. Yeah, it was sort of the job that they had available at the restaurant I wanted to work at. I had no training in either department, so it didn't really matter. I said, I'll do whatever. And then I was a pastry chef for six years. And as a person who's not that into desserts, I feel like that was an interesting choice, but I'm glad I made it. I'm glad you put some savory desserts in the in the cookbook, too. We're going to start with that. Yes. This is your mushroom pot pie, which you say is better than a chicken pot pie. Yeah, I do okay. say that. And I, it's not even if you're a vegetarian. I just think that that's, like, the case. But I'm glad we're doing a savory pie, too, because if you're doing a pie, sweet or savory, pie crust is the most important part. Mm -hmm. And I believe firmly in doing your butter by hand, but that's also the beauty of this book is that most things are sort of done by hand or without equipment. Right. Um, yeah. So, are you Like the old with, school baking way. Yeah, yeah I get that. we're doing old school. Am yeah. I familiar with what? With pie Quiz dough. Me. With pie dough. Yeah, like the making uh, of Pillsbury it. pie dough, I am a little bit, okay. but Wrong this answer. is the real, this <laughs> is the real <laughs> deal. Okay, well now that I've made it. What was the deal with that butter that you had it cubed? Just, was that to help break yeah. it down? So it's cold butter and unsalted. And basically, you kind of just want to smash it in. And I think that this is also like is a good flour? reminder. Yeah, flour, sugar, salt, Got a little it. bit of sugar. Okay. Because it's for sweet and savory. Um, but just like have a good time, like play with it. It should feel like you're playing in the bowl of flour. So don't get too precious with it. You can add your vinegar, your ice cold water. The vinegar's in there because it adds a little bit of tenderness. The acidity, mm -hmm. oh. boring, 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 helps prevent like <laughs> gluten formation, which is Got like, it. you know, if Boy, you must boring. know. Um, Al, do you make your own pie crust? You strike me as the gentleman that might mm. do that. I've mm. tried. Excellent. I'm not that good at it. Okay. I think mm -hmm. we should get over here and try this. Right. I think mm -hmm. you would mm -hmm. trust yourself to have a much better. So you make this time. dough. Obviously, it works for sweet or savory. This, yes. this pie so it's dough. It's like a great all-purpose pie crust. It works for galettes. It works. And for can you just freeze it and hold on to it? Can there always be a roll of dough in your freezer? And you sort know, of thing, or in no? my house, there is. Okay. There is always a roll. Um, but yes, yeah, so this one is mushroom, and the reason I included savory recipes is because I sort of figure if you can make a sweet pie, you can also make a savory pie. Mm -hmm. And pot pie is obviously very popular. They don't have to be always meat-based, mm -hmm. and I feel like mushrooms are a really great way to sort of showcase like flaky pie crust, creamy filling, all that what stuff. What kind of shrooms are you working with today, Alice? We are remember. working with a multitude of shrooms, Carson. <laughs> um, these are my talkie mushrooms, oyster mushrooms, Look and regular button mm -hmm. mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but, but for like, people at home, they want to make this tonight. Like, literally, can they just grab any mushroom in the market? You can grab any mushroom in the market. Okay. And I Good think, like, the nice thing about just cooking with regular sort of button is that they are, they're more affordable, they're accessible, but shocked at the variety of mushrooms available these days. They really come a long way. Okay. Um, okay, so we are going to sort of cook half the mushrooms down. Are you guys eating this over there, Hoda? They're just, they're, 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 they're going great. for it. They did not is wait for us. Is, is there great. cheese in this? No, a little bit of cream. Okay. It's really I know we good. don't do a ton of dairy. So but good. All right, so you just cook all these mushrooms down. Yeah, we and start by cooking to half. Them, I'm gonna start eating. You cook, yeah, and then <laughs> they're like, "You have run out of time." You know what now. to do. <laughs> um, there is mushrooms, onions, garlic, and you sort of like cook it down, Delicious. do the whole thing, salt and pepper, season as you go, and then you end up with these gorgeous. Little mushrooms here. This is here. great. This is a little cold. Really I don't know good. if it's supposed oh, to be, really but it's yeah. delicious, even chilly. You know the what next it's day. Magic. Um, mm -hmm. We add more butter. We add herbs. We add flour, and oh that's gosh. basically the thing that thickens the pot pie filling. Uh -huh. The butter. Delicious. Um, so good. There's a cream. Um, I like to make the roux sort of in the pot rather than like using 28 down. pots and pans for any pot pie. Um, it makes things a lot easier. And what is this oh. liquid right here, this brothy thing? It's broth and it's cream. <laughs> it's broth and cream, which okay. is, this is not cheese, is. but not not cheese, you know? <laughs> no. But it's good. Um, <laughs> add that, add that, and it basically cooks down into wow. something really beautiful that looks mm. like this. Yeah. So, so if you want to add that to here, Creamy this is a double crust pie. And the reason I like to use a glass bottom pie plate, whether it's a savory pie or a sweet pie, because you can see the bottom bake as it goes, wow. right? So if you're like, how is it done? How do I know? With a glass bottom pie plate, well. so smart. Uh, you can see the bottom. Right. Mm. Okay, and you got a little crust on top. all around, yeah. And you then, do a little crimping around the you edges know, there? You We've got about a minute, Allison. however you want. Great, yep. one minute. 60 seconds is more <laughs> than I thought we had, so okay. we're doing great. Um, what's, the, what's the crumbly thing? Let's try the... Oh. It's just the flaky pie crust. That's wow. just how flaky it is. Mm. How about if the you, lemon pie, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Do you use a whole lemon in this lemon pie some recipe? Cream on that. The whole lemon <laughs> is in there. So it's like, it looks like there's part of the It is. It's a shaker pie, so rind, right. it's like a classic sort of thing mm, where they nice. use the whole lemon and everything, which I'm a huge fan of. But like same mm. pie crust. And 
One is sweet, one is savory, one is salt and pepper, one has sugar. It's super versatile. Is your cookbook 50 50 savory and sweet? Or is no, it it's like 95 sweet, 5 savory. Okay. Mm -hmm. I sort of did the savory because I'm like, it's for me. Too, yeah. You know? If I'm you like, were going to oh, bake course. one thing out of your own cookbook, what would you bake? Wow. Tonight. God. Tonight? Wow. Yeah, like tonight, what would you make? Maybe this lemon shaker pie. Love it. Yeah. I love, it's really I love good. the whole lemon. It's wow. bitter. It's sweet. It's not too sweet. It's sweet enough, as it were. It's so good, Allison. Mm. Yeah. Well, Come get on. the cookbook, everybody. Mm -hmm. It is sweet enough, and you can get these recipes mm. also at our website, today.com slash food. One of the best parts of Thanksgiving, of course, are the leftovers. Melba Wilson is the chef and owner of Melba's in Harlem, and she's going to show us how to repurpose our turkey insides into like, we're not just making the turkey sandwich. We're oh, doing something no. kind of yes. fresh. We, we love it. Create. Well, first of all, happy Thanksgiving. How was yesterday? It, it was, was good. delish was as good. usual. Good. All right, there's so well, much left over though. So, so what are we doing? So many things left over. So what we're doing today is we are doing my turkey Pot okay. pie, which I, pot pie. Pot pie. So smart. Who doesn't love a pot pie? Okay, so comforting, so warm, and so delicious. Okay. So Jenna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dice up those oh. uh, celery stalks okay. right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know this isn't you got it. Dicey. No, that's good. good that's enough. good. Good girl. Okay. That's that's perfect. Right. perfect. Let's pretend I diced it. There you go. And then we're gonna sweat that in and there. And is there onions already in there? Those are onions in there. And then mm -hmm. we're gonna add carrots. our carrots. Do you put butter yes. or do you put oh, girl, you know, in you know here. I put butter in there. Everything butter. is better with butter. Really yes. true. You so see how wonderful better. that is? Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna take our flour, all purpose flour. Okay. We're gonna oopsie. <laughs> Go ahead, girl. Okay. Okay. This you know is what, what I, I this is what I do at home. You okay. I'm happy to know that even Melba's even I make yes, yes, up. every now and then. All right. Okay. But the beautiful thing about this yeah. is this flour is really, really look at watch what it's yeah, gonna do. It's like making it's gonna it. get some of that make some of that room. fat and it's mm. also gonna toast it. Mm. Okay. There we go. Beautiful. There we go. Something? Yeah. Would you please add the sweet potatoes? Sweet potatoes. Yes. Sure. Pass the potatoes, you please. You got it. Yes. So these are raw. Raw sweet potatoes. Yep. They are. Already cooked or no? Well, you know you can, but well, you we'll don't want that. it to get too mushy. Do that at the end, we'll right? So now. take your turkey stock. Put May that I? turkey okay, stock. Turkey stock. Yeah. Mm. Now do turkey you smell stock. that? Mm. Wow. Yeah. So you cook that, and we're gonna cook this down for about thirty minutes or okay. so. Okay. All right. Come to the good part. So after that's cooked, we got it. No, we add, add a collard. Oh, collard, collard greens, greens going in. Put some collard greens. And collard greens going in. Turkey. In oh, the left. Yes. And so my mom, she loves the white meat, but I'm a dark meat girl. Me too. And so what I do is I just Pull the dark meat and I put it in there. So, so you're gonna put all this yep, in there? All that pulled dark I, meat in there. We don't have that much leftover dark meat. Oh, uh, really? House. You no. only have no, but, but I think if you put the, the, the white meat in here, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's in whatever. a it really, really, It really, really doesn't. Okay. But one of the other things you can do with your with your dark meat it, mm -hmm. is with your collard greens, you can add it in and use it as a side dish. Yeah, and that's it gives a good it so idea. so much so more smart. flavor. Okay. Okay, we're gonna take that perky pot. Do you want me to try it? Oh, yes. this is the no, filling. Yeah, this is the filling. We're gonna put it in. Where'd you get these? Normally, I would make them, but I've been cooking for three days, girl. Yeah, tired. I, yeah, so I just brought some little delicious Do you uh, have too much? Crust that, no, that's that's. And you perfect. put it on top? That's perfect. I mean, how cute are those? Cute. And we're going to take our egg, egg wash. wash. And, and what am I doing? Wash it right on the top. And then ha you put Beautiful. it in the oven? You're going to put it in the oven at 350 and just let it cook until it's golden brown. I've got to try this. Voila! Tell oh me what you God. think. Look at the top on it. It's so beautiful. Cute. Isn't that beautiful? And this is crunchy and crispy. Mm -hmm. And it's a great way to use leftover turkey and leftover collard greens. Mm. Mm. Oh my God. I, mean, I think kids would mm. love this. Kids mm. really would. And, you, and mm. you can use it as a starter oh, or you can use it as an entree. Mm -hmm. No, it's just so good. Mm -hmm. So delicious. Is wait, there wait, more? To, there's one more. Oh, oh, I know. This. Okay. Well, okay. Go. we also Take it with have our fall harvest turkey cob salad. Mm. Okay, this is brilliant. Okay. So, look at this. These are all Gorgeous. things that were pretty much left over. What do you right? have there? Tell us. Well, we have roasted sweet potatoes, sun-dried tomatoes, leftover turkey, bacon bits. Who doesn't love bacon bits? And you nobody have dried fruit left over. Always dried fruit. All you that can stuff. use cranberry. Okay. Or you can use cherries. Mm -hmm. But we're going to start with our dressing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love a Dijon Me vinaigrette too. dressing. All right? So we have our Dijon mustard mm -hmm. here. And did you have some cranberry juice left over? Yes, yes. of course. Well, girl, let's put that in cranberry there. Cranberry juice. Okay. Red wine vinegar. Of course. We red have a little vinegar. of that. Yep, let's put the red wine vinegar, and we're going to whisk that I'll together whisk first, right? And then you put the oil in? That's right. So what we're going to do is we're going to slowly add the olive oil. There you mm -hmm. go. Beautiful. To emulsify it. Right. Emulsify. Just so that it doesn't separate, yeah? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Hoda got always that? emulsifies things. No, she is good. You, you have a lot of experience. Hoda, you you emulsify it. Keep it going, Melba, keep it going, girl. Come on, Melba. I'm going to put a little bit of salt. Come on, yes. girl. Bam. Uh -huh. Fresh pepper. Yes. There we go. Oh, look at that. 
Now, the beautiful thing about That's this. That's beautiful. This will last for about a week in the fridge. It will? Oh, really? It really, really will. Okay. Okay, so you're just using iceberg. Uh, romaine. Romaine. <laughs> romaine. <laughs> That's okay. 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 That's all right. And you have and this beautiful. Take your toppings. We got the turkey. Just put them right on what top. You want. Whatever That's you so want. so good. Whatever you want. I'll sneak down here and try one of these. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to add some, some over Our here. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Mm. You gotta put some turkey in here, some sun-dried tomatoes. Oh my gosh. Eggs, avocado. What a smart idea. And crumble. Lay this out for people to mm -hmm. pick what you mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. It's kind of healthy. Yeah. Yeah. It's kinda I healthy. love the sweet potatoes. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Thank you, Melba. Melba. For Happy these recipes. Happy Thanksgiving. You can head to today.com slash food. just days away from Thanksgiving and this morning in our Make Ahead Monday, we're getting some inspiration to add something new to your holiday meal. This morning we are joined by Skylar Bouchard, also known as Dining, Dining with, with Skylar. Hello and you guys. she's got a twist on a classic <laughs> comfort food. Skylar, welcome. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. We are going to get cooking today. Uh -huh. You okay. guys are going to be working with me. So this this is something that we could make ahead for to be ready for Thanksgiving. Absolutely. So we are making vegetable pot pies. So okay. You can do this casserole style you can do it little side style like we're doing in ramekins um, or a little mini cast iron. I love it. It's a lot of nice. fun. Um, and then we're going to make some pear and brie pastries. It smells Are you ready? The, the, the start it for this. Good. All right. So this is onion and fennel we have going with some butter. Okay. And we're going to add some salt because you want to season every single layer of your dish with some kosher salt, preferably. Mm. Even the concept of layering just yes, sounds yummy. Yes. That is the, the base of it is so important because we're building all of our flavor. Dice so garlic, I'm garlic. adding some garlic. We're adding thyme, mm. rosemary, and sage. Oh. All the things. Yeah. All the things, yeah. all the fall things. Yes. This almost starts to smell like the base for stuffing. Exactly. Yeah. That's kind of the inspiration mm -hmm. here with the sage. We're making it kind of fall themed. We want to hang on to fall a little and bit longer. Veggie, you can add veggie broth. Yes. Or stock. Yes. That's okay. what we're doing. So we're going to build a roux. And actually, okay. Chanel, I'm going to have you help me. Okay. Al, I know you're a chef. No, so. no, no. I think Chanel. <laughs> Chanel, right. you got to start. Actually, we're going to start with some white, white wine, wine here. Okay. We're building casually a roux. or just go for uh, it. You know, what? casually pour it in. Okay. Uh, we're going to cook it off as you're pouring it in. And okay. this flour is basically the thickener for Ooh, our sauce. That Without the flour. So we have a soup, and we all don't right. want a soup, right? Well, for the sake of time, I'll yeah. Up there. <laughs> all right, yeah. Let's add all that veggie stock. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you're not like a true vegetarian, you can go chicken stock there here for go. flavor. Okay. And but sometimes, at least you have this option because there are a lot of exactly. people these days who are trying not to eat meat, so mm -hmm. you have something for them that's and still comfort food ish. Absolutely. You know? What's that? What was that? So this is my secret ingredient, you guys. This is some veggie stock concentrate paste. Ooh, so it yeah. adds a lot of depth of flavor mm -hmm. okay. and it really boldens the flavor more. And just some milk? Some whole milk. Whole We're going to just yeah. mix that up. Right. So you're going to, mm -hmm. if you're doing this at home, you do that slowly. Right. Let that thicken. Okay. Wait. And we're going to add on. all oh. of our vegetables. So in just the pour pot. all of them right into the pot. Are okay. these see, frozen veggies? These are frozen veggies. Oh, so it makes it that much easier. Even that much better. Easier. Already we prepped. could okay. blanch them all and it would take different times for 
different vegetables. Right, we'll just but just like for sake of time, time, you know, vegetables yeah. are actually frozen after they're blanched. Uh -huh. okay. So they're all part cooked and it'll cook evenly and perfectly. Mm. So okay. here's our filling, right? We're going to let that thicken and be right. beautiful. Here we are now. We I have waited. So we let this come to room temp after it thickened okay. because that's just a safer way to do it. We okay. put it in the fridge yep. up to three days. Okay. And now oh. So this part's already done? And done. Ready. Yep, it's already done. We're going to scoop it in as our turkey is resting. We mm -hmm. have our oven preheated right. to whatever the pastry instructions will say. Okay. Al, why don't you help me out here? Okay. So we're going to get a lovely square of puff pastry. Right. Just plop it on. Feel free to stretch it out. This is thawed out. Mm -hmm. Thawed the night before. That's mm -hmm. a really important thing to do. And then we you've like got an egg wash? Cooked, yup. And we're going to slit it. Oh, my God. You can slit it first or egg wash first. This might be my new favorite thing. Yes, I love that for Wait, you, Wait, I can Chanel. be vegetarian if I can wow. do this. And then this goes in the oven for how long? So this goes in. Oh it God. depends on your puff pastry. This would probably be 25 minutes. Oh, see, you know. You pulled out all the stops. Listen. I'm just going to slit yours for ventilation. We don't want it to get soggy. It's That's a very right. important step. I need Let the, the yes. steam Ow. escape. Are you the new salt bay? Pardon? Your salt bay. Get a little salt bay. Listen, whoever <laughs> at home, if you like... And that's the thing. You don't even have to be a vegetarian to love this. This no, is exactly. amazing. In fact, you Thank could put you. a little, little, little uh, rotisserie chicken in oh there. Rotisserie, so that's the other thing. What you can okay, use let's move Thanksgiving on. leftovers. And then, then vegetable, filling. I mean, uh, a dessert time. Exactly. Ooh. All right, you, we're all building them today. So you say mm -hmm. you have leftover puff pastry. Mm -hmm. This is a fun little thing. We're gonna, Come on, Chanel. Oh, Al, let's I'm get so in here. Eating. We're going to layer some pear slices. Pear and cheese? Or yep. are you doing so two, two different things? Two different. No, we're doing pear and cheese. They actually oh, complement each other really well. Oh, a sweet and savory. Well. Okay. Exactly. And it's like the idea of a little apple and cheese. Yeah. That's such a great idea. And I love a good pear, so we're using Bartlett pears. I think and mine. some creamy brie. You can use chemical. So cute hers looks. So, oh. no, wait, question. <laughs> Before we run out of time. So then you questions. just do this and then just bake it. It's that simple. That, it is that simple. We're going to add a little honey and a little sea salt. Ooh, yeah. Yep. Honey bay and My salt bay is, is Al Roker right here. Look yeah. at that. Oh, uh, this is nice. Oh, yeah. So you get the sweet, the <laughs> salty. <laughs> salt. Ooh, wow, try it. Skylar, this is fantastic. Yeah, and Ready? if you want to jazz it up, you can add some prosciutto as well. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You like God. it? Are you kidding me? No, this I'm going to hear you. It's like having your meal crunchy. and dessert at the same time. <laughs> yeah, and this is a great starter or a great dessert. So you can do either which way. Excited. We're going to take a big bite out of our favorite fall fruits with the one, the only, the returning Martha Stewart. Hi. Oh, oh, so great to be here. Oh, I can't well, believe it. Martha Stewart's fruit desserts. And we are so and excited the, to have you here in person. The recipes are so good in this book, and I've been baking every single one of them, and they're delicious. But I want to show you how to make apple pot pies. So the apples, you need 12 to 13 gorgeous autumnal apples. Okay. And uh, we're using Granny Smith's and Rome's. Uh, peel them, cut them into like six pieces, mm -hmm. 
add lemon juice yeah. to stop the discoloration and add flavor. Oh, okay. A third of a cup of sugar and a little bit of salt. Just mm. three kosher quarters, salt. Yeah, kosher salt, three quarters of a teaspoon and allspice, which okay. adds a very nice flavor. Half a teaspoon. You can stir that up All some. Right. And then you saute half of them in a pan. Add two tablespoons of flour. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, a third of a cup of bourbon. Mm. That's good. That's <laughs> He's good. Like, yeah, well, you, a little bit more won't hurt. <laughs> and you cook that up until it thickens just slightly. Mm -hmm. And then add okay. this. I guess it's cooking. Yeah. Is it hot? It's yeah. cooking. Yeah, it's a little too. So you want it to get it like a thickened up sauce well, kind of. It'll, the, it'll thicken up in yeah. the oven. Will it absorb too. that ultimately? Uh, oh, yeah. Ultimately, okay. it will absorb it. You add that to your other apples. Mm -hmm. This is half and a half of the apples. Mm -hmm. Can I and stop then, Okay. Off. Mm -hmm. And then these stir all together. Ooh, yum. Spoon them into. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> He just added more. Spoon Food. those into a pot pie dish. Oh, that's cute. See this cute, and this is okay. one no, serving. So um, you didn't put the pastry under, I know. Uh, no, no, no. Pot pies always have the pastry on <laughs> oh, top. Oh, that's right. That's right. You know. So here's a square of puff pastry, just mm. like that. Can you pre-buy that or? It's store bought. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's okay. a store bought. You can buy it. They, there's very good home uh, frozen frozen puff. Make a vent hole in the top or two, mm -hmm. and put easy. that like that, and then egg wash. Just a uh, wow, softly eggs. beaten egg. Yeah, the beautiful color, beautiful. isn't it? Uh, these are farm eggs. Really, really great. Mm. When do these things sit in water? I see water sometimes in these well, pans. Oh, no, not here. No, no, not here. It's you not don't want to do okay. because you want this to, to uh, puff up, and the finished dessert will look like that. Top, How long in the oven? Top with 375 for about uh, 40 minutes. Okay, yum. And so delicious. A really cute. A single serving dessert. Oh, that's now, easier than it, Martha. Actually, oh my gosh, I would never These make are that. awesome. By this the is my way. happy place oh, right here. No, that's very impressive. You can't even talk. Yeah. So now, delicious. do you know what this is? Do you know what that is? The Granny is? Smith apple. I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? A I'm afraid to, an apple. This is a quince. But it's oh. sort of a cross between an apple and a pear. Oh, okay. But oh, it's yeah. not edible it's uncooked. Edible. It's really, oh. they're very sour, very hard, very fibrous. So we cut them into uh, five quinces. We cut them, take the pits out, peel them, mm -hmm. and poach them in a wonderful syrup of maple syrup. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Half, yeah. uh, one cup of maple syrup. Mm and about a quart of water. Watch Carson, he's going to put bourbon in A vanilla there. bean. <laughs> I already did. Boy, this is, you have to split the vanilla bean. It's a little oh. hard over here. Oh, that's cool. And let the vanilla bean, and scrape it. You want to get all those seeds out. Do you know how to do that? No. Yeah, see the Never seeds? Done that. Those oh, are vanilla wow. bean seeds, oh, see? Good. And you leave the thing in? But then you yeah. put the seeds in. And poach all of these until they're tender. <laughs> Look what they look at the color they. Why turn. did you take the seeds out and then you put them back in? No, no, no seeds. Oh, okay. I thought you put them in there. No, no the okay. vanilla bean seeds. Yeah, that's what yeah. I need. Yeah. Oh okay. no, because that's the flavor. Oh, okay. Now here are your cooked quince. Wow. And you add to this cooked quince just a little bit of the reduced poaching liquid, mm -hmm. and is that the one the liquid from your pot? Yes. Okay. And you boil it down, yeah. and you uh, add two teaspoons of cornstarch. Mm. Cornstarch will again thicken the juices. So you don't have a very runny dessert. Okay. And these, <laughs> that Woodford Reserve is going to love you. That's a good bourbon I love them. too. That's made right down in Kentucky. Mm. I know. Yeah. My people. Okay. So now this goes right into your baking dish. Okay. Those dishes and all that will thicken up. And this is the topping, which is flour, oh. cornmeal, and you can just. Oh, I love that. Put this it's all just a crumble. Over the yeah, it's oh. sort of a crumble. Mm -hmm. All over the top like this. Had a quince in your this life? Yeah, you know, taste oh, it. You're you. I want to try it. This is fantastic. Yeah, Have you tasted it? What do you think, guys? Do you love it? So good. Yeah. Someday yeah. my quince Heaven. will come. This is a quince <laughs> crumble. I don't think I've ever had a quince, Martha. Oh, it is We're so having our first good. quince. Have you had a quince before? I, I grew. Oh, no, you oh, I grew I quinces. I've never heard of it. It's been a best quince year, too. Really beautiful. Really good. Put this all over the top. And sprinkle your almonds, sliced almonds, on top of this. Today.com slash food is where you go.
This morning on Today Food, there is nothing like a comforting meal to get us through the cold winter days like these. David Venable from QVC's In the Kitchen with David is here to show the ultimate winter comfort food shortcuts. David, it's six foot six. Nice to see you, brother. Yeah, look at you. I wish you eye to eye on things. <laughs> I was going to say, we were a big dude with some good food options for us today. So we've got a couple things. You're going to start with the pot sticker soup. Yeah, right? pot stickers are my go-to. I keep them in my freezer all the time, and I usually saute them and serve them over rice. So I thought, why not make a winter soup? With pot stickers, but do it from prep to table in 30 minutes. So you got so yeah, it's a ton of ingredients, not that many ingredients, Actually, but all easy to do. Only 10 ingredients here. Yep. So you're talking about some some beef stock that you buy in a carton, a little uh, cooking oil, soy sauce, some fresh vegetables that you're going to prep ahead of time if you don't have a lot of time to do it right at the start, and then some frozen pot stickers. What we're going to do first is we've already heated some oil in this stock pot, and I've got all that same vegetable already cooked up. Now I'll give you a little tip. Yeah. When you're doing some Asian cooking, make sure that all of your vegetables are cut small and the same size so they cook more evenly. Okay. So we're going to get these into the pot. You'll hear them start to sizzle. And all this goes oh, in. Good, this huh? only have to season or soften about five minutes. Chanel didn't wait. She's already enjoying yeah, she's it. Well, <laughs> Chanel's a good eater, I understand. I yeah, Chanel and I know each other from way back. She's a good eater. But you know what? This is fantastic because what you're going to do is just let these saute for about five minutes because, again, you're going to spend more time cutting vegetables than you are making the soup. Yeah, no That's doubt. what makes it so so great and perfect for a weeknight, right? Your, your book is called Comfort Food Shortcuts, right? I mean, a lot of these are good kid options. Your kids, who, what kid wouldn't love a little Well, I understand you have two girls, right? I've got two girls, yeah. That's why I'm playing a co Playing, paying close attention exactly, to what you do. Exactly, <laughs> because you know what? This becomes kid friendly. All the recipes in the book are 10 ingredients or less. They're all kid and family friendly. So they're really simple. I'm gonna add in some beef broth, and to that, then some soy sauce, and then finally a little black pepper. But here's the magic go to your freezer, grab your frozen pot stickers. So that's the takeaway. A lot of people see the frozen food aisle and they're like, ah, I don't know about this. You sort of turn that into the delicacy here. Well, here's the thing. Um, Prepackaged food is a better quality now than it's ever been before. Mm -hmm. 25 years ago, you couldn't find pesto in the supermarket worth eating, right? Yeah. If it was pre-jarred or pre-sauced, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So this is going to be something that is easy to find in the market, super, super great quality, and now it's really gourmet. Let this simmer for five to seven minutes and you've got soup finished up. Isn't that crazy? You don't it's even so have to good. Frost. You don't even have to No, because the, the frozen pot stickers actually frozen. will Cooking warm in the, in, the, in the broth. In the broth. Right, right, right. Fantastic. That's why we brought David Venable. And <laughs> yeah. because they are not pre-crisped, they're going to be really tender so you can get your spoon through them. Really good. Ah. Yeah. Let's talk chicken pot pies, can we? Can we oh, do that of course as well? we can. We'll start, garnish I'm, that. I'm going to eat. Do, oh, I'll, please. I'll you do that. You while you do so this. this is a biscuit top chicken pot pies, yeah. classic comfort food. But the big problem with traditional pot pies, you have to make crust and you have to make the filling and do all that kind of thing. We're going to really shorthand this. First thing we're to do is buy rotisserie chicken, five dollars in the supermarket. Easy enough. Shred that bad boy up and get it right into the pot. Okay. Then from there, we're going to add in frozen mixed vegetables, mm -hmm. some chicken stock, and cream of chicken soup. Chicken so, soup. Peter, why don't you give me a hand there? Just pop that um, bowl of frozen vegetables. Right in. Just mixed natural. vegetables. This is Peter. really good. Look, Look at that. <laughs> but Nicely the, I mean, done. The truth is, this is easy. It just is. go down the freezer aisle. You buy. Literally, it's one supermarket run, and you're done. Yeah, these are full of supermarket shortcuts. The book is full of supermarket shortcuts, really helping you get things done in record time. Pop in that soup. Okay. Then we're going to add in some chicken stock. Okay. And then, Peter, if you want to just give me a couple twists of the pepper mill. Yep. So Sorry, good. here's the pepper mill. And so simple. Now, here's a little tip I'm going to tell you. If you heat the filling first and then put it in the casserole dish, your biscuits won't burn in the oven. What we found when we tested the recipe is if we put in the filling cold and put raw biscuits on top, the biscuits would burn before the filling got warm. Okay. Ah. So you warm it first. Then you put on uh, the biscuits. Now, we've already warmed the filling here, and we're going to use what I call wampum biscuits. You peel off the paper top and you wamp it on the counter. <laughs> exactly. You wamp it here, and then and what we're going to do here, Peter, is just layer these right on top. So you just Perfect. grab those out. You Your girls can help oh, with this. Oh, we've got friends. We've got Oh, we do. Who is it? Who's at the door? <gasps> Chef oh, Garner! Oh, my goodness! Wow! Hey. We have celebrities in the kitchen. Celebrity chefs from Sesame Street. I love it. I love it. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Come on in. Are you guys hungry? That's well, a I yes. know. So I think that's a yes. Right. Say, of All right. course. Well, I tell you what. This is 30 minutes in the oven. Can't beat it. And then you got a kid-friendly, family-friendly, wonderful comfort. And the cost is, is is near nothing. Is it? Well, it's so easy. And these are all ingredients you have on hand, or you buy in the market. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Chef so Garner. Thank you, Cookie Monster. Thank you for thank joining you. us. Have you some pot pie, guys. Right. Jocelyn Delk Adams, mm -hmm. she's back with us. She's the author of Everyday Grand. Jocelyn, welcome back. Good morning. Hey, it's been so long, guys. Oh, 
Good to see you. Thank you. What are we making? Lemony chicken rice casserole. Chicken thighs. The chicken thighs, because you know it makes a difference. Yes, it does. Right? Makes them nice and juicy. So we're going to start by dredging our chicken thighs. We've got some flour here. I'm going to add in some Parmesan. Yeah. I've got onion and garlic powder. You're like, ooh. And then, of course, some lemon zest. You know how to you know the zest. Okay, let me see. Let me see this. Let me see these skills. This is a woodworker right here. How much do you want? All right. Oh, you like, how much do you want? You're like, I'll be over all day, right? Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right. I'll give you more. I'll give you more. All right, all right, all right. I'm putting you to work here. We're going to whisk that up. And then we're going to dredge these, okay? We're just going to add this right in. And why is it so important to dredge? Well, we want to get that nice coating. It's going to give us like that nice, crisp coating. I'm going to get it in that flour. Does it help thicken up the sauce well, it's pour also it going to thicken it? up the sauce too, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then could we're going to add almond this. flour if you want. Of course okay. you could. Oh, come on. You know, <laughs> you know. And we're going to put this right into our oil. You can definitely play around. You can even mm-hmm. use, you know, any type of gluten-free flour okay. if and that's you like, like to a, start skin side down? Yeah, I do too. I do. Mm-hmm. I like to, crisp to get it up that a nice crisp. crisp. It up. Yeah, we're going to get that crispy. And then we're going to work on our casserole dish. Do you have to cook it through in the pan? Well, you don't because okay. we're also going to throw it in the oven, Perfect. too. So okay. we just want to get it browned and then we can get it in the oven. Okay. So we've got some cream of chicken. You want to whisk okay, this sure. up for me? Okay. And then this, I've oh, got some cream of chicken too. There you go. Yeah. Because, oh, wow. you know, nothing's more comforting than yeah. some yeah. Cream yeah. chicken yeah. Yeah. soup, right? So. Got and would you add just back there? Broth, yep. And then I've got our rice that we're oh. going to go right okay. in here. And then awesome. I've got some garlic too. I'm going to pop that okay. in. Well. Yeah, because we love garlic. And then down here, of course, you can see that our our um, our chicken thighs are mm, ready. Right. And then this oh is when gosh. we're just going to add this right into our dish. Oh, Goes right in. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. You already this tasted is, it, oh, didn't you? Started it. This you is already worth making. did it. I know you did. This is That's, worth oh making tonight. Yeah, look, you're gonna do it, aren't you? Oh my goodness. Chicken goes it. in. So you just put it in there. Yep. So it's just a one dish. Pop this oh, in. That is. Pop this in. And then in. how long are you going to put that in the oven for? We're going to put this in the oven for about 40 to 50 minutes. And then oh my, usually oh we gosh. cover it mm-hmm. with foil because we want to make sure all that rice gets really tender. Oh, oh, Y'all over the there are killing my dish, right? Wow. Y'all know how oh, I do. Wow. All right. Oh, wow. And then the lemon goes on top because oh, it's so beautiful. So you cook it with the lemon there. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. to get oh, a little bit more of that How long do you bake it? She told you. You know about your eating. You're eating. Come on. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on? I can't remember. Oh my God. So yeah, oh my. this goes in. You put the foil over the top, mm-hmm. bake it for about 40 to 50, then take it off if you want to brown it oh a little gosh. more for about 10 minutes, and then you're ready to serve. Oh, oh you got an delicious. air fryer salmon. I sure do. Four Wait, this ingredients. Is an air fryer? Yes, four ingredients. Because yeah. we were talking about the air fryer, how it's like the perfect okay. appliance. If you want to add another appliance. <laughs> yeah. I've never made salmon you know. in the air fryer. So easy. How easy is it? So easy. What are these? Like, so easy. And it's done really quickly, oh, too. Four ingredients. Okay, what is that? So I've got some oh soy God. sauce mm-hmm. in there. I got some honey. Ooh, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let me see. What else do I have in there? I can't got even remember. Comes out. Yeah. Oh, that's a garnish. Mm-hmm. And then you just drop it in the air mm-hmm. fryer for about like ten minutes. But mm-hmm. sometimes it depends on your air fryer. Sometimes it cooks really quickly. Mm-hmm. But I love the air fryer because it gets that nice crisp skin mm-hmm. at the top. Oh this my is God. delicious. Come on. Great. Well done. All right. I like it's to make salmon great. skin bacon. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Well, I like that. What do you do? You just. Just put it on. Just take some of the skin off the. In fact, I go to the. I go to my fishmonger. And you know, he gives me extra. He goes. And don't it's like so he goes good. to his, his I love this right? skin. It's so good. He goes to his fish monger. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I two for two on this. You guys love them? As one. As one. Uh, so I like good. a fish monger. It's been a little while, but it's time once again for Cooking with Cal. And this time we are making my mom's famous casserole. Like, super famous within our family. Okay. It's a, a super easy weeknight dinner, and my boys literally eat bowls and bowls of this. Take a look. It's another edition of Cooking with Cal. What are we making today? Casserole. Casserole. So there are so many different types of casseroles, but this is what my mom made when I was growing up, and she just called it a casserole. Whatever mac and cheese you like to use, we're gonna use gluten-free, right? We're gonna use some veggies, some ground beef, and we're gonna throw it all into a pot, and that's your casserole. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna put the pasta. So I use the zucchini and the carrots because I hide them in the casserole and you guys don't even know they're there. But we like them. You do. Well, you finished that one already? Yep. Are you a speed peeler? No. You're just really good at it? Yeah. Yeah? That's like 
record time. What should I do next? The zucchini or the onion? Zucchini. Uh, but what do I do? Well, uh, I'm just standing here. That's true. You are just standing here. Want me to give you something to do? Yeah. Let's see. I could do the zucchini. This knife is really very sharp. So, I'm going to give you these strips. Cut them in like to little pieces. So hard to open and shut. So much glugs. So many glugs. That's how I measure things in glugs. Okay, when that starts sizzling a little bit, we're gonna add the meat. Can I mix it? Sure. So while this continues to brown up, let's yeah. finish up the mac and cheese. Pop this right in. And that's it. So after 50 minutes, it should all the flavor should come together. It'll be a little crispy on the top, and we'll be good to go. Oh, it's so hot. Mmm. Mm. Love it. For these recipes and more, head to today.com slash food. This is delicious. Thank Yummy. Thank you. It's just like a good yeah. family style meal. Now, if you want to go super crazy, okay, okay and make this even more retro, if you take slices of American cheese mm -hmm. oh, yeah, and put it on top, 1984 throw it in pie. the microwave for a second before yeah. you eat it, it is so oh, delicious. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good. So, My kids would love this. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank okay, you, Cal. Guys. We'll be right back. There, there you go. go. It's like comfort it's food. <laughs> Today, food, we are bringing you a dish straight from the south of France. It is called Provençal Vegetable Casserole. Brings back some childhood memories for our guest chef. Chef Daniel Bell. Hello. He owns several award-winning restaurants around the world, and he's joined us this morning to show us how to make this beautiful dish. Chef, it's always a pleasure to have you. So let's let's start with this special place that it has in, in, in your heart. What's the story there? Thank you. Well, this is the kind of dish I cook every summer in my parents' home in Lyon, oh. because all those vegetables come from the garden. Oh. They are in full bloom, and uh, we always make this. And sometimes I cook it in huge pans mm. for at least 30 people around the table. Wow. And you can also cook it for just so a small scalable. gathering. Yeah, okay. a scalable, totally. And normally it's called a bayaldi, mm -hmm. or a tian of vegetable. So here you have some red paper and some onion. So there's always a base here. Don't be careful. 
I never oh. used that knife here before. <laughs> so, you know, NBC knife is good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I am slicing the vegetable, and you don't have to be too fancy. I'm, I'm putting paper, I'm putting onion that has been sliced. And this is the base with some garlic, some a little bit of, um, you can put uh, paper flakes, you can put the jalapeno. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you also, use the red pepper. I assume you can use little green bit of salt. or whatever peppers you have. Yes, absolutely. You put a little bit of rosemary and how inside. Long you cook this down? You yeah. put a little bit of thyme. <laughs> Ooh, the paper is hot. <laughs> so uh, you let it sweat until it's tender and not color a little bit. Mm -hmm. okay. And okay. <coughs> now you're you, going to do a little. Do you keep the herbs in? And there then you, you slice me some herbs? vegetable. What about the basil here? Do we, we not, we not use uh, it? You can put some basil as well. Yeah, why don't you put some couple of leaves of basil? Sure. So this is the base: onion, paper, basil, herbs, mm -hmm. garlic, and then all the vegetables. So normally. You could take your time and make this dish very fancy. Mm -hmm. Kind of like I a think ratatouille? They may have a picture to show like uh, of, a, of a tian of vegetable where it's layered uh, color by color, vegetable mm -hmm. by vegetable. Okay. The difference of this with the ratatouille is that this, we don't roast the vegetable. We mm -hmm. bake them over the onion that has been sweated like okay. this. So uh, we use some eggplant. Voila. So I am putting olive oil. Mm -hmm. I have eggplant, I have yellow squash, I have tomato, I have zucchini. And kind of whatever you have in your salt, garden. Salt, pepper, more. of course, this. And then we can put a little bit more basil leaf inside. Mm -hmm. And actually, I just toss it like this. Okay. That's the quick version. If you have time and you want to play with the family and all that, then you can you just make dump it. That right on top. Voila. You put it all on top like this. And then you bake it in the you oven at right 350, oven. 375 it. until it really baked down mm -hmm. and it evaporates and mm -hmm. voila. That's all. This is wow. the casserole of Provençal vegetable. And this is the perfect side oh dish my. to use yeah. up all those vegetables. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is totally vegetarian. Mm -hmm. And you can use it with a, lo a roasted leg of lamb. You can wow. use it with a roast chicken. You can use it with eggs on brunch. And oh, wow. This is... And it's a quick version. I don't know. You, they told me, Danielle, you will not be able to spend an hour making all these vegetables beautifully <laughs> laid down. So what, do you have any quick version? And I said, yes, I'll make one. <laughs> and that's just and toss that's your, your vegetable. Version. That's yeah. your version of beauty. TV there, by the way. Oh, oh well, that's, that's your version. Yeah, that's the cook one. And there's mm -hmm. the other one, which is the, the raw one, before I put it in the oven. Mm -hmm. And that uh, is, like, beautiful. It's, uh, in a way, it's very artistic. It's very soulful. Mm -hmm. It's very Provence. And it's very summer. And how long does it cook, cook for? Because the vegetables have still a, a bite to them and, and a lot of flavor. Um, you could cook that for about an hour, I would say, 45 oh. minutes to an hour. Mm -hmm. If you like your vegetable a little firmer, mm -hmm. you cook it for 45, 40, 40 to 45 minutes. But an hour, an hour and a half, and what's delicious yeah. is you don't eat everything. The next day you reheat it, That's and it, it has an different flavor yeah, in an go. omelet or something. Chef, thank you. Merci, Thank you, you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, by the way, for this Happy recipe, summer. it's today.com slash food. It is Superfood Friday, and today nutritionist Joy Bauer is turning two family favorites into casseroles. Good morning to you, Joy. Hey, Joy. Hey guys, we are casseroling right into the weekend with two scrumptious recipes. And the first is a veggie packed cheesy pizza casserole. Let's Can I just it. tell you how much I love my job? <laughs> I love my job. Okay, so what we're starting with is a cauliflower crust. Oh. So here I have four heaping cups of cauliflower florets that I microwaved. And then you're just going to want to mush them with a fork and take out all of the water. Then putting in some eggs, some mozzarella cheese, whoops, got a little bit stuck here, a little bit of Parmesan. And because I wanna bring all those pizza pie flavors to the okay. table, this is Italian seasoning and a little bit of garlic, salt and pepper. So this is gonna all get stirred up and I'm gonna show you what it looks like because I push it into the bottom of a casserole dish mm. and let me show you how it cooks it's a crust okay. this is a real crust and at the same time that this crust, is huh? cooking we are going to have an antioxidant love fest oh, because that. i roasted all these vegetables again at the very same time Incoming. we're going to layer it look at this and you could do any vegetables that you want and honestly you could also open up your fridge and you could throw in whatever you have left over from the night before this is really good joy and i think with all these veggies it's like 
You wouldn't even know. It feels naughty, but it's yummy. No, I feel like it's I'm like an... getting ripped right now just eating this drink. <laughs> oh, you are. It's an <laughs> antioxidant <laughs> love are. fest, I tell you. It's good. <laughs> so here it's I delicious. have um, tomato sauce goes over the mm. top. Whatever marinara sauce is your favorite. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're going to layer on some more ooey gooey mozzarella cheese, or you could oh, blanket good. it with uh, slices of mozzarella, and then you get those puddles mm. of cheesy bliss. Mm -hmm. And a little bit more Italian seasoning. That's and then good. I like to fake out pepperoni slices. So look what I've done here. I just sliced some tomatoes. You put That's them good. right in the oven, and it just, just until the cheese melts. So I would say really that good. this is probably about mm, 15 minutes. I'm going to show you That's what this win. looks like. And, Joy, I, I want to also get to the taco. We're know, already we're pigging out on our casserole. Uh, really good. Tell us about Oh, there <laughs> it's it is. Really good. We're going to eat that yeah. while you tell us about the taco. Okay, so this is a Tex Mex dream. I'm going to grab mm. over here on the skillet. I have some sauteed. Lean ground turkey meat. Okay. I'm going to bring over all my fixings. And all you're going to do after the turkey meat is cooked, I put in a rinsed can of black beans, okay. of some corn. I have two cups of jarred salsa. You know what I say? You are the sauce of your, you are the boss of your sauce. Boss so it could be sauce. mild or spicy. This is good. And a taco seasoning packet. Oh my gosh. We can do this. You do stir this up and you're going to then, let me show you how easy this is. You can do this tonight. I, I have a casserole. Tonight. I layered some whole grain tortillas oh, right yeah. on the bottom. I'm sampling you one. You put your meat on top. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to add some cheese. I'm going to get to the finished one. You add some cheese. You put another layer on top of the tortillas. And then anything you want. I'm going to show you this idea. taco bar. And you can set up a taco bar. Look what I have here. Shredded lettuce. I have um, tomatoes, Yum. scallions, jalapenos, guac, sour cream. This is a no-brainer. And everybody, right, you could make your own personalized really taco. Good. Really quickly, Joy, how long do you, you bake it for? I mean, maybe 10, 15 minutes because all you want to do, the, the meat is already cooked. Right. So all you want to do is melt the cheese and you want to slightly get those tortillas a little okay. bit browned. It is sensational. So good. Home run, Joy. Thanks, Thank Joy. you. For these Happy recipes. weekend, everyone. You too. You too. Head to today.com slash food. This morning, Jocelyn Delk Adams, founder of Grand Baby Cakes, also the author of Everyday Grand, which, oh, by the way, is available for pre order as we speak. Sure is. And <laughs> Jocelyn is here to share her spin on a classic and easy weeknight dish 
the casserole. And you're going to help me. I am going I am <laughs> going to help this morning. So tortilla chip casserole could not be easier. Tortilla you can get the kids involved. Casserole. You can even do this, okay? Cuz I know you can be <laughs> I know you can be cooking challenge. So we're going to get True. this together. So to start, I'm going to show you how we're going to dice up these like bell pepper, okay. right? You're going to get these strips just kind of get them together really easily and then just go down to create like these small little dices, okay. right? Really easy. Just gather them up and that's all you Even gotta I do. can do that, Josh. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. Yeah. See, you're okay. winning already. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start on our meat mixture. I've got some ground beef here. Gonna add this to some olive oil. You hear that nice sizzle? And I assume you could easily swap that out with turkey or yeah, you can even use ground turkey, chicken. Even ground chicken. <laughs> okay. Yep, whatever you got is fine. And then I'm gonna add in our bell pepper here. Mm -hmm. And then can you add in that diced onion yes, and some garlic yes, for me? So that's it. That's pretty that's simple it. so far. So yeah, you gotta start cooking this down. You're gonna brown it. How much garlic is that? Uh, I mean, hey, is I it? love garlic. Okay. All right, add it in. All right, oh, yes, add as much as you want in there. And then this is when we get into the flavors. Mm -hmm. Like we're gonna add in two salsas. So if you have Taco have Tuesday that. tonight, of course, yes. you might have some leftover salsas. Mm -hmm. Add in the red and the green. That's gonna give us ample flavor like here. Chunky one, Josh. Yeah, and like you can grab the chunky one. for yeah, yeah, that chunky. texture. You take your salsa seriously. Out there. I, I can't play around with salsa, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We're gonna add in this salsa, and then we're gonna oh, add in some really taco good. seasoning. So just store bought taco store seasoning. Store bought. Wow. Get it in the little Easy. packet and just toss it all together mm -hmm. with some chicken stock. Chicken stock. What's oh, the word, Al? It's very good. Mm -hmm. really good. Oh, it's yummy, crunchy. right? So yummy. Oh my gosh! So you're gonna cook this together. This is our swap. So Hello, this turns the magic into of that. TV. Okay. Yep, looks really good. You're gonna let that kind of thicken up into this, and then we're gonna start adding in our additional texture. We've got is that cream of mushroom? It is. Oh, I love that. I know. It it's makes it so creamy. For everything. You throw it into that. everything. We throw it into soup. everything at my home. Yeah. Everything. Cream cream mushroom mushroom soup. Soup. Oh, yeah. Just oh, yeah. throw it into everything. Wow. It makes everything so much better. Why do you and like it so much? What does so it It's so creamy. It adds mm. so much richness along with like the sour cream mm. in this. It mm. really Umami. makes that texture so great. Yeah. And I love anything with mushroom too. We're going to add in some black beans okay. too. Grab that, add that in, and of course the sour cream I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Throw that in too for that extra richness and that tang. And this then we're gonna like add in some Mexican cheese. cheese blend. Yep, get that in there. Right. And we're gonna stir that together. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. And then this is when you get the kids involved, or mm -hmm. you can get rid of like your morning aggression. I'm gonna have to like, <laughs> you know, just go for oh, it. And yeah, then, you know, you go. Ugh, get that get out. The kids. Get the, I know. He's like, I'm taking that over. Yeah. Right. You're gonna crunch oh, so that this together. Is cool. This goes in the pan. Goes in. And you then can, you build it. Yeah. Yeah, and then you just start building it, and this is where we get into our casserole. It's almost like a lasagna. You're gonna just layer it up. Oh, mm. the oh, bottom that's... layer is Doritos or whatever yeah. corn chip is. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. you can, can do the Frito. cheesy ones, mm. Fritos, mm. Fritos, mm. like whatever your hot. faves are. Yeah. The flaming hot, mm. you know, get some oh, spice like in there. Like whatever you love, like you can really adapt this and make this into whatever this is really you like. Good. It's almost yeah. like a layered dip. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it is. And like you bake it off, and you get all those textures. You get the crunch. Oh, it's so. That How long do you bake it? About 30 minutes. Okay. And then you're going to add some cheese on top. Don't add the cheese at the beginning and put the foil over it because it'll, it'll stick, stick to, to the, the foil. foil. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh. So do it, My take the foil off, this. and then right. just add the cheese and then let it get all the end. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it comes it's out so I'm going to taste it. Yeah, Tell oh us about God. this new cookbook. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's called Everyday Grand, yeah. and it's all about just mm -hmm. loving and enjoying every single moment of life. So like, great. I wanted to just make a book that just made everyone happy, mm -hmm. right? Finding so much joy and just beyond just holidays, like, you got a good hair yeah. day, celebrate. celebrate. Yeah. Yeah. The book is hey, terrific. So Ooh, that's good. I think and Al endorsed it. I was so grateful to awesome. him. I mean, like, hey, you changed the tire, celebrate. That's good. I Your four year old's gonna love this. <laughs> yeah, she loves it. <laughs>
good friend, Chef Ryan Scott uh, from Ryan Scott to go. All right. Right. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take chicken apple sausage. You want me to cut it? Yes. Okay. Look like at, this? Oh, my goodness. She can actually I chop. have been gone for two years, and I come back and <laughs> You've been Jenna... gone for two years? Well, I mean, it was COVID. I haven't been oh. in the studio. You haven't been in the studio in no, two years? No. Hi. Why does it feel like this we... is your first time in I know, two years? Because right? you know what? You were on Zoom, and then we just yeah. love you so like much. We know you. All right, so All we right. chopped that so up. So chicken apple sausage, you yeah. can do pork sausage. You can even do the vegetarian sausage if yeah. you wanted to. Okay. Mm, I wouldn't really. Yeah. Okay. So this caramelizes and it gets super delicious. Okay. So once that goes in there, get it nice and crunchy because you want those little pieces in there. Crunchy. Then we're going to take some onions and some sage. These are already caramelized. These are Look at already that. cooked. Mm -hmm. And then what we do, Hody, take these out. I like how it calls me Hody. Hody? Yeah. Take those out for okay. Me. Okay. Oh, by the way, wait. Yeah. yeah. I watched you a couple days ago. Yeah. Light bright in my house. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have the old one from the 80s, and I have the, the new, new one. one. Wait, yes. does the new one hold up? No, I can't stand it. I like oh, the old one. one. You know why? Because it's just, it has, Light like, two, two extra, like, things. No, yeah, we, we don't, don't want extra. That. I want the car to Simple. start without a button. I just want to turn the yes. keys. Totally. Yes. Like, give me old, old school. school. Thank you. See? Okay. Uh -huh. All right, now All right. we, what is that? Watch. Apple. Apples, not <gasps> onion rings. Look. So, so here's, you leave the onion juice. Yes. And you put the yes. apples on and top. And you put it in away from you. And look at this. So now we have that sweet and we have that savory okay. that goes all together. Now we're gonna go into our pantry, kind of like a little quick oh, fix. Here. I'll take this away from you. Okay, me. thank you. A nice little mm. quick fix. So what we're gonna do is make the wet batter, and this is pancake batter in your pantry. So easy. So Plain easy. old pancake Everybody batter. Everybody has it. All right, Jenna. Okay. You go over here and take four eggs. Okay, and is this some cream? cream? Yep. Oh, good. Because we're cream. super Since watching you out. haven't seen her in a while, she's no longer lactose intolerant. Oh my oh, god. Something happened. Here, it's a here, miracle. Here, just drink straight from this. There you go. <laughs> Oh, wait, now, do we add for the 11 cheese? Years, I know. Two dishes I'm not to... kidding. I don't know what no, happened. No, she's fine now. It's it. weird. <laughs> like, literally, you woke up and you're like, yeah. I can have dairy. By the way, we'll it's... tell you what she did later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so chives and yeah. a little bit of salt comes Yeah, down, this is like... giving me, like, I like that vibe. Okay. Yeah, it's now giving me, what? like, baked potato vibe. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay, and what's this? so now we, this is pancake batter. Yeah. A little bit of, so we have sage and onions in there. Here is dried sage. Should I join this? No, no, not yet. Watch, watch. And a little bit of water until this comes together. Could you use milk? Yes. Oh. Um, should you? Should, should you use well, milk? Well, since now you're not lactose, Dump we'll it. go ahead and just go. So yeah. it's what I would do is go like this. So you have your egg batter. You have your apples caramelized. So Jenna, let's do the layers. Come over here. Go. Okay, okay. Okay. So here's my favorite part. Wow. Okay. So everything is. is mixed. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our sausage and our onions and our sage, dump it on top of the caramelized apples. Oh, oh I love fine, that. Right? Doesn't this look fun? And Looks you kind of spread, spread it. Spread it out. Okay, okay. then the what? The next thing you do, watch this. <gasps> wait, ready, wait, wait, ready, wait. Ready, camera guy? Oh, Ooh. yes. Wait, what are you doing? He was ready. He was ready. Oh, he was ready. Yes, he was ready. Look at him. Ryan turned the bowl right way. So there that becomes kind of like a giant pancake. Okay, watch now. now do, you, do you start cooking that? Oh, watch, Mama. Well, you're just still go. adding? Go. We're going to put the egg eggs on top. Is that what Wait, makes it a Dutch baby? Real? The Dutch baby is more the pancake aspect of it all. And then the eggs you usually uh, would so be inside it with a little leavening, and then you have to bake it real Okay, so, so what's watch. happening? This guy goes in the oven. Oh, in the oven. Okay. 15 minutes about. 400 degrees. Oh, look at and that. And then you cover it for 400 degrees for about 15 minutes, and then you uncover it, and it comes oh. out. And then what's cool about Wait, this look is at this, this can go big, in the fridge like the night before. Pie. Get over here. The Get night on before it. this can Get go on in the it. fridge, and, and then you, put, you pop it out. And oh, you put on. a little syrup? Hold on. A oh, little, I need little syrup. syrup. And because syrup. you're no longer lactose, yeah. what this else has butter and maple syrup in it. Do it. Do it. Bring it. And you know what else she could do? What else can I do? Because she's no longer. What? You could add a little whipped cream. Or, oh, girl. Good, good you are cheese. crazy. Or tequila. Oh, my God. Right? Well, that, no, that, that doesn't really have really lactose happen. in it. Just, that doesn't it's have it's lactose. It's a... Oh, my okay. God. Okay. You can tell me. What do you think? Mm. She's waiting for you to Wait, eat. wait, wait. Mm. The mm. sausage, mm. the apple, the egg. Hold on. Let me try The this. maple. Oh, my gosh. Let you did it. It's sweet and savory. Okay, when it's cold outside, mm -hmm. there's not much better, nothing better than a hot and hearty bowl of chili. Mm. And this recipe is just what you might need for a busy weeknight. Dina Delisa Gonser is an award-winning home cook. She's the personality behind 
dishitgirl.com, which is such a cool, clever name. Oh, thank you. How Dina? are you? Hello. This seems like the per perfect recipe, especially for today. It is like, it's like it freezing is. It cold out. It is freezing. Out. You got that chill on your bones. You want to get it out. So let's do some chili this. for okay. sure. Okay. But let's do it a little bit different. Okay. Now we're I used to those tomato base. We're going to go for um, a white chili oh, with yeah. a little bit of coconut milk in there. Oh, I like You're going to start up with your onions mm -hmm. and your garlic. We're going to chop, chop it up it. a little bit there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then and you put it you Yeah, put we're going to put that in the pan with a little bit of coconut oil. Coconut oil. Coconut yes. oil. Yes. Coconut I just want to tell you I'm a big fan of coconut oil. She likes all oh, forms. There put you go. Well, this is, this is for you. What's and that? I like garlic? to saute the onion and the garlic just to um, get yeah, a little long? bit. Um, I give it like two minutes, two, three minutes. You just want to make sure that it's not that raw. Yeah. Onion flavor yeah. getting Look into your. Look how cute your... and teeny your spatula is. Oh, is it? Adorable. My eyes are. What, 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 happened? what is happening? <laughs> we got is like, this a doll it's like spatula? Bar it's like Barbie. Barbie came to visit. Is this the American girl? <laughs> okay. okay. All right. So we have that. So you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna start. You can also throw in some of your spices. We have some oregano. Do you want me to help you? Over here. Yeah, that'd be great. Let me use my spatula. <laughs> yeah, and this just kind. You know what? Wait, you put it in there. You oh, could put sorry. it straight in. That is no problem. Where is it supposed to go? I'm sorry. Oh yeah, go for it. Or you can also saute that along. Alongside the oh, onion okay. and garlic for Sorry. a little bit, just we to open know. up those spices. Okay. Should I dump this no in? No problem. Is so this all going here? It's all. You're just gonna dump it dump. and dump. go. My dump. We've got some chicken broth in there. We've got some kernels I'll of take corn. Care of this and I'm using green, green chili. Yes, green chili. I like a little spice. How about you? Okay. Yeah, we heat. like it. But is yeah. this kid friendly or not really? It is kid friendly. <laughs> it is what not are you super doing hot. With chickpeas. I love chickpeas. But you know what you could do, Jenna? Is you could just take the chicken that's in here that's kind of falling apart and put it into. You can just make a quesadilla oh, with ooh, it. Oh, great so idea. That's, yes, that's right, what we do. So come on down. What's the, you, so this so is look, your, we're going to shred our here. chicken. This is how you do here. it? Yes. Yeah. Shredded chicken in a blender? You're just going to click it on, and it's going to do that work? hard work oh. for you. Yeah, look. Now, is that just like a rotisserie chicken you buy at the grocery store? You know store? what? You could take yeah, rotisserie better. chicken, yeah. and yes, you could use that as well. Okay. And again, like I said, huh. just. Wow. Look what happened there. Yeah. I've never seen that before. Me either. Well, look at that. New trick for the new year. So here we go. We're just going to what's in there? The corn and all that? So this is what we. Um, mm -hmm. Raise down. We have the okay. corn. We have the chickpeas. So do you end up putting chicken. this chicken in here? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That gets really soft. You put it and take it out. You shred it up. And then you, you put, put it, it back all again. together in here with oh. a little bit of coconut milk. Coconut. Another couple Look of minutes. Look at that, that coconut is. milk. It's yeah. foamy. It is Thick. beautiful. Can I just taste right? it. I know how it is. What are you Go doing? Oh, it's good. You she gotta love the food you're working with. Coconut gotta love milk. The food you're okay. With. And you're gonna let that cook down till it thickens a little bit. Now, what have you done here? Then, you put it in a baked potato. Yes, yes. we put it in Dinner. a baked potato because you just need it to be a little bit hardier. Why okay. not? This is the kind of recipe that's great even for the next two or three days. Okay. And you top it with fridge. avocado. Yes, mm -hmm. we're gonna go and we're gonna give it a nice little squeeze of lime here. Mm -hmm. A little bit of mm. jalapeno, mm. depending on how hot you like it. Mm. Cheese. I mean, if whatever you want to dream up to top it with, you top it with. You go for it's it. It's spicy and delicious, mm. but not too spicy. That's but why I love that's it. That's so good. Mm -hmm. And if Gina. you want, you can mm. even do a little bit of mm. chipotle sauce if you want to kick up the heat. I, I mean, I, 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 the spicier, the better for me. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> this is delicious and mm. hearty and yummy. Thank you for this. It's mm -hmm. really good. No, me. And you can get this recipe at today.com slash food. All right, this morning in today's food, a hearty meal that's packed with nutrients. Health journalist and author Max Lugavir is here to show us uh, a recipe from his new cookbook. It's called Genius Kitchen, over 100 easy and delicious recipes to make your brain sharp, body strong, and taste buds happy. That seems like yes. a great combination. Yes. Yeah, that's a lot to promise, but the cookbook <laughs> delivers. It's, it's the only cookbook, I think, that can simultaneously shrink your belly and grow the brain. Oh, wow, I I'm, like I'm it. I'm super excited so about. So brain foods in particular, what in this recipe would make our brain smarter? Oh my God, every aspect of this recipe is calibrated to support brain health and mental health in accordance with the latest available evidence. And it's delicious as well. Awesome. Awesome. Right. So how right. yeah. yeah, so this is a, a mole chili. A lot of the recipes in my book are internationally influenced and inspired. Mm -hmm. And so we've got our ancho and guajillo chilies right here, which add a little bit of spice. People that eat spicy food every day have reduced risk of early mortality by about 14%. So it's, wow. if you like spicy food, that's a, that's a nice perk, okay. right? Oh. So what we want to do is we want to combine the mushrooms with the chilies. Mm -hmm. But these are dried. These are dried mushrooms. Uh -huh. mushrooms Why do you are like great. using dried? We like using dried because they have uh, more of an umami Water's flavor. Ready. The water's ready. It's <laughs> boiling. That's perfect. So we want to put, do was... you want to do the honors? Sure. So you want to put about a, a cup okay. of boiling water in there. And typically when you're preparing this recipe at home, you want to let it sit for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Dried mushrooms, as compared to fresh mushrooms, they have more of that uh, umami flavor, which mm -hmm. mushrooms are known for. And the darker the mushroom, the more umami flavor. So right. it doesn't matter which mushroom, so long okay. as you're using shrooms. 
<laughs> so you let that sit for 10 minutes and then you put it in a blender to puree the concoction. Now what you want to do is you want to chop up an onion. Uh, we don't want any bloodshed on the set, so I'm not going to do this <laughs> live. But um, but we have our chopped onions here, mm. and then we've got delicious garlic, and we've yeah. got cilantro stems. Oh. We don't waste any of the cilantro. Uh -huh. So we're using the stems, which actually have a more potent cilantro flavor than the leaves. Oh, that's interesting. Oh. The leaves are great for a garnish. They sure. look really beautiful as mm. well. So we've got our chopped onion. We've got our cilantro stems. We've got the garlic. Garlic is, by the way, a wonderful prebiotic fiber, really good for gut health. Okay. Oh, and so is that why you're using a lot of garlic? That. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also keeps the vampires away. Yes. All right. I was thinking that. So. Here we have a crock pot. It's a very thick pot, really good for evenly distributing mm -hmm. the heat. And we've got our sliced brisket. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a big fan of grass fed, grass finished beef, but mm -hmm. any beef will do. It's a very nutrient dense food. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, what we want to do. It's fatty, that's okay. That's still good for our. Grass finished our health. beef fat is actually quite healthful. Yeah, it's a, okay. it's a, it's a decent source of omega 3 fatty acids, mm -hmm. good source of vitamin E, and pristine protein. Okay. So, you want to put the beef in the pot like so. Is that olive oil or? I use avocado oil, oh, okay. which is very heart healthy and uh, chemically stable for high heat cooking. Mm -hmm. So we okay. want to use avocado oil. There's what, no, why avocado oil? Well, it doesn't impart a flavor like extra virgin olive oil does. So it's from a flavor standpoint, it's neutral. Mm -hmm. But it's very heart healthy. It's rich in monounsaturated fat. And the point of this step is we want to get a nice char on the outside of the brisket. We want to we want to develop a cr uh, a crust mm -hmm. on the uh, surface of the brisket, which lends a really delicious mouthfeel. So yeah, you're doing a good job. So you want to cook this for a little bit, maybe mm -hmm. about 10 minutes to get that nice sear going. Right. Okay. You also want to throw the onions in the pot as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get your hands dirty. Love that, Al. <laughs> oh. Amazing. Yeah, so you want to cook this. How about the garlic and onion? Yeah, throw the garlic, the stems, all that good stuff. Look at that, you can smell it. The garlic oh, it is becoming delicious. fragrant. Mix it? Okay. Yeah, okay. mix it up. Again, the crust on the beef is, is key. Mm -hmm. So you want to brown that up. You want to brown that up. Everything else yeah. yeah, you want to brown that up. Because okay. it, it lends a really nice mouthfeel. You don't want, uh, uh, you don't want like a uniform consistency with mm -hmm. brisket. Okay. Right. And um, you can also use you can use whole brisket. We decided to chop it up, but a whole brisket would be easier to um, to shred. What are these? Some of the spices you're putting. Cayenne. So here we've got a little bit of cumin, mm -hmm. we've got oregano, and we've got ah. chili powder. Oh. So you want to add these in. My Again, oregano doesn't look like that. Yeah, they come in different in different forms, but typically, um, yeah, we, we yeah, see some flowers like on there. Mm -hmm. But again, spicy food is really great for your health okay. if you can if you can stand okay. it. Not you'll that, this, not that this, this dish is too spicy. Right. You'll sauté this then. What goes in? You sauté that in. Yeah. It's already starting to get. I mean, just smell yeah, it. Yeah, it smells, smells so delicious. Good. I hope we it's only not too have early. about a minute, no. so I want to right. make sure we get right. So great. then we want to throw in the diced tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've got a bit of a tomato puree. Throw that into the mix. And okay. is that chicken broth? We're compressing time here. Yeah. 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 And then this is bone broth. Bone broth. So bone broth oh. is rich in collagen. Does it right. taste the same as regular broth? It uh, it tastes similarly. It's not soup. But okay. what makes it the mole? So the mole, we add dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. uh, Again. The, oh wow. The, yeah. So we so this is the finished. Um, it's almost finished. We want to okay. add the dark chocolate to it. That's okay. how you make a mole. Did, dark chocolate is really good for the go. heart. You stir it around. Mm -hmm. Did I miss that? Where did the chilies and the mushrooms go? We At the puree it. So we put we put the puree. You're meant to once you puree it, you put it into the uh, oh okay into the dish. So yeah. So okay. Well, thank you so this much. This was amazing. We really We're gonna eat this it. in so the break. Let me taste the bite. Right. I know. And be sure to check out his cookbook and mm. for this recipe. Which is oh, fantastic. Wow. Oh man. Wow. Today.com. Oh my goodness. Food.
excited this morning because we have a super special guest here for Today Food. Brian Baumgartner starred as Kevin on the hit NBC show, The Office. And Office fans will definitely remember this <laughs> iconic scene. At least once a year, I like to bring in some of my Kevin's famous chili. The trick is to undercook the onions. Everybody is going to get to know each other in the pot. I'm serious about this stuff. I'm up the night before, pressing garlic and dicing whole tomatoes. I toast my own ancho chilies. It's a recipe passed down from Malone's for generations. Oh, I just like feel for you with that. Well, guess yes. what? Brian became serious about chili off screen as That is well. so funny. So now he's compiled, <laughs> listen to this, some of his favorite recipes in the Seriously Good Chili Cookbook. How many recipes did you say? 177. 177. Wow. I opened it up and I'm like, okay, this if you like chili, this is your man. This is it. Is it true sure. before that scene you weren't a chili guy? I no, I no, I'd never made chili at all. <laughs> I and I made it one time. It was like football season. I posted it online. People went nuts. nuts. Yeah. They went crazy, and I thought, okay, and I started getting into it. It, it, oh, thank you, Al. <laughs> yeah. I'm putting you to work already. Oh, sure. Very nicely bit. done. The thing that's funny about that scene is it wasn't even like the whole episode. It was the 30 seconds at the beginning of the show. When you saw the show. I, I, well, it always makes me laugh when, when I say to people, I meet them, like, what's your favorite episode of The Office? Yeah. And they say the, the chili one. I'm the like, chili well, episode. Very good. It was good. about 90 seconds. So how do we get started? We want to make Ke Kevin's signature so chili. This is okay. Your this is, this is my recipe okay. that I have, uh, I don't know if it's as famous as yeah, Malone's. Let me come on this side. All right, you're going to go there. <laughs> yep. Okay. And and now it's about it's about chopping. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna chop very carefully, and then we're not gonna Good. chop that carefully <laughs> yeah. anymore. We're gonna chop. Nice and, chunks. And we've got some uh, some vegetable oil in here. We're gonna mm -hmm. add it all in okay. to uh, to all the in. pot. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna put it all in there. And here is here is where uh, Kevin and I are, are similar. The the trick truly is. Uh, to to undercook the onions. Okay. okay. You Undercooked don't want to caramelize them. The peppers oh. too. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, and you want the onions to be translucent. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've got some uh, some garlic. We've got some onions, and we've got uh, some green peppers in there. So okay. then you cook it down. Oh, and then so fast forward. So yes. Good. We're we're still here. Al, you helped it to not get fully caramelized here. Um, once once that's cooked down, mm -hmm. then we're gonna add in. I, you can you use, like turkey? You, I do. I like the ground turkey. You uh -huh. can obviously also use uh, ground beef. For sure. Okay. And uh, we're going to saute that in there with uh, the peppers and the onions and the garlic. Mm -hmm. Now, here's another trick. Okay. Okay. You add the tomato paste once the turkey is like half brown. So it's not okay. brown brown. Not brown brown. A little That's pale. That's so right. Absorb okay. some of the it does. tomato flavor. Yes, and it it to me it sort of combines all the flavors mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. Now this is not lightly brown, no. but we're gonna pretend but, but it is, <laughs> and it's gonna be delicious. It's television. Yes. It is television, <laughs> Al. Yes. Um, mm. And so we're gonna combine that all together. Mm -hmm. Now, once that's browned. Sorry, I sneezed. That's okay. Wow. That's okay. It's I live television. Anything sneeze. can happen. It's I didn't fine. Sneeze. America, Into the crew. relax. Don't try this it one. We're <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, all right. Once that's brown, right? Then what we're gonna do? We're gonna have some diced tomatoes. Uh -huh. We're gonna okay. put those in. Just canned diced tomatoes. Di so canned good. diced tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Then uh, some tomato sauce. Right. Okay. Right. And, and then what are the spices? And then we've got some. We've got some oregano. And if okay. you wanna, you're gonna add it with flair. You can do that. Oh. We've got some chili powder and. And we've got some oh, ancho chilies it's and the jumpy, a little it, salt. That's the uh, antithesis of the salt bay. How messy is your kitchen? With that's, that's my question. <laughs> I don't He's spill the a, chili, but <laughs> spices are totally allowed. And then, when do you add, and then when do you add the beans? And then, so the beans, mm -hmm. uh, beans with chili sauce, right. don't, don't drain oh, it. Oh, you like, okay. Yes, but you add that when we're about 20 minutes Thanks. away from serving. Okay. Because you, you don't want to get the beans, you don't want to get the beans mushy. Over. Wow. Oh, right. well, so the beans are soft to begin with. A fan. Mm. This, this can be cooked all day. Yeah. Oh you can God. reduce it all the way down and then just add the beans uh, mm. when you're ready to serve. This oh, is great, this is, this is perfect. Is it? No, really good. I was just telling you before, my husband doesn't like cumin. He loves this. Doesn't have cumin in it. This is the perfect chili I can make at home. It Brian, is perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you guys, From one Brian to another. 
Yeah. You've thank created you. magic, Brian. Oh, this is thank delicious. you so, so oh, good. If you want you. this recipe, and we can all do this one. It's an easy recipe. You can go to today.com slash food. By the way, watch Brian at all nine seasons of The Office. Relive your favorite moments. The streaming on Peacock from our parent company, NBC Universal. Mm. with today food joined by one of our favorite chefs Ooh. our Bobby Flay that's right he's got a new book out next week called beat Bobby Flay conquer the kitchen with 100 plus battle tested oh. recipes oh. yeah this morning Bobby's teaching us how to win in the kitchen with one of his all-time favorite dishes Bobby just when you think you know everything about chili <laughs> you're going to do something. Is it a secret ingredient? Is it like, are you going to add some coffee grinds to it? Or are you going to, what are you doing? You're just taking the meat out? You're robbing us? <laughs> well, I, I, it is a vegetarian dish, but Carson, you have to understand, first of all, on Beef Bobby Flay, I don't get to decide what the signature dish that we're cooking is. It's the other chef. Oh, that's right. So I got challenged to vegetable chili, and also my girlfriend doesn't eat meat, so, you know, I got to adjust. Smart so man. how do you make it good? Works. Smart man. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, so come on over. So, um, I'm going to start by making the base of the chili. Every, I always say everything good starts with onions and garlic. So we're going to start with some onions and garlic and then some tomatoes as well. And, of course, you need to bring some spices into the game. And, Bobby, so well, who's like your girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, you buried the lead. I, I, wow. Just kidding. I, I, I knew you were going to go there. Yeah. I knew yeah. you were going to go there. Well, you brought it up. Uh, she will re she's going to rename uh, Nameless for now. Okay. But, but okay. thanks for asking. Oh, I'm going to Google it. <laughs> I'll have it by the end of the oh. segment. Wow. Yeah. All right. So the go chili ahead. went Wendy right out the, the window. Sure did. <laughs> Nothing remains nameless, Bobby. It's 2021. How'd you guys meet? Anyway, so then you add then you add a dark beer to the uh, uh -huh. to the chili, which yeah. is one of those secret ingredients, with, right? And then this becomes the base of it. Now, Carson was asking, like, you know, you rob us of the meat, but you can use things that are veg that are vegetables that actually wow. give us the uh, the texture. Very of the attractive. Meat, meat like. So we're going to Very we're going Carson to Carson uh, founder. Job Carson job founder on the internet. Gonna, we're not I will not say, say it out loud. Hand, but we promise. Very, very impressive. No, he didn't. He did. He did. He did. He did. He did. Yeah. Okay. Vegan so or we vegetarian? Have, uh, <laughs> no. Veg you really are dating up, Bobby. You are really wow. dating up. You are a lucky wow. man. All right. So anyway, <laughs> went off the rails. What, what vegetables are you using there, Bobby, to replace so the meat? Thank you so much, Al. Thank you so much. So we have uh, we wow. have eggplant and portobello mushrooms Ooh. because they they have that sort of meaty texture. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add that to the to the chili as well. 
and we're gonna let this cook for a little while. And then basically what happens is you have the base of the chili and it mm-hmm. looks and feels like chili. It tastes like chili, but it's completely meatless. And and then the thing I love about chili is that it becomes like this canvas for all these like really cool garnishes that you can put on top, which is really the king, oh, right? A nice so Ooh, that's beautiful. We have some yogurt that uh, has a little bit of uh, uh, shishito peppers in it and some lime juice. Mm-hmm. We want that nice cooling effect. And I have some avocados in here with some um, with some diced red onions mm-hmm. and some chilies. Yeah. We're gonna put some avocado mm. on top. It's almost like uh, the chili becomes a vehicle for all these cool things that you want to eat. A, little, a, a few tortilla chips for some crunch. Mm-hmm. Got to make sure you have that crunch going. Hey, Bobby, does, it, does the chili Mexican take cheese. less time because it's meat based? I mean, vegetable based than, yeah. than a meat based one would. It does, Al, because you know if you're cooking something like eggplant or portobello mushrooms, it's going to uh, it's going to cook a lot quicker. You just want to make sure that the mushrooms then the eggplant mm-hmm. cook all the way through because then it absorbs all the flavor from the base of the chili itself. You want to cook at that dark beer. You want to get some of that earthiness as well, and uh, and then you know you, you just you, st- you start to garnish it. A little bit of lime zest on top, so you have some acidity, you have some spiciness, you have a little sweetness, mm. all the good things, and it's a uh, it's a very warming dish. I have to say, like. When I first said, when I first heard that I had to make vegetable chili mm-hmm. on beef Bobby Flay, I was kind of bummed out because, mm-hmm, right. you know, I am I am a meat eater, and um, but I have to say, like the eggplant and the mushrooms do a great job of substituting yeah. it, and of course it's a little bit healthier. I mean, people are eating a lot more vegetables. I was going to say, are, are plant ba- is plant based having its moment now, Bobby? Oh, it's unbelievable. You know, as a chef. We constantly have to adjust to uh, to the trends of the way people are eating. And I will say one thing. People are eating healthier and healthier, and I don't think that's ever going to go in reverse. Mm-hmm. I think it's only going to keep going in that direction. Bobby. So we have to really get very comfortable with cooking vegetables in lots of different ways. Yeah, what did your girlfriend say when she tried oh, that first wow. bite? I was just curious. <laughs> Just trying to help you here. No, trying to help what, a brother out. So what, what did she say? <laughs> Whew. Um, you know what? I haven't made this for her yet, to be perfectly honest. Oh. But you know, it's it's on the dock. Well, it's been it's been, it's been the summer now. Now you know it's getting a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you're right. Uh, well, is she there right now? You tell her to step on in. <laughs> no, she's not here. But, but oh, yeah, yeah. thanks so much for having me. You're the best, kidding. Bobby. We love you so much. Does she's she, so fun to fun harass to you. you? Does she have a key to the elevator? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what else is in your book? We have a couple seconds. What other kind of recipes? Are they all vegetarian? Uh, well, you know, th- there's all kinds of things, from like piri piri chicken to shrimp and grits. Oh, um, mm-hmm. There's some great desserts like a spiced chocolate pudding, yeah. um, eggplant rollatini. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, um, Salisbury steak. There's, there's really classic home style dishes. Mm-hmm. Cool. And then there's a couple of things in that are a little bit fancier. But it's a, you know, if, if you're a fan of the show, I mean, uh, Al's been on the show a couple of times. Um, it's such a fun show, and um, we've, we've, we've shot over 500 episodes. Jeez. Wow. Cool. And, and you've only uh, lost so twice. So obviously they're it's not amazing. all in this yeah. book. This is volume one. Our, so oh, hopefully wow. there'll yeah. be more volume. It's a terrific right. book. Thank you, Bobby. It's a great show. It's a great book. Thank, Thank you, Bobby. Bobby. Good luck Bye. with the relationship. You guys are the best. Can't wait <laughs> to see you. Bobby <laughs> Flay is out next Tuesday. Find out more of the chili recipe with no meat in it. Go to today.com slash pouring I think you've learned a valuable lesson, Bobby. There's a new meat Bobby Flay. We're like 13 years old. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer has two hearty slow cooker recipes that you can set it and forget it. 
Hey guys, it's no secret that I am in love with my slow cooker. And if you're like me, you are really gonna enjoy these recipes. The first one is eggplant parmesan. So I'm starting with two large eggplants. I'm just gonna trim and then I'm gonna slice them into about half inch rounds. I have paper towels lining a baking sheet here. We're going to salt the tops to help draw out some of the bitter water. And this is also gonna help our eggplant slices to keep their form within the slow cooker. So these need to sit 30 to 60 minutes. And while we're waiting, we're gonna head over to the stove to make our garlicky walnut breadcrumbs. So first I'm adding one cup of whole grain panko breadcrumbs, one cup of crushed walnuts. And I saute this for about 10 minutes on a medium flame. And I'm gonna add in some garlic, some dried basil, and some black pepper. I'm gonna take this off the heat, and we're gonna mix in some parm. I'm gonna take you back to our eggplant now. I'm gonna press down with paper towels onto my eggplants, which have been sitting because I'm sopping up a lot of the excess water. I'm gonna season up our slices with some garlic, oregano, and a little bit of black pepper. And I'm gonna add in a little bit of tomato sauce to line the bottom. And now the fun part starts. You line the bottom of your slow cooker, then for your garlicky walnut breadcrumbs, more sauce, I've got part skim mozzarella cheese, calcium protein, and of course, cheesy goodness. And you're gonna repeat the same exact thing with two more layers. So you have three luscious layers in total. And now for the easiest part. Put on the lid and cook it on high for about three hours and 30 minutes. Guys, this is so good. And now we're gonna mix things up I'm gonna take you over to my island and we're going to make a salsa verde chicken chili. And I'm starting with butternut squash. And butternut is packed with potassium. It's got beta carotene, great for your immune system and so many other nutrients. Some onion, of course, a green bell pepper, finely diced. And this is a jalapeno. So this chili is customizable to whatever spice you want. And now I'm adding salsa verde. And this is reduced sodium chicken broth. Gonna mix this around and I'm adding in loads of spices. And I'm gonna mix this around again, all the flavors, get them nice and well combined. And you're gonna add in two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast. I'm submerging the chicken into the liquid, put the cover on, and let it cook on high for about four hours. 30 minutes before it's done cooking, carefully take out all of the chicken breasts, then add in two cans of rinsed and drained beans. Stir the beans, put the top on, let everything simmer, and while that's simmering, you're gonna shred your chicken. Then put the chicken back into the slow cooker, stir everything together so the chicken can sop up all of that scrumptious liquid. Oh my goodness, guys, this is so yummy. The flavors all complement each other. Mm, this will definitely warm your soul this weekend. That Yum. is good, yeah, all right. Cooker out. Uh, for these recipes and so much more, go to today.com slash food. Welcome back this morning on Today Food, the one, the only Giada De Laurentiis, the famed chef and founder of the website and blog, Giadzi. Did I say that right? Yeah. That's so cute. Giadzi is here with a simple, flavorful recipe for pasta zozona. I heard you've been cooking. 
Well, <laughs> that's a stretch, but no, okay. I have learned. I, I okay. can do well, a couple can, things. Can you hold a knife and chop this for me? I think so. Or do you want me to how do, do you it? want it chopped? Like that. Oh. Be well, it's not going to be that good. <laughs> Just watch your fingers, okay. whatever you do. I know, that's so, what everyone says. This is a shallot. Yes. Um, I like the shallots because they're a little bit sweeter, but you could definitely use just a regular okay. onion if you wanted to. Okay. But let's the, pretend I did this. Okay, that's great. Perfect. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, Throw it in there. there. Okay. Okay. No, no, wait, 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 what? wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I got to take the, the pancetta out. So this oh. is pancetta. So this, the pancetta this, is coming out. Wait, oh, this man. pasta is a mashup of two of Rome's classic pastas, okay? okay? Um, carbonara, which we all know is creamy. Hold on, hold yes, on. It's delicious. Here, dump it in there. Yeah, I was just like, okay. taking an hour. Well, usually, okay. <laughs> usually I do this all in one okay. pan, but you know, today. Okay. Okay, great. That smells good. Okay, what is this, sausage? Yeah, and this Yum. is sausage. So it's a mashup of carbonara yeah. and okay. amatriciana, both okay. Roman dishes. Okay. One is a tomato based and one is like sort of a creamy egg based, okay. right? Okay, Would you so use you put the these same together. Pancetta plate or whatever this is called, saucepan, if yeah. you can normalize. Yes, so I use okay. one skillet okay. to right. do everything. That's, some of the fat from the <laughs> That's what I was trying to articulate. Some of the fat from the panchita cooks the onion. Yeah, I like that. Okay, because the shallot. Okay. okay. What about so all this? then, you can dump the rest of the shallot in here. Okay. This is great because this dump is stir for you. I know, it is. Okay. I do like Garlic. That. Garlic, okay. Big old whole Just clothes. have your husband prep it all for you. I and know. then you can come home and put it together. Seriously. Right? Okay, wait a minute. Tomatoes first. Give oh, me the garlic. Why does that matter even? So that I'm going to show you. Yes, the whole thing. So you see how smooth this is? Mm. So in, Ita in Italy, we call this a passata. Mm -hmm. So it's basically no seeds in it. Oh. And it's very creamy. Yeah, and it you looks... buy it just like this. OK, it looks like ketchup, but isn't. But isn't ketchup, okay. I promise. So I'm warming this up, and then I add the spicy stuff. Yeah, so this is Calabrian chili, mm -hmm. which you may have heard of. You guys and all may have heard of it now. It's very popular these days. Delish. We're, we're too busy eating. Yeah. OK, yeah. sorry. <laughs> anyway, this makes it spicy, and mm. it's going to make it really spicy, because that's a lot of Calabrian chili. Okay. But you could use red pepper flakes yeah. in place of it. But this has more of like a, a balancing sweet easy to find, and though? spicy. All these fancy ingredients you've got. Can we find that? Yeah, you can. Okay. Okay. On Jazzy.com. Okay, oh, moving on. Oh, oh, yeah. oh my God. Move on. But black. you can find okay. it on other places. Now, what too. are these cute little pasta? Okay, so look at this I'm little really pasta. pasta. Aren't they the cutest? So these are known as Nodi Marini. So they're from Marini. Naples. Okay. And you see, they look like a little knot. I love yeah. them. And thank you. Marini. Marini. Like so little I, donuts. I found them in Naples a few years ago, and then I started, you know. Bring them back for everybody okay. to have. A little taste it. of Italy. Okay. Okay, sauce is cooking. It yeah. takes about 10 minutes, but on this burner, it might take five. Okay. Um, anyhow, so that all cooks together. So this is the tricky part right the, I did not see eggs coming. Well, because I said it was a mashup between carbonara yeah, that, okay. and a matriciana. Matriciana right. has pancetta, it's a tomato sauce, mm -hmm. carbonara, as we all know. Okay, so how does yeah. this get into it? So it got into the bowl. Oh, I no, no, I mean, how does the egg get into the recipe? <laughs> yes. Because it's, it's a mashup of carb. Carbonara has eggs. Yeah, I know. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go. Okay. What, so whisk? You're, yes, you're going to break up and whisk the three yolks. Look at this, y'all. Uh, look Nicely at you whisk it. See, done. look how good you are, y'all. I think you've learned a thing or two. I whisked. I whisked. Okay, okay, okay ready? <laughs> so now we're going to add pecorino, half a cup. Mm. And one cup of parmigiano de Oh my gosh, now we're getting to it. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is the trick right here. Okay. Because if you add this directly into here, Stick. what happens? It's thick and lumpy. Well, yeah. you, end up lumpy. With, you end up with scrambled eggs. Right, right, Which right, you don't right, want. Right, okay, no, so no. here we go. This is a problem. It's okay. This is my issue Just with water. Water. It's okay, okay. it's okay. Bring the Ready? Water in. Yeah. Okay. Is that warm Slowly, water, this is pasta water. Oh, oh. So we're using oh, yeah. it when you cook oh. the pasta, reserve about a quarter cup, mm -hmm. and you're going to use hot pasta water to break this up <laughs> and create a creamy sauce, slowly. So when you add it's this... really bugging me. Okay, yeah. Don't you always want to get that out of there? I yeah. understand. What would whisk. you do? It makes no sense. The whisk. Right? It always happens with there the whisk. There we go. Okay. Totally fine. <laughs> okay. Okay. Don't take okay. it out on the whisk. It's totally fine. Okay. Leave the whisk okay. alone. Okay. Okay. okay, so you're going to use this instead, yes. and you're just okay. going to continue okay. to mix Sorry. it. we got to keep mixing it. Well, mix, well, and mix and add. Mix <laughs> and add. Mix and add. Okay. I'm now so glad they gave us so long for this segment. Yeah, there we go. And that's it. So that this is... This oh, is now we can get that yeah, in there. Yeah, so now you can get this back in there. All right, we're back to the And list. I'm going to add the pasta in the sauce. You remember when you had that cooking show, Samantha? <laughs> remember, it's coming back for the holidays. Oh, <laughs> oh, great. oh ye of little faith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh, you guys. You should come on it, actually, Jada. Oh, I'm good, I'm good. I'd love to. Now that you've invited, now that, you, now that you've invited me, I can come on yes. it. Okay, okay, now what? Okay, so now look. You ready? Yeah. Okay, off the heat. So we're going to turn the heat off. Yes. You want to do this off the heat? Go ahead and add it. And then you pour it in. This is exciting. I, there I we really go. didn't see this coming in the recipe. Well, what there does you it go. really add to it? Just like a thicker sauce? It creates creaminess. creaminess. Go grab a bowl and taste okay, it. Okay, I will. I will. And then it's we delicious. finish yeah. it. So we basically do this okay. off the heat. You got to do this yes. off the heat so you don't scramble the eggs. And just keep tossing it. And yes. the eggs get cooked by the boiling hot water. Mm. Got it. Oh, and then yummy. the heat of the pan. This is so good. 
Oh, good. See, you look good, what good, good. That, what is that? Then a little bit of pancetta to finish oh, it off. Pancetta. Mm. Did you want to taste? No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, that's so yummy. Mm. And then a little bit more cheese to finish okay. it. And we're done. Okay. Pasta de Jonas. Dottie Marini. Jonah, thank you. We have the perfect Italian dish that you can make this weekend. Homemade stracci with sausage and lentils. It's sure to impress everybody at your dinner table. Something that you could do for the new year or you could do throughout the year if you like as well. Hilary Sterling is the executive chef at Chisiamo, an Italian restaurant right here in New York City. What a beautiful spot. Hilary, it's so nice to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you An too. early happy new year to, do, to you. So walk us through what type of pasta is stracci? Stracci is, uh, translates to rags. It's misshapen. It's something that you can actually have fun with. So do it with your kids. Do it with yourself. There's no rhyme or reason to it. You can just cut and go. This sounds like something for cooking with Cal in the future, Dylan. Okay, so te <laughs> keep some good notes here as we go. I will gladly do that. <laughs> this is delicious. Kodakino. <laughs> when you talk about Kodakino, that's a kind of sausage. But what is unique to that sausage as we do that? And I want you to show me how you do some of this. We are just going to get our pasta sheets ready to cut fine, our fine. misshapen rag. Then we'll talk oh, sausage. So, can... so I want to be a part of the rag making process. Okay, so we have some pasta sheets right here. Yeah. So for rags, I mean, you can choose your poison. Yeah. We can go and cut them also. Can I like, choose my yeah. poison, as it were? Yeah. We so can you make don't really need this. Do you need this? Could you just roll this out yourself? You with can them? absolutely roll it by hand. Okay. That's what the Nonas did. That's what we should do. Mm -hmm. Fine. But that machine is amazing. Let's just say it. it. I mean, it's pretty epic. I'd be lost without the machine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's, um, it's nice to have a rolling pin handy just in case. Okay. And if you aren't doing the rolling at home and you're looking for something that you can buy over the counter, what would you suggest? So for this pasta, especially with sausage and or a dried orchette or dried rigatoni, works just as well. Okay. Dry this is, yeah, this is what it looks like in our closet right now. Absolutely. So walk me through the cooking process. So, what are you going to make for us? Um, we're going to get our pasta boiling, our pasta water boiling over here, and then drop our pasta. So this is that cotequino So this is the cotequino. So what, like, where do I find cotequino if I'm trying to buy that? If you are looking for cotequino right now, Italy is probably your best bet. Mm. Um, <laughs> there is a couple, or Bonitalia in yeah. Chelsea Market. There are a couple of options out there. This is one of my favorites, Livoni. Um, Cotequino is just pork sausage. Yeah. It just has a bunch of skin and fat and spices that you would never know is in there. Skin, fat, and spices. That's what sounds good as we <laughs> So we're just going to pretend we it's pork it's sausage. It's delicious. And you guys like it? It's my it's my like halfway done sausage. Already. This mm -hmm. is amazing. Jacob's crushing it right now. We'll All let day. him just keep chewing and not talking <laughs> if he wants for a sec. So how do you make this? Walk me through the process. So we then. have our um, our cotequino. Which should I be stirring? Please. Is that how I help you? Um, so you want to get it nice and crispy. Yeah. Which means how you're cooking it high or medium. We are cooking at a high heat, okay. um, and then we're crumbling up the sausage. It comes in an um, in already pre-cooked form, yeah. Yeah. so you just have to crumble this up. This is a really fast um, way to cook pork sausage as well, and nice and good weeknight meal if you're if you're in need of something desperate. You have the um, lentils, and what else that you're doing with it? So a traditional New Year's Eve uh, Italian dish is cotechino and lentils. Okay. It's wishing you a prosperous New Year. Am I going right in? You is are that going right in. In this order? Um, yep. How much lentil, lentils, how many are we? Like we are, a we are, cup, a two cups? We want cups? a great prosperous year, right? Good yeah. fortune, so yeah. load them in there. So just put them um, in. Yep, and then we're going to put some chicken stock in there to stop that cooking process. Okay. Cooked or are you putting they them in? They are cooked already. Okay. So Good we, question. We cook them in chicken stock before. Oh, nice. You cook them in the chicken stock before you put them in? We cook them in the chicken stock before. Okay, okay. So once we have our chicken stock and cotequino and lentils cooking, we're going to reduce that down. Okay. Maybe just touch a garlic. You want to grab that Yes, garlic? please. Yeah. I shall. Throw it Dump. in there. Yep. Go for That's it. That's a touch. Let's toss it. So we have our pasta cooking, and then this is the reduced version of this. Yeah. So that we're making our pasta sauce. And how long did it take for you to get to that place? How uh, long is that cooking I would take? say um, about 30 minutes, nice and slow. Yeah. So we're going to get it nice and creamy. Let's get to the stracci, the rags, as you our say. Our rags are in here. Um, they're cooking away. And then before, we're going to put them in, and then we're going to always add the butter at the end. Mm. Mm. The butter at the end. Because the issue for me, I think, when you make noodles at home, right, is that these sometimes stick together mm -hmm. and, and it becomes problematic. Does that happen with this? Or if you mix it in, it should be as a little As long as when the pasta hits the pan, we immediately move it around and okay. your pasta will never stick. Yeah, no doubt. Fine. That's the problem with my spaghetti for the girls at night. I always ruin that Also, part. butter's delicious. Let's just but be I mean, real. I mean, never we, have too much butter. This butter is gonna, we're going to go all the in. I trust all in we there. are. Yes, we are. All right. Um, and and when you're plating just, it for folks? We are plating it. We can, as soon as we get that butter cleaned yeah. up, we'll put it right on the plate. Okay, you go, because oh, okay. our time's limited. Let's I want to eat. All right. <laughs> you have to take a bite of this, yeah. Peter. I love how the noodles, the stracci, are thick in terms like of their width. Mm -hmm. They're wide, but they're very thin and delicate to eat. And they take a mm. few minutes, barely, mm. to cook. Mm. So 
They're excellent. That's really good. This is delicious. <laughs> so we're just going to finish with some Hillary, that is amazing. What are you Thank throwing you on so top much. of it? We are throwing uh, Parmigiano Parm. Reggiano. Parmigiano. Mm. 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 A little extra Parm when you're done with that. Dude, we're going to take care of you. And Hillary, then, this is fantastic. We can't wait to celebrate New Year's like this. This is a good way to do it. Yeah. Thank you so much for visiting us. Thank you for having me. What was that that you put on top? And just a little balsamic, a little balsamic to finish. Balsamic. Ooh. Balsamic. Delicious. Guys, this kills it. I'm well just going to sit here and Excellent. finish. Excellent. Hillary, thank Delicious. you so thank you much. You happy too. New Year to Appreciate you. For a lot year. more, head to today.com slash food. with today food and this morning we are rolling out the red carpet for my fiance is obsessed the, <laughs> pa the pasta queen nadia katerina munoz family started a pasta factory get this back in the 1800s wow well today she is carrying on the cooking tradition on TikTok. How cool is that from the 1800s and now this is the new way, TikTok, yeah. right? And Nadia combines cooking with the drama of telenovelas. That's fun. And her videos have more than 34 million likes. Let's give you a little taste. Got some fettuccine and lemons. Let's put them together. Ingredients. Melt half a stick of butter with the zest and juice of a lemon. One cup of heavy cream and salt it. And now cook for a few minutes and turn it off. Add the fettuccine, sprinkle some parmigiano and a little pasta water. Mix with the passion of an Italian. Just gorgeous. <laughs> oh my wow. goodness, I wanna eat right now. Good morning, she joins us now, the pasta queen. How are you, Nadia? Hi, all I'm so Thank happy you're me. with us this morning. Buongiorno. So let's get right to it so we have Buongiorno. enough time here. <laughs> you're making two recipes, okay? So we're starting off with your cacao y pepe. I hope I'm saying that right. What ingredient is your secret to make this dish special? So it's cashew pepe's cheese and pepper pasta. You have to use a young pecorino romano, not aged too long, and then pasta water and freshly ground peppercorn. So let's get right into it. Okay, great. First of all, first of all look gorgeous. Oh, oh yeah. that's, <laughs> that's what you need for it's pasta. It's so funny, most of the time we do that off camera. I love how yeah. you like. <laughs> and the first step well, I could actually well, handle, <laughs> but then you have to actually boil water. So what's your tip exactly. on how much to put on the stove? Okay, so you have to use less water for this pasta because you want the spaghetti to be really starchy and the pasta water to be super starchy. So you use half the amount you will usually use to do the pasta. Okay. And first thing we do is toast the pepper grounds. So you have them on, I'm gonna splash a little bit of pasta water and that's gonna be the base foundation for this rich dish. Okay. And then doing straight the uh, pecorino romano, ground black peppercorns, pasta water, which is super starchy, which I, um, I'm going to whisk in. And we're going to create a perfect cream base mm. for the cashew e pepe. This recipe is so underrated. Mm. Two ingredients, and it's one of the classics. That's it? That's it? 
I bet you that song. Yeah, TikTok, day. you get like a minute to tell the whole thing, so I she's able it. to do a recipe. Well, no, because wait, yeah, we, yeah. Have, well, we have another recipe, but before, so you really just mix that and that's it Let's for the see. first one? That's it, that's it. So what we're doing right now is putting the spaghetti al dente. It's we're going sauce. to put them straight in the pan where we add the toasted pepper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're going to add the cream, you see? Mm -hmm. oh. It's easy. So, so let's squeeze in that next one. Frame, yeah, let's get to that. On a low Let's jump to the next one so we have time because that looks delicious. The lemon and ricotta. So Ooh. how do we get started with this? Okay, so super simple. Okay. So you've got the uh, pasta. This is like a totally uncooked sauce. Mm -hmm. So you have the pasta al dente that goes straight into the bowl. Okay. Gonna have, you're going to have ricotta. And we're going to put it right in. Fresh okay. ricotta. Ooh. Then you're going to have a little <laughs> bit of lemon juice. I like how easy these are. A little bit of yeah. lemon peels. Lemon peels. So the then heat of the pasta melts the ricotta. What was that? Yeah. And parmesan. I'm going to put, that was, that was pecorino cheese. Oh, pecorino. So ricotta, pecorino cheese, lemon juice, mm, lemon pecorino. peel, a little bit of pasta water, and then all you do is mix it in, mm. and the sauce just cook, cook straight with the pasta. So you're using the heat of the pasta so to smart. cook this pasta dish. Brilliant. That looks so and good it's and easy. And we could actually do it. Thank you, Nadia, so much. It was so nice to meet you. You, actually, you did something that we can all do. That's right. Long live the queen. Yes. Well, thank you, Nadia. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Pepe. Arrivederci. Yes. <laughs> She's fun. I love it. And for these recipes and oh, so much more, you can head to our website at today.com slash food. Let's face it, you barely have any energy left to cook, so it's good to have a go-to dish you can whip up pretty quickly. We got you covered. Josh Mac Mama Clay is a chef instructor and teaches on Milk Street TV. He's going to show us his basil broccoli pasta. I, I just tiptoed through that one, Josh. I'm glad I got it. You did great. It. Thank you, honey. Tell us, <laughs> tell us about what we're making. So essentially what we're making is a broccoli pesto, and it starts with two pounds of broccoli. Now, more often than not, you will be able to get broccoli florets in just the big bags, but if you end up working with a large crown, yeah. cutting it down is actually super, super simple, and I'm not even gonna look at it. No, wait, Oh, no. wow, okay, oh, now you're showing no. off. 
That's a pro tip. I am showing off a little bit. That's a pro tip. But the reason why I cut it down into steaks like that is because I'm getting this really, really fantastic, mm -hmm. like, flat surface yeah. area. And that is going to make direct contact with my pan. And therefore, when it roasts in an oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. it's going to get a really nice brown on it. Okay. And that's going to develop a really beautiful, savory flavor. Okay. But you want to go ahead and just discard any of the stems. You don't need those for this recipe. Mm -hmm. Okay. But... Break your broccoli florets down into one and a half inch pieces. Again, you don't have to be particularly careful about this. Mm -hmm. But all you're gonna do is bring all of that broccoli together in yeah. a bowl, Beautiful. along with two teaspoons, actually, yeah, two teaspoons of regular like vegetable oil. Okay. Any neutral oil, avocado oil will work. And you're also going to follow that up with a little bit of salt. Okay. Perfect. So I believe it's two tablespoons and one teaspoon of salt in here. Okay. We're going to just give that a little toss. And then we're going to go ahead and arrange that on our sheet here. I have a baking sheet lined with tin foil. I'm just going to dump it right on out. Beautiful. And here's my little pro tip. You want to make sure that you're putting everything cut side down. Okay. That way all of cut that flat down. surface wow. area Smart. that you yeah. established, that's going to get really, really nicely seared in the oven. Okay. So once you get that nice and arranged, you throw it in the oven, simple as that. So again, awesome. 400 degrees Fahrenheit, uh -huh. and I already have one that is working in there. So we'll take a peek at Look that at your one little later. mitt. That's a cute, the cutest <laughs> little oven mitt. Thank you. I've never, yeah, no, I have so these big. big like sausage patty hands. I love that. So no, when right you're size. working with like, it is the right size. It makes things a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Now, while that's roasting off in the oven, we could go ahead and take a look at our pot here. here I actually have a large pot set up with six cups of water. Now, six cups is not typically what you would cook pasta in. Right. Um, but we're cooking in less water here on purpose, so that way we develop a lot of starches. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to help this sauce get really luscious. Okay, we and only have a minute pasta. left, so will you just help Ooh, okay. us? Yeah. Sorry. Totally, totally. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and blanch our basil. basil. That only takes about five uh -huh. seconds. And this is the same water that we would cook the pasta in. Like I said, we blanch it for five seconds, uh -huh. and then we throw it into an ice bath. This step is totally optional, but it really helps the sauce maintain its bright green color. Okay, so, got so it. once we get that in there, All right. we'll go ahead and fish that out, and we'll blend it up. Okay, so, so you, hit it, you put it in the little food processor, and you add, it, and like you add, you add to it. Oil. So, yep, here we have our food processor. I'm just going to throw my basil right on in. If a little bit of water makes its way in, that's no problem. But you'll hit that with a quarter cup of olive oil, uh -huh. right. along with a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese, mm -hmm. two cloves of garlic that have been yep. roughly chopped, and my secret ingredient here, we have some capers. Oh, I love capers. Now that's going capers. to add really nice. Yeah, they're okay. really, really fantastic. So after you yeah. grind that up and just put that right over the pasta? And some lemon. Yeah, we're also going nice. to throw in a little bit of lemon juice. And if you have time, uh -huh. you can go always uh, throw in lemon All right, Josh, well, why don't you we'll show us the finished product? Because we got to rock. Ah, you got it. So we're going to bring that together right before your very eyes. Beautiful. Show us so, what you got. Show us what you got, Josh. Beautiful. Josh, thank you so much. That looks really delish. We appreciate that. Absolutely. For that, for that recipe, go to today.com slash food.
right, this morning on Today Food, put away that jar sauce because we are going to jazz up pasta tonight. And we're going to do it with some help from Chef Ann Burrell. She is back in the latest season of Food Network's Worst Cooks in America. This is where she she transform she transforms kitchen rookies into experts, kitchen veterans. And this morning, Ann is going to show us show us rookies how to make one of her favorite dishes. What I love about this, and I was just saying this to you, this is an approachable dish. Sometimes we have chefs on, and it's like 12 steps. I'm like, we, people can't make that. We can actually make this. Well, for the record, I do know how to make dishes that are 12, 12 steps. steps. <laughs> but, Don't get it twisted. But, She's also an expert. But, but at this time of year, when we're talking about light and easy, and we're in the, the like, a heat of vegetable yeah. season like this is I just want to be eating simply yes. and quickly yes. and just and it feels light and refreshing okay so I have a pan that I started off with some olive oil and some garlic cloves I just kind of broke the garlic cloves up with my hand and perfumed mm. the oil with a little bit of crushed red pepper how many garlic cloves are we talking about so like four or five okay oh. and you just put them in there until you start to smell them and then they have fulfilled their garlic oh, then you destiny take them out. Okay. Yes. they have garlic fulfilled <laughs> their garlic they, destiny they it's just about perfuming the oil so we get like oh. garlic instead of garlic yes. garlic <laughs> so then i have some shrimp that i'm putting in there and we're just doing a quick little saute on these shrimp, and then we take them out of the pan. Okay. So it's like we're cooking them about two thirds of the way okay. because we're gonna add them in with our hot pasta and stuff in later. We don't want them to overcook now. Got it. So don't want to crowd the pan either. No, a nice even single layer. Okay. Look at that. You know something. <laughs> All right. Very, I like very that. little. Man. So then very little. the shrimp come out of the pan. <laughs> we have our perfumed oil with a little bit of crushed red pepper. You know we like a little spicy. Yes, coke. we do. And so then I have some diced zucchini. Perfect because they're in season. Zucchini, you know, I make this all the time for dinner at my house and I switch it up between zucchini, sometimes I add some tomatoes, oh. sometimes I might sub out zucchini and just cut some corn off oh. the cob. So whatever veggies in. maybe you kind of have yes, around. Yes, and anything that you like that goes with shrimp. Okay. So then we have some pasta cooking and that goes right. And that's just spaghetti. Just spaghetti. Is there a reason you like spaghetti more than other pastas for this? I love the texture when of spaghetti. When you try it, you'll go, like, yep. You get it. Uh, yeah. he, I mean, this also makes me feel like I'm a little bit on the Amalfi Coast, yes. <laughs> in, you know. And to that end, I have some lemon zest and juice. We bring that really bright lemon flavor. Um, I have some oregano. 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 You know, like oregano is also like at this time of year, look. everyone just goes straight for the basil. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm gonna, I like oregano is a little kooky. It's, it's a little, very good. you know, very like good. it's less overpowering too. Basil, it's like all basil. All basil, Yum. all day. So then you add the, shrimp. the shrimp. So then we add the shrimp that have not been in. cooked fully. So, right, they're cooked about two thirds of the way. The now, th I add a little bit of our pasta water. Oh. This helps, this is kind of like the glue that kind of holds everybody together. Okay. A tiny little bit of butter, okay. just to, you know, for that mouth feel yep. kind of thing. Sure. We stir Plus, that butter in. butter makes everything better. That's what I say about bacon. <laughs> <laughs> so does Al Roker. <laughs> Bacon, butter, something with the bean. Yeah. Amberell makes it better. <laughs> um, so now this is where things can get a little yeah, you know, I'm like, there's controversial. Something else. All right, let me watch. So you can, you know, there's a couple of schools of thought about this, about cheese in seafood. pasta with seafood. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I myself like it. Yeah. I understand if you're on the Amalfi Coast and the fish has come directly uh, from the Mediterranean, you know, but this I is amazing. This so whenever you a little do, bit of like, richness, yeah. it really helps the, the sauce have a so nice Parmesan mouth cheese. Feel. Just a little bit That's of Parmesan cheese and a little bit of olive oil. We turn the heat off so and we just toss it together and voila. That's it. Yep, that's it. I mean, you so could do that in like 20 minutes. Exactly. That's the point. This is this phenomenal. Is absolutely and it's like, you know, I get like a half a pound of shrimp for my husband and I for dinner for this oh. is perfect. So if I buy a pound of shrimp, I buy it, clean it, stick it so in the good. freezer. And bro, uh, way okay. to go. Yeah, you can have the zoodles. You could do zoo oh, zucchini noodles and too. Yes, if yeah, you're you a non-pasta <laughs> person, zucchini noodles are, no, work really pasta. well. Also. Thank you, Ann. Oh. Delicious. For these recipes, it's today.com slash food.
morning on Today Food, we are making sweet and savory pies with New York Times bestselling author Allison Roman, her third cookbook. Congratulations.